The halfway point of the FIDE World Championship has been reached and the score is currently 4-3 to Jan Lepomnishi. The dynamic shifts as Deng has white for the first time after a rest day. Round 8 kicked off with one of the sponsors, Victor Dorgalev, making the ceremonial move. The Nimzo Indian. All right, we're seeing our first Nimzo of the match. Okay. Very nice. Um, which line? I think E3. Is he going to go for E3? I, I would guess E3. Caruana mentioned that that's like where he would test to see Nepo, uh, Nepo's lines in Nimzo. We witness the Samish in full effect as Ding plays the modern Rook A2 and takes control of the center with E4. Like the thing in this position is normally B6, Bishop A6, Knight A5. And Ding played E4. Okay. Yeah, he played that pretty quickly. So after that move, I guess we can say that for now this bishop is not going to be able to develop. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, you know, these kinds of ideas are typical in these positions, but I suppose right. not so much with a knight already over here because then there's just h6, right? And you don't have like bishop h4. Uh, I mean, you have h4 though. So let's say you go bishop a6. I start to like this game a lot, actually. I mean, we will have yeah. a lot of, you know, a lot of cool ideas here. And indeed, the sacrifice on g5, as predicted by Daniel Duboff, happened in the game. Jan quickly returned the piece, but Ding played very energetically with e5 and d5. Jan slips up first with bishop takes e4. Daniel and Irina try to figure out what was happening in the position. So he took the knight. Which yep. is not too bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, knight of five, I guess. All right, there's... There's no queen takes yeah, d6, I there's guess. There's nothing that we can do for Ding. Okay, Ding took back. Mm -hmm. Knight of five. And, and we are about to see something. Well, uh, first of all, it could be that we are not missing much yeah. and black is just okay. Then if we switch for looking uh, for equality for white, then it's a completely different, you know, task. Okay. Then maybe we, right back. Then we probably go rook d2 simply. Ding finds the right move at the right time to support his advanced d-pawn and keep his significant advantage. Yeah, rook d2 was just played. Okay, wow, he played that pretty quickly. I think that's good. I don't know, because we've been going kind of deep into this we tried to make it work yeah. but it was starting to look like it wasn't working so i think it's yeah. a good sign that he just played something else yeah. quickly jan plays queen h4 is this a perpetual check or is he bluffing okay, okay so queen h4 queen played H4. yeah okay ning looks surprised does he i think He's clearly surprised and it is not a good sign. Yeah, I was very lucky to, to bluff uh, with this queen h4 move. I think in fact white can capture it and, and then I saw this, okay, it was... I just briefly calculated the line after queen d8 and I became very disappointed. Ding did not take the rook and played king d1 instead. There you go, Ding. Wow. That's okay. my boy. All yeah. right. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay. I'm so yeah. excited because king d1, I mean, it's just like a cool idea. Yeah. Yeah. But indeed, uh, after king d1, queen g5, I mean, practically I have some very nice chances to escape. Well, when I played, I thought it's like I'm very smart, but then I found out that uh, the king es escapes in some tricky, tricky way, yeah, like this, like rook, uh, queen e4, rook e2, queen b1, king d2, queen b2, king d3, queen b1, rook c2. And here, queen d1, I thought it's a draw, but uh, no, it's king d4 here, queen c2, bishop d3. Uh, which was very hard to spot from distance and here yeah maybe I can go still for something like 9g free check but yeah I guess it's uh, I guess it's over I mean it's just crazy how yeah this king was was escaping yeah so what was it, it was the, the point was this yeah and you're basically giving away your rook with a check mm -hmm. yes and then just kind of going backwards right yeah and and that was that was it so the king sort of hides somewhere yeah and the key idea is that also queen of six check is a very big yeah, threat on all so the lines here you go king g2 i guess yeah knight, and knight h4 king g1 
knight f3, king h1. And eventually, yeah, you yeah. escape. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of calculation, you know, but yeah, I agree. Yeah. You could have spent a bit longer on that. Um, yeah, but he probably thought he's much better in the game. Well, I briefly checked the line, but I just stopped. I think at uh, maybe queen e1, queen, queen b1, rook c2, I, I didn't calculate uh, any further. So I just stopped there, maybe because my time is not so much. Uh, considering yesterday's lost, so I want to play quickly in time trouble. After king d1, Ding still had the pressure thanks to his d-pawn. But then, Ding went wrong with bishop f3. Ooh, bishop f3, okay. Um, not even something that we got a chance to talk about. Yeah. Uh, so how do you we understand this move? He allowed Jan to make a comeback in the game, but the brilliant knight takes f2. Jan actually played knight takes f2. Okay, wow, I did. <laughs> Which was clearly missed. Uh, yeah. We don't want to lose that pawn, but I guess we yeah, this take is on actually D6. a great move. Yeah. Knight f2 is if you like it. Yeah. Ding took on f2, and as a result, Nepo captured the d pawn. Soon after. Ding had to return the extra piece as Black had a strong pawn chain on the king side. It led to the game ending in a draw. While things could have gone better for Ding, the competition is far from over. <coughs> yeah, of course, missed uh, so much wins. At least two wins. Uh, or maybe even more. It feels very bad, also very, very tired after a long game. But still, there are six games. I have white, three white pieces, so anything can happen. Thank you. Tomorrow, Nepal will try to defend his one point lead while playing with the white pieces. Round nine begins at 3 p.m. Check out the commentary on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook channels. Don't forget to ask questions on the FIDE Twitter feed. Who knows what will happen tomorrow? As the world holds its breath, two unstoppable minds prepare for immortality. One from the land of the dragon, the other from the land of the bear. Together, they will write history. The patient and precise Ding, carefully calculating every move to gain a strategic advantage, facing the aggressive Nepomniachi, who is always looking to take risks and never afraid to make bold moves to pressure his opponents. Their eyes might be fixed on the board, but their minds will be focused on victory. These two titans of the chessboard have fought their way through the ranks, demonstrating skill, strategy, and a fierce competitive spirit. Now they will go head to head and fight for the ultimate title, the FIDE World Championship crown. Where champions come and go, chess endures. Hi everyone and welcome to our coverage of the ninth game of the 2023 World Chess Championship match between Ding Li Ren and Jan Nepomnishi. Jan Nepomnishi is still up a point in the match after yesterday's very dramatic events on the board and off the board. Daniel, uh, yesterday Ding missed about three wins on th you know, three different occasions in their game um, in the Nimzo Indian. Do uh, you have any comments on that game? Not too many, but at the end of the day, uh, I honestly feel that he was lucky to save it in mm -hmm. some way. Like objectively, it was fine for White, mm -hmm. but it's kind of clear that he, um, at some point, he just lost control 
and it could go either way. I mean, it could be just very bad for white as well after knight takes f2. Like when you wonder such a thing, mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes uh, you know it turns out to be just lost. Yeah, his final mistake was on the 37th move. Um, and I feel like you know, the first two wins that he missed, I don't know, for me they're not so obvious because we also uh, didn't exactly spot them in our analysis. Rough. But the, thir the yeah. third one I think was really the one that struck me. And actually Fabiano in his um, podcast did say that it kind of, that blunder of Bishop F3 was sort of bad news for Ding's form because you know it, it's like hard to see where that kind of move could come from, right? Yeah. But at the same time, uh, in general, I mean, it's not always that uh, great minds uh, think alike, you know? Mm -hmm. So let's say for me, f probably for you, for Fabi, for like many people I know, Bishop F3 just doesn't make a lot of sense, and it's like s it's the least natural move Ding played in the whole game. But yeah. Ding, uh, I, I mean, it's possible that he just, uh, you know, has a different point of view. It just in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so bishop f3 here, I guess, uh, yeah, now we have the board. So bishop f3, uh, yeah, it very much depends on the way you see chess in general, I would say. Um, I normally find uh, f I find it very difficult to play the most backwards in general. Mm -hmm. So let's say, like, I was not blaming Ding for not uh, not finding this brilliant queen e1 in game six, right? right, uh, and That was completely hidden <laughs> right, yeah. from most people's point of view. Yeah, also, for instance, Sasha Grishuk who says it's quite easy and he thinks uh, like it's wow. quite a bad miss mm. and that it's quite, uh, quite easy to play queen e1 protecting your like most important pawn on c3. Mm -hmm. So it very much, very much depends on the way you see things. Bishop f3 here I just uh, c c kind of don't consider normally, but uh, yeah, when you think about it for quite long, it kind of makes sense. You want to provoke knight f6, and then you go bishop c6. And then there is no e4 uh, followed by knight e5. Mm -hmm. Like, technically, if you want to, to find an, an explanation, you can do it. Yeah, you know, one thing I wanted to say is that this theme of black sacrificing a piece to win this pawn, the thing is that it's been uh, on the board for a few moves, right? So I guess, you know, if maybe if you would have seen it earlier, it would have been more obvious to you that like knight takes f2 was just the problem yeah. right um maybe maybe it's, it's, i mean it's possible i think he missed the whole idea just to, to begin with but maybe it's also possible that he somehow missed like i don't know that the bishop was getting blocked in because if the bishop could establish himself here okay white actually could be just fine right yeah and maybe he's still having decent chances to win but um but unfortunately this bishop was getting locked down and you couldn't even save the pawn so, um, yeah, black was definitely not going to have any more problems in this game. Yeah, so let's say here it's not obvious at all that black is not better. Like, it could be anything, actually. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I mean, of course, given, uh, given uh, how much winning he was, sort of, it's quite a bad miss. But um, I would still feel as why that actually, well, yes, I missed, uh, I mean, I missed a win so many times, but mm -hmm. at the same time, here exactly, I'm actually worried already. And then, yes, you check it, it's actually not worse for white, but it could be. Like, when you blunder like this, it's just uh, very much move by move. Yeah, so he was kind of lucky in a way that his blunder didn't cost him the game, and he also made yeah. his final move 40 uh, with five seconds left on the clock, you know, adding yeah. uh, a little bit more to the drama on the board. Let's go back just to show one of the moments where he could have won. Um, right here yeah so this was a position where we were looking at you know obviously taking the pawn with check or first pushing this pawn all yeah. of these seem like major ideas but in fact the winning move it was kind of, kind of coming out of nowhere right a little bit out of nowhere there was a lot of action on the h file earlier in the game right but somehow the winning move was rook d3 here completely <laughs> ignoring everything in the center and just focusing on yeah. the attack on the black king yeah but this one I, I can explain easily. Mm -hmm. we, we actually missed it too, right? Yep. But uh, listen, the thing is, clearly if you stop here for like a minute, you always find it. Yeah. But the problem is that a d7 looks so good. 
And, yeah, that, and it actually is good. White is winning after D7. Yeah, that's the thing. It's not yeah. like, you know, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, white is focusing on pretty nice natural options. And when they look good, you don't, you don't look necessarily harder to see something even more winning. Yeah. yeah. I mean, exactly. D7 is something you want to play at first. And, and then you check it. I mean, you start with checking G7. And then you realize it works, and you play it. Or you play it straight away without checking, which also works. So yeah, I mean, of course, this is very much about those uh, candidate moves. Mm -hmm. Being a kid, I was always uh, I was always asked to basically never play a move. Uh, yeah, I mean, until I like come up with a list of candidate moves at least, and then I'm like, okay, I have this, I have that, and then I uh, then I can play d7 or something. But I had like always to have at least v v one alternative that I could mention mm. after the game that, okay, I also thought about this move. And then, like, if you have this paradigm sort of that, uh, right, I'll play d7, mm -hmm. but I need another move to mention at least, Yes. then you actually find rook d3 immediately. But the problem is that you can also mention this move in this position. That would be like your second move, right? Yeah, this and is this true. The problem is you already got those two obvious moves to look at, and this is already number three that you got to get to in your thinking. Yeah. But I agree, you know, this, um, this like, uh, selection of candidate moves is so important, and I feel like that's also something I can get better at, you know, because sometimes I'm just like, oh, these are nice, and it won't even cross my mind yeah. to, to look for something like that. Yeah, but the problem is that uh, the whole concept of candidate moves is nice, but, like, my impression has always been that, like, most, probably all the top players, actually, play without it. This is just not how you play. You, I, I mean, you cannot waste time like there's no tomorrow. Mm. And actually, everybody plays, uh, like, the thinking process is way more random. It's like a weird combination of your intuition mm -hmm. and some calculation skills. But mm -hmm. it's not that you're... Uh, Building lists of moves in your head to go over methodically. Yeah, exactly. It's not that you have this, like, tree, a tree of lines, and then you go uh, check them one by one. Sometimes it's a better strategy, but in yes. general, I don't think it's good. And um, yeah, nobody plays like that. Maybe Ding does, actually. Like with Ding, sometimes I have this, I mean, I have this feeling that he plays a move that you can only find by like elimination one mm -hmm. by one. Let's say when, when he plays this rook h3 or when he plays this mm -hmm. rook h5, it's like you, like in terms of logic, it, uh, it doesn't make a lot mm -hmm. of sense. So you can only get it. By, by elimination. And then if you manage, then you actually realize, okay, then you're shown this rook a5 or rook h3, and you actually realize it is actually a decent move. So, Daniel, let's show one more key moment that yeah. Ding missed, which every casual player watching online was yeah. saying, I would just take the rook. Yeah. <laughs> this was quite funny. Um, right here. And let's go down a little bit after this move queen h4. Yeah. So I think I can explain why we didn't, like, uh, see that it wasn't a perpetual. And it was because, you know, before this position ever happened, like we already kind of talked about this idea, yeah. right? We were like, oh, that's cool. That looks like a perpetual. We didn't go yeah. too deeply into it because it wasn't even on the board. And then when Nepo played this move so confidently, right. we were just like, oh, okay. So he sees the same thing that yeah. we saw. And so we, we kind of started looking for alternatives to the draw that we thought was in this line. But in fact, yes, that rook could have been taken. And there was no perpetual. Um, yeah, but again, it looks yeah. easy because people know it's plus, plus five. So let's say even here after queen b2. Yeah. OK, we even know what the point is. So king d3, queen b1, rook c2, yeah. queen d1, king d4, yeah. queen takes c2. Mm -hmm. So actually, bishop d3 is winning, but we also thought king f3 is good. And it's, wait, it's not? Yeah, there is king h7, for instance, here. And I think it works for some reason. Wow. How does that work? Oh, because I can't move my queen with, without losing this pawn to yeah. queen d1? Yeah, basically you don't have queen f6, and queen 8 allows some, uh, maybe queen d1 works now for some reason. I don't know why exactly. Maybe but my point, yeah. yeah, but my point is that basically being, uh, being a stro strong mm. player, you know that like nine times out of 10, yeah. A queen and knight will at least have a perpetual. Mm -hmm. And this kind of thing, it doesn't come naturally. Like, you need to check it, and then if you think it works, you need to, uh, to recheck it 10 times. Yeah, Ding said he kind of got to this point and to queen d1 and was like, OK, that's, it's not working. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. This would be my thinking process, too. 
Yeah, and I mean, also, it's like, it's the combination of that is the fact that your king is, looks like uh, he's getting cornered, and also the fact that, you know, your opponent plays queen h4, like, very confidently, quite quickly, and then, yeah. he, and then Ding kind of just missed this whole idea with a perpetual. Yeah, but then yeah. one more key point is that actually you have king d1, and it yes. looks brilliant, and once again, I mean, it looks like it's tough for black. Yeah, I was right? so... It's actually okay, yeah. but uh, it's very difficult for Black to, to come up with a plan, and we had exactly the same feeling. And he was actually winning two moves later. Yeah. So from the practical point of view, not, uh, not taking on d8 is reasonable. This is not what mm. I... Uh, not the first thing I would be blaming him for. Yeah, know? so basically three missed opportunities. It was kind of like, you know, the typical three strikes and you're out. The third one was, I think, the, the really big missed one yeah. that didn't involve something very shocking. Right. Um, to find that 37th move. All right, Daniil, so let's talk about the other big news of yesterday, which was the info about the leaked preparation of Ding on Lee Chess, him playing on these um, beginner level accounts that people through using like Lee Chess database were able to understand that these were not beginner games yeah. <coughs> and they were playing the openings that were actually being used in this match, like the H3 line, like the Nimzo line that we saw yesterday. Um, and it, okay, just very obvious that this is like his training accounts, right? Probably. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I don't know, unless we got like aliens playing, um, I don't know who else yeah. that could be. Um, so I kind of um, listened to the um, views of a couple of top players on this. So Fabi said, kind of surprisingly, he said, uh, I'm generally going to say that this leak doesn't matter much. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so I think he also surprised uh, Christian, his, uh, his co-host, on the podcast with that idea. Yeah. And Nepo, uh, not no, <laughs> not Nepo, Naka. Naka said, I do think that for Ding, it's going to be a very difficult uphill battle going forward um, you know, to win this match when all his prep being leaked and that it was definitely not good news. And, um, we can go through a couple of things, yeah. uh, by the way, that Ding's already at the board. But we can go through a couple of openings that were played there that I think are going to be kind of significant. Um, so first of all, it was obvious from those training games that there was a lot of emphasis being placed on looking for ideas for white in the Nimzo Indian for Ding. Mm -hmm. Right, so besides this like E3, A3 line that we saw yesterday, there was also there, there were also training games played in this line. Okay. A couple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which does not even mean they were going to play it in the match necessarily. Right. But at some point, you know, that must be his reservoir of ideas, right? Like then there was another one with knight f3, bishop g5. Like, I mean, it definitely, I felt like going through the games, you definitely got a sense of the direction they were interested in. They had a few more ideas in the Nimzo they wanted to try and then even in this line with e3 um, castles, a3, mm -hmm. um, then there was, yesterday we saw knight e2, but then mm. there was also like bishop d3, and I think knight c6, and some kind of rook b1 move that they played. Mm -hmm. So that's at least three different options that um, Ding was considering in the Nimzo that we haven't yet seen. Yeah. Then there was a lot of interest by white. Mr. Marat Azilhanov, Deputy Chairman and the Head of the Secretariat of the Assembly of the People of Kazakhstan. Thank you very much, and now I would like to call the chair, uh, the main arbiter of the tournament on the stage to take over. Thank you.
All right, guys, we're back, and Nepo has begun the game with one E4. By the way, the first move today was made by Marat Al-Zilhanov, Deputy Chairman of the Assembly of the People of Kazakhstan, Head of the Secretariat of the Assembly of the People of Kazakhstan. Did we get that right, Daniel? It sounds like a mouthful. Yeah, it's great. And we got another Spanish on the board. Um, Okay, so this is, this is where Nepo is going for his opening uh, tries. Um, this is, what, the third time in the match that we are seeing this? I think so. Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was game one and Berlin, finally. Ah, finally, Berlin, yeah. which has yeah. appeared in those training games yeah, on okay. Lee Chess. There were a couple of them, I believe, uh, like maybe three games, but it wasn't exactly clear um, for which side he was interested in practicing this. Yeah. I think that there was some ambiguity about that and they were looking at like these anti-Berlin lines like maybe they were considering it was quite clear in the in the in the games that they were also quite likely interested in exploring 1e4 as white which he hasn't yet gotten to in the match sure so perhaps they were thinking like Nepo could possibly play a Berlin and they were looking at it from the white side yeah listen it's interesting that um, many people are making different kinds of uh, comments on this match mm-hmm I mean, top players included. Yeah. And I have a feeling, uh, like most of the things, I see the same way that uh, Fabi does. So, speaking of the league, well, it's not ideal, mm -hmm. but if I'm Ding, I'll tell you this. It's actually very lucky for Ding to know that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. There, <laughs> is, uh, there is one scenario that is much worse, that actually Team Nepo finds it out, Mm -hmm. and no one else does and then you actually don't know yeah. th that you are going to play like all the ideas in Nimso uh, facing, mm -hmm. uh, uh, facing an opponent that is very well prepared and now I mean given, given what they have it's not such a disaster mm -hmm. sure they will have to they will have to come up with uh, some different ideas as white but they will have a free day to, to prepare mm -hmm. and in general once again given the fact they kind of liked 4 each 3 mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like uh, they will necessarily fail mm -hmm. at finding one more. Idea like that. Right. And uh, I agree, it's not such a big deal. Fabi knows it himself, actually. Um, his prep, I mean, during the match against Magnus, his prep was leaked mm -hmm. at some point on the Petrov, which did not affect at all. Mm -hmm. uh, he still played it, and still we kind of... Uh, I mean, yes, we got a confirmation that he is going to play something that we were expecting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I mean, it, it didn't give us much, to be honest. Yeah, in terms of the Lee Chess games, after the move bishop c5, pretty much all these training games went with the move bishop takes c6. Mm -hmm. So we're already kind of like leaving the terrain of those uh, Lee Chess practice games. Right. So Nepo decides to go for c3, castles, castles and d5. d5 okay tell us something about this position Daniil well, well it's a very very topical line mm -hmm. that is considered to be uh, very dry I guess Jan mm -hmm. plays knight b to d2 and uh, yeah I guess the e d a5 is interesting here for some reason there is also I think uh, rook e8 maybe but I have a feeling that the topical line is takes takes and a5 Mm, you allow like white to take on c6 and damage the pawn structure, but it's like no big deal. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, also a5, it looks insane, but it, uh, it makes sense in many lines. And one of the ideas is that black is preparing knight a7, which again doesn't look so brilliant, but actually a5 mm. is a very good move. You know, one of the top players that really likes this position as black is Nakamura. It's featured yeah. in a lot of his games. Also, your friend Vidit okay. has played this quite a lot. Okay. Um, let's see. So we're. Is ah. Vidit my friend? Necessarily? No, I, I mean, I, 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 so. like him. I, I, so. I like him. I like Daniel. him. I like him. That's how it sounded from your stories. No, no, I mean, I like him, but he is beating all the time. This is very unfriendly. Uh, mm, okay. Know. Like, once I'll beat him, then, you know. Then he'll be really your friend. Then we can discuss it, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, all right, so let's see what we got on the board. After d5, so there were a lot of moves here for white. I mean, white could take that pawn as well, right? Yeah. But Nepo went for a knight d2 and this kind of symmetric structure. And a5, yeah. okay, that's what you were telling us about, right? Oh, no, that's not on the board yet. Yeah. Okay, we're waiting to see 
whether... But this is like mm -hmm. one of the most uh, topical positions of the opening theory of last 10 years. So uh, definitely no surprise here. And I think, uh, I mean, Ding is not thinking because he's out of the book, clearly. Right. But he knows that Black has many options, and he knows few of them, actually. Yeah, it seems and like uh, A5 is by far the most popular, but there's also a move Queen E7. Yeah. Well, I, uh, like, I've never been uh, a Berlin player for real. Mm -hmm. And I normally look at those lines from a side, sort of. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure, I know the games, I know the ideas, I mean, I know some of the lines. But I've never been, um, you know, too, too interested in that. And then from a side, I kind of, uh, well, it would always be hard for me to uh, believe that A7, A5 is like necessarily the best move here, right? Mm. They played, I started to get, uh, I started to get what the point is at some point, but still when everybody plays exactly A7, A5, mm -hmm. when you don't play this position at all, you're li a little bit surprised, like is Queen E7 losing or what, I mean, uh, you yeah, know. Yeah, these two moves um, are like the two main approaches in this position, and mm -hmm. A5 is like a slightly more popular, and a slightly more popular m amongst higher rated players, but this yeah. one, other than these two moves, there's like pretty much nothing else played here. Okay. I mean, I guess just because we're, are we finally threatening to take this pawn now? I don't think so, actually. I think their point is that it's B4 that is kind of a positional threat. So basically, by playing A5, you are not protecting... Oh, wow, uh, B4. Yeah, just... Uh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. And then you kind of don't want... Uh, but on Queen E7, so is B4 not an idea? I'm not sure. Actually, it is played. And it's one of the main moves. Mm-hmm. As, as, as well as queen c2. But b4 is, uh, is possible, and the bishop then can actually retreat in both directions. Can go here. Yeah, but I guess mm -hmm. their point is in general that like bishop d6 is normal, but it's quite, uh, quite, a, passive, mm -hmm. quite a passive setup. Mm -hmm. And with bishop b6, you can sometimes run into something really annoying like uh, I mean, it's in some of the lines, let's say they will, you know, take, and then at some point you will run, you will run into some c4. Like here, exactly, we have queen takes before probably. Still, there is a4 there actually. But in terms That's of ideas, That's why playing a3. Yeah. Yes. But mm -hmm. in terms of ideas, uh, something like this could happen, and uh, it could be the case that Black doesn't doesn't like this at all. So this is why people kind of like a5. So mm. a5 is a. Uh, like more of uh, it's prophylaxis against yeah. before, yeah, that makes sense. And he just played it. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, it's this position has also been seen in the games like um, of Grishuk, who has chosen Queen E7 here, and Kramnik, who was playing A5. Interesting. Kramnik also has some blitz game against Magnus in this position. Mm -hmm. All right. No, it used mm -hmm. to be it used to be just one of the main positions in the opening theory. Mm -hmm. It seems to be that in general we kind of have this, uh, we kind of have this kind of, you know, opening fashion in chess. Mm -hmm. And then there are some positions that uh, that were played by like literally everybody uh, within a year or two. And then for some reason people switch for something else. Like it's not that the line becomes bad or good or something. It's just that everybody likes it for like half a year, and then everybody goes away. So now, what are White's options after a5? Uh, some quiet moves like a4, queen c2. Yeah, a4, he played. Yeah, okay. It's not groundbreaking. In these positions, do we sometimes see the maneuver of this knight back to b8? Maybe. Like not, not immediately, but like later on because it's kind of restricted by this pawn. Yeah. We also see knight a7 sometimes. Mm. So I guess the move that feels the most intuitive to me here is, is queen e7. Yeah, <laughs> I tend other, to agree. The other yeah. one that I tend to agree, yeah. could have been played on the prior move as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, bishop e6. Yeah, bishop e6, you just have to kind of make sure this is not a problem. But then you go bishop g4, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I thought so, at least, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, what did he do? I think he did a little queen e7. Yeah, move with the queen. Okay. 
Yeah, queen e7. Should be okay for now. Mm -hmm. All right, this must still be Nepo Nepo's prep. Yeah. Well, it also very much, very much depends on um, Jan's approach in general. So, like, I suspect it kind of also makes sense for him to play something really quiet mm -hmm. and uh, basically make a draw if Dink um, won't go crazy. And then, you know, you have a free day to, uh, to prepare for your game with Black. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can study all the games on leeches and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, if you survive this game as black, then actually uh, there are not too many to go. All right, so, ba oh yeah, I was going to say, basically white has these two choices with the queen from the games that mm -hmm. we see in the database. So that's what Nepo went with, queen c2, which I think was not, okay, that was not the choice of Jeffrey Xiong in the American Cup, but it was the choice of Wesley So mm -hmm. in the... Um, the chess.com global championships in 2022. So we can take a quick look at that game because, ah, right here, Nakamura, knight b8. Okay. I remember seeing this idea somewhere, and it's quite typical in these positions because the knight is just so useless on c6. Yeah. And rook e1 happened. Rook d8. Knight f1, c6. Bishop c4. Knight g3, uh, bishop, uh, sorry, um, bishop c4, h6. Uh -huh. Knight g3, knight g4, rook f1, bishop e6. I have to say, I mean, in general, this is a, a very quiet way the game is going. I don't think, like, we're not going to see the kind of fireworks that we saw in yesterday's game. Probably not. Although, I guess it was this exact line where, uh, I think it was Alireza who lost against Wesley with white. Or the other way around? Yeah, I can't. I don't see it here is in it my it database. Mm -hmm, there was some game recently, maybe not with Queen C2, but uh, yeah, there was some game where White, like, Black mixed up something in the opening. Yeah. White eventually took on C6 and took on E5, mm. and uh, Black played some Knight H5, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it started as a like a very bad version for Black, and then Black won within six moves or something. So it can get sharp yeah. s sometimes. It's just not going to get sharp right away. Yeah. And, and yeah, I do think Ding, OK, Ding is thinking, but um, this seems to be like the main choice of people in this position. So yeah. I, I, think, I think he will play that. Could be. But speaking of this becoming sharp, Yeah. so let's say black plays bishop g4. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's necessarily ideal. Bishop g4 right yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. But let's say if my goal is to kind of force you to, to play a game. Mm -hmm. You know, it's... Um, so I got to figure out, okay, w what you want with this move. Well, first of all, I mean, I have to say I would probably be interested at some point in playing h3. Yeah. But maybe I should start with this move because I can see how that would be useful in a lot of positions. Yeah, okay, I'll play something like rook a to d8. Okay. Let's go h3. Yeah, I go bishop h5. Kay. So my point is that basically you will have to play something a little bit weird to... To be able to like move my knight. To get out or you, yeah, or you have to allow bishop takes f3. Mm -hmm. Which I think is normally, uh, normally bad. And what do you have on, do you have some trick on knight h4? You want to go knight g4? Probably. No, but th this was my point. Knight h4 probably works, mm -hmm. and I think it was a better move even without... Uh, Rookie one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Maybe like right here. Yeah. Well, maybe mm -hmm. it makes sense to, to include h3, actually. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Start with that. Yes. Like that. Yeah. And it probably works, but it's far from... Uh, like, far yeah. from really obvious. But I think, yeah, I think, though, I, I don't love getting this bishop committed here. Right? Yeah because um, it could turn out to be quite misplaced. And yeah, this square is, is important in these lines. Like, it's something White always thinks about, getting a knight here. Yeah. So, yeah, let's, I mean, there's not like a ton of games from this position of recent games, but yeah, there are some prominent players that have um, reached this position, like Naka, like Surya Ganguly, and um, I guess, 
I don't know, on queen e2, just to show you some other possibilities, I don't know if it makes a big difference about where the queen is. For example, Wesley So played h6 in this position. Mm -hmm. Knight c4 and bishop d6. Mm. Okay. So, I don't know. He's kind of giving up this bishop already. I don't know if that's my, I have to say, I don't know if that's my favorite treatment I've ever seen, but. But it's it. probably normal. Yeah, just, and it's funny, he like invited rook d1, mm -hmm. invited white to take, and white just was never taken. But there we go. Ding makes the expected move knight to, knight b8. to b8. Okay. okay. So the difference between queen c2 and queen e2, mm. at least one of them, is that, uh, well, it's way more likely uh, to get into some knight h5 with the queen on e2. Mm. So in a way, queen e2 feels safer as you're mm -hmm. closer to your king, but at the same time, you're, you're not uh, running into some move yes, with tempo, the queen, right? the queen here feels very secure, right? Like there's just no way she can get into trouble. Yeah. I'm a bit more worried about the king, but um, yeah, it's a long way to get checkmated here otherwise. Let's face it. All right, so knight b8, by the way, one typical idea after that that we have seen coming is like c6. So this bishop needs to get ready to move. Mm -hmm. And I suppose that's why, um, that is why rookie one was So's choice against Naka in this position. Uh huh. So they basically say uh, the bishop sometimes belongs to f1 even, yeah? Mm -hmm. So the, se the setup white ones sometimes is bishop f1, knight c4, something Yeah, it's like interesting that. because after, I mean, in their game after rook e1, rook d8, I mean, he still actually went knight f1 uh -huh. and then okay. wound up putting the bishop here. Okay. So this let's see. This makes sense too. Let's see what else Nepo can play here. I mean, rook e1 is sensible. Are there other options here for white, like h3? Oh, you have a billion of moves. Yeah, I have H3 to I kind of don't like in general as we are... Because you're weakening some squares yeah, or... Yeah, and also potentially some bishop, uh, bishop takes H3. Mm -hmm. This is the last thing you want. Yeah, no, I like rook E1 and he just went for that. Yeah. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Okay. Okay, well now we know rook D8. Th uh, this move is maybe where black really does have other alternatives. Because yeah. Because this is not forced at all. But then it's a little puzzling. So what was mm. wrong with playing rook d8 straight away? I oh, probably could have done it, yeah. But I mean, yeah. in, in general, I guess he wants to, I wonder where this knight wants to eventually get to. Like once it gets to d7, where is it going after that? f8 and g6, for instance? Uh -huh. Well, well it's, ba it's basically the same knight as the, as the one on d2, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. So, uh, you know. So. Okay, after rook e1, so maybe we can, tr should we try to do without rook d8 and just see like if we play, I don't even know if we need to play c6 yet. Yeah, exactly. I would feel very smart not, play, not playing c6. But mm -hmm. the thing is, if you, so okay, what, what, what else would make you feel very smart playing what move exactly? Rook d8 or knight b to d7. Okay, let's go knight d7. So, we're still not going to get the knight anywhere without moving at least some piece, right? Do you think that there's any chance this bishop would like to, well, doesn't really want to go to C b6. I just was thinking if there could ever be a chance we could use these squares, but it's not so easy, yeah? Yeah. I also think it's a little bit move by move. Mm -hmm. And we need to ki kind of follow what's going on on the other half of the board. Yeah, okay, so let's, let's try So let's say after knight f1, mm -hmm. like we're given some knight g4, which I don't know if we need, but... Uh, we could consider that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you definitely don't want to like go there and trade off all the pieces. That's kind of like making an immediate draw. Yeah, you'll probably try some rook e2. Mm -hmm. But then somehow your bishop is a... Uh, I mean, maybe now we go c6, yeah? You don't have like too many good squares. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe knight b6. For the moment it feels... Okay, Ding played rook d8, so okay. he's going the way Naka went. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's actually interesting that, well, it's kind of dry mm -hmm. and it's symmetrical and all that stuff. But at the same time, we only had, uh, we only had a couple of pawns actually. Traded. Traded. And uh, I mean, I saw it quite often actually in this kind of games that uh, things happen. Mm -hmm. And things happen 
in general, in this kind of proposition, things happen way more often than uh, one might think. Yeah, I mean, you know, potentially in the long, long run, white does have breaks with B4. Sure. Right? That's kind of a typical idea. Yeah. Um, and then I guess the other idea is like, well, you're probably not going to get to the D5 square, but you do have hopes of getting to the F5 square. So yeah, those exactly. are kind of like either the king side attack or the move B4 seems to be like um, the range of ideas for white, right? Yeah. Black has some long-term upsides too. So for instance, his bishop on c5 is very strong. And uh, in terms of ideas, if white will trade it, then once again, potentially, black is in a great shape, as this pawn on a4 is fixed on mm. light square. So mm -hmm. some bishop a6 followed by bishop b3 might come. And the knight on c5 will be a monster. Like there are even long-term scenarios where black is better like without white blundering, uh, mm. blundering a piece. It's not that simple. OK, but knight f1, which, which is what Wesley did, seems pretty sensible, right? Yeah. Um, OK, so let's try that. Knight f1, c6, bishop c4, and h6. OK. And basically, nice. basically, Naka just kind of played bishop e6 at some point pretty soon. Mm -hmm. So this is what happened, like knight g3, knight g4, he protected the pawn, and then he went for the trade. OK. And then let's see. Let's see if there was anything interesting in this game. h3, knight f6, rook b1. And but looking at mm -hmm. rook b1, you can actually guess, right, that it's not that simple. White is uh, suddenly um, lacking ideas, kind of. Say some knight a6, I'm not even sure what you play next as white. Mm. I mean, it has to be OK. White is probably even slightly better. But my point is that basically it's not that you can at some point just sit and wait as white. Then it can actually um, become very good for black rather quickly. Yeah, black. I guess after knight a6, I would probably be going bishop d2, right, to try to get this idea in. Because I don't know what else I can do with that bishop. Yeah, yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. But then again, do you really want this b4? Well, Wesley Who really knows? wanted it, so I, okay. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to do it too. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, I mean, the game, the, their game still ended in a draw, mm -hmm. but so he did he did yeah. kick away the bishop. So basically, knight b d seven, b four, bishop f eight, mm -hmm. bishop e three. So he got the bishop out. And then some b five happened. And b five, yeah. yeah, and everything kind of started to get traded. A b c b, uh, b a rook a five. Yeah. And then those pawns were probably traded yeah, at some point too. Yeah, queen b three, queen c six, and I don't, I don't think anything, anything very interesting ever happens in this game. Yeah, things just kind of got traded. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't know. That's one scenario for this game. Yeah. Um, hopefully, uh, it will actually swear off that path and become a little bit more interesting. I mean, I wonder. And so I wonder, like, if there's any point to play that just to kind of avoid these knight g four things. Yeah, but then you're inviting knight h5. Yeah. And I'm not even sure what's better, mm -hmm. kind of. But say you go h3, mm -hmm. I go knight h5. If the knight will ever land on a 4 mm -hmm. it will be very difficult to chase it away. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying, right? We actually have to be careful about, like, we're not the only ones who are trying to get, like, a knight to f5, right? But he did play h3, I guess. Did he? No, there I we think go. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah. OK. This is actually a very tricky, you know. I mean, I don't want to be uh, predicting bad things for Jan. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's not that simple to play the game where. Uh, oh, wow. Immediate answer by Ding. Yeah, where you're not exactly sure what you're looking for, sort of. Mm -hmm. And this mindset where, OK, I'm white, I'm one point ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm basically okay with the draw, mm -hmm. but I will go press a little. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want to play, but not this much. Mm. This is actually a mindset that... Uh, is dangerous. Yeah, I mean. I think in general, whenever you have this kind of thinking, where uh, <laughs> you're kind of ready to, to allow a draw is white, mm. it's actually mi much better to just force it. And uh, I mean, otherwise, you just go play for a win. 
Okay. Nine of one. Was yeah, nine of one. one. Okay. Yeah. So it's interesting that Ding felt that it was also important for him to throw in that move. Mm -hmm. um, knight of one. Okay. So now it's going to be a little different from the Wesley Naka game. Right. There's, there's no knight g4. Yeah. There's no knight g4. Um, but there is this idea of knight h5, like right here, that we can take a look at. I don't know. Maybe white is going to be going through e3, right? Yeah. So should we should we throw in c6 just probably like that, and then let's just take a look at this position. Yeah. At least you don't have to worry about yeah any knight g5s. Yeah. I mean, I must say, it does feel a bit too hasty, right? Uh, without the development of, yeah. this, of these pieces to but be going. But at the same time, yeah, I mean, I don't know what's wrong exactly. Maybe bishop is 3 followed by rook ad1, simply. Mm -hmm. Maybe... Yeah, he did, I think, play the move c6. c6. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. c6 on the board, so we're kind of heading in that direction. Yeah, I doubt that he will be playing this move so early. He'll probably want to get the queen side pieces out. So, yeah. in fact... Um, in that game, he was able to play bishop e6, but in this position, you actually can't because you don't have this pawn protected, right? You don't have the knight here that can protect that pawn. Yeah, I mean, you could try to make it work tactically, Yeah, how but it probably doesn't work. Yeah, I don't know. I saw something smart here, like knight d7, knight b to d7, let's say. Can it ever be? Okay. That feels... Uh, How are you going to make this work, Daniel? I'm not sure. Maybe just bishop takes c4. Yes, but still OK. I mean, you're down a pawn. Well, I guess you have some ideas. Yeah, yeah, bishop d3 is coming in the very That's end. That's your but, uh, idea. Mm. Yeah, but maybe you just, I mean, you take on c5, you go yeah. bishop d3, you go bishop d4, you stabilize, and yes. then, yeah. OK, so there is already a little bit of a difference mm -hmm. uh, from the Wesley Naka game, like a practical difference that we can see. And that yeah. difference is that. Um, you know, it's not quite as easy for black to go bishop e6 and trade those bishops. Yeah. So, okay. Um, in that case, I mean, of course, you can go... I mean, first of all, we have, like, an almost nearly symmetrical position, right? Yeah. It's funny. Uh, who do you think these differences favor? So there's, like, a queen on c2 versus a queen on e7, and black's work is on the open file compared to white's work on e1. This knight is kind of further along on the path to getting to f5 than this knight is. Yeah. So this is why uh, this is probably good for white, right? I mean, yeah, it seems like Well, it's basically all yeah. similar, and your knight is on f1 compared mm -hmm. to, to the knight on b8. I think bishop c4 was played. Yeah. Yeah. OK. And did he just, uh, he made some very fast moves. He played knight a6. Knight, knight yeah. a6, yeah. Oh, ah, interesting. Okay. OK. So this is already like a kind of a new path being laid out here. Yeah. Knight is not, is not trying to go. Ah, this is actually way. wise. Well, I can sort of explain that. So let's say if you go knight bd7, uh, knight bd7 instead. Mm -hmm. Knight g3. Mm -hmm. Knight f8. Mm -hmm. Then, just in terms of logic, let's say I go knight f5 at some point. Yeah. You probably take. And then the knight I take. is just. And the knight is restricted. Yeah. And in Ding's case, his knight will be on c7 instead of f8 in the same position. That it could go like maybe here. Yeah, so he will play e5, e4, and then uh, mm. his knight has you know brilliant prospects coming yeah. to uh, coming to d5. Yeah, yeah, this knight certainly isn't very comfortable here in f8. Yeah. Um, okay, well it's nice to see Ding first of all play this move pretty quickly. Um, I wonder, do you think? He, I mean, you think he still has this kind of ideas worked out at home? I would think so because yeah, of it's course. not. This is not that obvious that he would just play this in one second. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, also as we could see, Dink is not kind of a person who thinks uh, it's in general a good idea to spend thirty seconds for a move. Right. So yeah. <laughs> so he he must know it if he's yeah. doing it that quickly. Yeah, like yes. The approach you you can like or dislike, but this is the approach, right? So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. So knight a six. So basically, you're saying that when this knight is going here, we're just continuing an hour path, and that when you arrive in f5, we're going to take you. Mm -hmm. And then this pawn is under attack, so we're going to push it. Mm -hmm. And that and is sharp. Yeah, kind you, can't, of. you can't really like, try to win it. Like, none of this kind of stuff is going to work. 
Yeah. Um, because I can just take it. And, and then at least this knight could do a good job at neutralizing that bishop. Yeah. That's Basi really interesting. Yeah, basically the way I see those positions is that as long as you don't lose the pawn on e4 mm -hmm. within three moves, you, you, you are, uh, you're doing very well with black. Yeah, no, I have to say, like, of course, this bishop can have a lot of power in these types of positions, but the way this knight is going to neutralize him is uh, it's going to be very effective. Yeah. Um, I suppose you can also run into potential problems with this pawn. Yeah, exactly. Right? So, yeah. Like, it's not out of the question. I mean, I've, I don't know if you want to be going g4. Um, so here, there's actually maybe like some risk for white in this particular position. Yeah. With the pawn structure. Yeah, the so line didn't look, uh, you know, like an absolute must for both. Yes. To be honest, but um, yeah, at least it makes sense. But it, it shows kind of like the concept of what black is going for. Yeah. So black is basically preparing for uh, for knight f5. Yeah, and this knight is it's interesting. So basically when it's there, it's not blocking the bishop from controlling that square. Yeah, and it's also preparing b7, b5. Yep. Which yeah. is not necessarily a good thing, but uh, sometimes it is. And it kind of like it's not really fighting with this bishop over any squares, because I kind of feel like when that knight goes there, sometimes it might want to go there, but then the bishop is standing here actually yeah. quite well. So okay. I do like knight a6. Um, well, yeah, at least it makes sense, for sure. Yeah, so let's try to come up with some ideas for white. Well, my first question would be, like, this is so smart and stuff, so still I go knight g3, mm -hmm. knight c7. Mm -hmm. So with all the respect to black's idea, so what happens if I go knight h4? Yes, exactly. You're trying to get into these squares. And yeah. Nepo just did knight g3. Yeah. My guess would be that First of all, something like bishop e6 is OK. And mm. in general, it's not great for white to have both knights fighting for this mm. square on f5. So basically, you're saying that when this knight gets here, you're just going to move this queen somewhere. Perhaps to f8? I actually like all three squares for different reasons. Even, uh, d7, even d7 doesn't look insane. Mm-hmm. But let's say f8. f8 is the most uh, solid move. Mm -hmm. So it's not easy to push out this knight, though. Yeah, but you're like an idea too. Mm -hmm. And let's say, wow, he played what? Queen, Queen c7? Queen c7. And again, he plays this quite quickly. So OK, okay. yeah, there's definitely preparation, because like none of this is intuitive at all. You would never, ever <laughs> play this, such a move so fast. No, probably not. Right. Um, so uh, interesting. So he basically creates a symmetric situation of the queens. Um, yes. Getting out of these knight of five ideas. It, it is weird, right? I mean, you're taking away that square from the knight. So it's like basically yeah. we're still struggling then to understand this move. Well, I mean, this move was just a useful move. Let's. Uh, for the moment, let's... <laughs> let's leave that alone. Yeah, uh, let, let's go with that theory. Yeah? He was just... Uh, I mean, he just played some some developing move. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I know, but when I put a knight on the side of the board, Daniel, I really want to know where it's going after that. So, I mean, do you think... I have an idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe it really is that this knight is planning to come here. Yeah. That's what it is, right? The queen is going to stay here kind of defending the pawn out of the way of that attack. And, and then where is this bishop going to want to move back to let the knight in? Yeah, also maybe you don't need to move it back. You really just want to keep that knight there? Well, like if you're black, you can also try to think kind of defensively. Mm. So this setup with knight on a6 and bishop on c5, it, it feels like at least, it uh, kind of prevents b4 forever. Then what are the options for white in terms of ideas? So one option is knight mm. h4, knight f5, yeah. which was just imagine we, f uh, for some reason, we are ready for. Maybe let's say after knight h4, we are planning bishop e6. And then we, we are OK with um, playing f takes e6, and then we'll have some counterplay on the f file. For instance, let's just imagine that. And then if we have some, uh, some antidote to knight h4, mm. then basically white will have to play bishop e3 one day. Mm. And then we'll trade and play knight c5. 
Well, I'm definitely interested in this idea if you don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, I will do something, right? Yeah. Well, hold on. Let's just imagine. OK, well, let's make a move for white. So basically, white still doesn't want to like come in here, right? Because you're going to take? Yeah, probably. You're going to take, and then still this is looking like a, but it's not as pretty as it used to be. No. It's definitely not the same as when this knight can go to d5. No. Oops, I can't make that arrow. But um, it's, first of all, it's probably still good. Yeah, and then you'll run into some. Something to do with this, right? Yeah, I have some queen g3s. I think could happen, actually. Also, e3, just in terms of ideas, e3, mm -hmm. f takes, and then just playing it. Just Look, playing this position. Yeah, looks kind of interesting, too. Like yeah. B, like b5 or something. Yeah, I mean, I doubt that white is going to be like leaping in with a knight with no preparation. So. Yeah. And secondly, after knight f5 mm -hmm. or knight h4, but like especially after knight f5, mm -hmm. we actually have uh, bishop e6 too. Really? Yeah. Which I don't know how to how to estimate, but those are not always bad. Yeah. Although it is always kind of a dramatic moment to get those double pawns. It's such a big decision. Like, I don't know, could he really be wanting to do something like that, just to kind of control all the center squares? I mean, it could be. You have the F file. You look at it at home. Mm. Actually, Queen C7 was played in three correspondence games. Daniil, were you checking correspondence games when you were preparing for the World Championship matches with Magnus? Yeah. From time to time. Mm -hmm. Well, technically, it would not be me, mm -hmm. but <laughs> I would always be told what's going on there. Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys discover any interesting ideas from the correspondence games? Like any uh, good sometimes. directions? It's normally not about the the direction being being interesting. It's mm -hmm. more about the direction being dead. Mm -hmm. Like let's say there is some position that looks like a fortress to you, mm -hmm. and the engine says it's like much better for white, but you don't see a clear plan. Mm -hmm. And then you check the correspondence games, and it was played like 20 times. And in 20 games, nothing Ended happened. Ended in a draw. Yeah, yeah. and l like exactly nothing happened. And then you're like, OK, sure, then it's probably just a dead draw. Um, but yeah, sometimes the way they play is uh, very, very, very unhuman. And then like even. Let's say as black, even if the line they play is a draw, you actually realize you're just not capable of uh, playing the same moves yourself, mm -hmm. kind of. Then it's always like m move by move, some study like defense and stuff. And uh, it's interesting from the theoretical point of view. But uh, yeah, I guess all the board players and correspondence players do I actually need? All right, I find this structure pretty fascinating that you would be willing to look at it, which is not obvious to me at all, right? Like, I got to say that for me, this idea, uh, not the most intuitive. I totally get that these ideas exist in chess, but I don't think you're going uh, you to you're gonna find any games in the database of mine where I have pawns like that, it actually. Okay. Do, do you have any games like that, Daniil? Yeah. Yep. From what kind of uh, uh, positions? Uh, I played many games in the uh, in the Italian is black with uh, bishop e7. Yeah, but and then the you have another pawn, right? Don't you like? It's not. Yeah, just yeah, but this. yeah, but then I would very often go bishop e6 takes takes, and ah, then I yes. would play d5 yes. and take on e4 or something. That's right. Yeah, actually, looking at the Italian recently, I did realize that um, that you can play with those kinds of pawns. So. Here we go. Let's yeah, but it's moves. normally, it's very much, <coughs> once again, it's very much move by move. Like, you don't want to sit and wait as black. Yeah. You, you want to do something like maybe, let's say, bishop a7 followed by knight c5. You want to play aggressive <coughs> moves, and you want them to work. OK. Yeah. So try, try your aggressive moves out. Bishop yeah, bishop a7, a7 yeah. I guess, yeah. OK. But I'm not saying I like this yeah. at the same time. You're just saying it's like maybe some possibility. Yeah. And so knight c4, you're going to be going like knight d7 or? No, I mean, I want knight c5 to work. As I, I said want before, it to work, yeah, I mean, okay. I, uh, How is it going to work? I don't know, but if it doesn't, I'll just give up, okay? Okay. Yeah, I guess knight c takes c4 or something. 
You can yeah. even play bishop e3, though. So. Yeah, I'm still trying to under, I still want to get your idea. Something tricky, you want this rook d1, and then bishop f2, I guess, right? Yeah. But then I have quite a lot of Madeiro, and your pieces are pinned, so it's not, yeah, so I see it's not that mean. clear. Or maybe mm -hmm. rook f8, let's say, instead of uh, bishop takes f2, I don't know. But in general, it doesn't look uh, necessarily bad for black. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I but you can just play bishop e3, yes. like and you're just in, worse yeah, here. Yeah. yeah, in other positions like this, and I'm actually massively worse. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm this afraid. pawn is terrible. Yeah, yeah, that cuts out all your fun. Yeah, so maybe we should not be doing that. Yeah. Okay, thing. let's try not to be so dramatic with Ding's position. Let's see how he is gonna. What's like a more uh, practical way to to respond to knight of? Uh, no, sorry, not knight of five. No, it was knight f5. Oh, we looked at knight f5, bishop b. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, no, let's I mean, go knight we, h4. Yeah, we just said bishop takes yeah. f5 is cool, and then we mm. started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Knight h4. So knight h4. Okay. I really, for me, the question is, I want to know what you're doing with these pieces. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, I mean, I understand you don't get to kind of. Um, can I just say something funny, Daniel? Make the first impression second time, but now yeah. bishop e6 is much better version. OK, can I? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll let you make that first impression yeah. again. OK. Um, but you know what I'm thinking? It's kind of uh, could be a funny way of developing this game. Like, this queen moved away here, mm -hmm. but I could totally see white's queen coming in <laughs> back to e2 you know, yeah, in this it is, game, yeah. which would be just a funny little a dance of the queens like that yeah. in opposite directions. Um, okay, so you want to try again with the first impression. So yeah. Bishop well, I want to is a bit too strong, but here I think uh, it's not that bad that it okay. was. Okay. Hmm. Well, yeah, you know, I am going to take you up on this, and yeah. we can take a look here. So there's no point ever of my knight coming in. It's just going to yeah. get chased away. I mean, you can even attack it with your king. Right. So basically, this knight needs to go back. Yeah. And then this knight, yeah, this is like a much worse version of the one that we kind of just looked at for yeah, white. Yeah, in the previous line, you basically allowed. I was just al attacking your pawn. Yeah, yeah, you were basically allowed to play uh, knight g3 to e3 mm. in this position. And then you go knight f3 and bring it, bring it to c4. So basically, you're saying my knight is like completely useless now. On yeah, that square. Yeah, I guess you'll go knight f3 anyway, and mm -hmm. you'll be doing like all the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, but it will just um, it will just take you more time. And then I don't know some rook d7 or bishop a7. So you want to try to some get in on that square? Yeah, I mean sometimes it will work. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It won't. okay. I find it at least uh, like a lot more plausible in this version. Right. Rook, rook f8 even followed by some you know knight h7s. Mm. All right, so bishop here. And should I go knight d2, but then you go knight c5. And you're kind of getting into d3. Yeah, my guess would be that you still play it simple. You go knight f1, you go bishop e3. Mm -hmm. You basically uh, play all the same moves. And they are probably good enough to actually help you even on this version. But here I need to be careful with this pawn somewhat. Or do you just go, yeah, you just go like here. Yeah, you're maybe, attacking yeah. it. I mean, still, you have some knight to force. Knight of four. It doesn't yeah. work here. OK, you just take on a7. a7 yeah, and yeah, and then, then it, gets, yeah. it gets awkward for black. Yeah. Because they have problems with this pawn. Yeah, so maybe rook f8 instead of bishop a7. Maybe we actually need to try, mm -hmm. so after knight f3. Something more aggressive. Yeah, maybe we try to come up with something mm -hmm. there. But in general, Black's main hope is that White will spend time bringing this knight from g3 to e3. But then, yeah, and that we'll gives you some ideas, right? Yeah, and then we'll try to use, yeah, mm -hmm. is this two tempest to come up with something. Mm. Yeah, knight h5 is an interesting idea. Yeah. Still, I must say, having said okay, that, I... Okay, let's try. Let's just, keep, let's yeah. just play the most <laughs> absolutely natural way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, having said that, I must say, I don't really buy it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe rook a to d8 or something. 
I mean, I guess if you've studied these structures a lot, then maybe you can afford to go, it, go for it. Like, if you haven't studied it, it feels very like shaky, right? Like you have to have a yeah. really good idea about how you're going to get counterplay to compensate for those pawns. Yeah. No, but it's always bothers in the long term. Mm. So it's just very much, I mean, you don't need to make uh, like a very big work trying to figure out how the structure works. Mm. It basically never works for Gluck unless he is just like in time with some, uh, some immediate attack, right? Mm -hmm. And here I don't see this attack coming, to be honest. Okay, so in that case, if we're not such fans of bishop e6, then let's then, see yeah, how then. else black can meet the move knight to h4. Uh, how we about bishop f8? Can we just try one of my routine-like moves here? <laughs> uh, kind of solidify yeah. the king side and then like try to get this knight in. Let's just see how that mm -hmm. works. Okay. Okay, so I guess I'll uh, let you taste your own medicine. Yeah, I go queen e2. Mm-hmm, okay. Right, so you basically want to come in and then just make some simple sacrifice here to show me the yeah. problems of my position. I, th I do see it. Um, I mean, by the way, I have to say that, like, look, if I didn't know, um, yeah, if I, this move is like not intuitive by any means. Like if I didn't no. know that it was all Ding's prep, mm -hmm. I mean it would just like literally never pop into my mind to take away that square from the knight. Yeah. Right. I mean, is that your impression about this move, or would you ever think of this like just uh, if you were playing the game without any well, prior I, knowledge? Well, I would normally play knight a six, like basing this on some idea. Yeah. So uh, over the board, I don't see myself. Uh, yeah, you know, bank knight s6 followed by queen c7. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it almost feels like um, misclick on internet, right? You want mm -hmm. to piece some, uh, put oh, some. Oh, you want to put it knight yeah, s7, yeah, 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 but you yeah, put yeah. the queen there yeah, 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 by exactly. accident. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there are going to be some jokes about that. Uh, that ding mouse lipped with queen c7. Um, knight h4. So bishop f8 and mm -hmm. queen e2. Yeah. Yeah, your attack is starting. I can see. Well, it's a long way to get mated, though. But I mean, once your queen gets here, I can tell you, like, I'm going to feel very uncomfortable. Okay. Nice to hear. Mm hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Do you have some ideas here for black? Well, I just don't think it's too bad in general. So let's say you go knight c5, queen f3, mm -hmm. and. Uh, then what are you doing with you this knight? You think here a little. I you don't know. You contraattack somehow. You go b5, I'd say. Let's go oh b5. Wow. It's based on these kinds of tactics. Uh huh. No, it's not too much tactics. You basically, you basically take it probably, right? Yeah. So I'm trying to see wh where. Oh, your compensation is like knight b3. Yeah, yeah, I'll just take uh, take the bishop, and I'll say bishop takes h6 is not a threat anymore. Uh -huh. And I'm in general not too, not too impressed by your pieces. Okay, I go knight b3. Yeah. I take c1, I just go bishop e6, rook b8. Yes, here I can see that you have what we call compensation. Yeah. Um, and if I don't <coughs> play along, and if I, then you go to d3. Ah, I see. Yeah. So you actually have some counterplay based on these two squares. Yeah, for instance, I'm not saying this is necessarily great, but this is one of those. But it, I mean, it's actually very logical. Like, it, it almost feels like you have to have something like that, I mean, and to use the knight on the square. Well, let's say you could make an argument for playing knight takes a4 instead of b5 to, I mean, it's not that, I mean, as I said, it's a long way to like exactly lose this black normally. Mm. Like as long as you keep playing reasonable moves, you will normally have some counterplay. Like mm -hmm. here, maybe knight f five is a problem, but not bishop takes h six and. Right. Yeah. yeah. If you take with the bishop first, then the problem is like you're losing that pawn. Yeah. But the problem with knight f five is that black has knight b six, let's say, and then I mean again, you're trying to prove some compensation as Which knight you want to put there? This one. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying there is mm -hmm. 9 b 6 and then, uh, I mean, I won a bonus block, and I'm not resigning yet. And yeah, you, can't, you still can't really Yeah. Uh, well, take care. Let's actually have a look at Vicious Swords. Yeah. Uh, 
we are thinking about to see his tweet mm. on our screen. All right, Vishy the King says, Ding's preparation looks very effective indeed. Okay. All right, so that's good news for uh, Team Ding okay. that his preparation is looking good right now with this uh, Queen C7 idea. But yeah, I mean, I really like these ideas of the V5 that you've like brought up. Mm -hmm. So let's just take one more look at like how this works. Because I mean, yeah, I agree, knight, knight takes A4 also, cool. But let's see this, 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 and then Yeah, this, this one was more solid, right? I mean, it felt more solid. Mm. Well, so you're basically getting this bishop, right? Yeah, so and if I do, then I'm not too worried. Like knight takes c4, I can actually believe that I'm in trouble there. Here mm. I take on c1. So take on c1. I go bishop e6. And like that maybe. Yeah, mm. bishop e6, let's say. And you know, I've been playing Sveshnikov for my whole life. Mm. I'm not worried. I'm used to having uh, basically the same position with the bishop on g7, yeah. let's say, so instead the of a fate. The good news for black here is that white's attack is completely over. These two knights like are on the king side, but it's really, I mean, it's not dangerous, these ideas at all. Yeah. And, and these bishops now kind of exert some pressure on the queen side. Yeah. You get a lot of compensation, yeah. I mean, so you wouldn't really be very worried down a pawn here, huh? Yeah. No, I think I even take black here, maybe. I'm not worried at all. Really? Yeah. I, I mean, black, black. Ha black has all the good news in the world, except for being down a pawn. You have yeah. to. You have two bishops. You have uh, brilliant have, pieces. Yeah, I can have like c4 somewhere. Yeah, yeah, still yeah. But then I'll play bishop c5, and you never win this. I mean, it's just. All right. Let's play a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's start improving this knight. Okay. Let's go here. Okay. So let's say. Uh, Don't forget so my threat. Yeah. So first of all, like, should I be? Instructive or should I play well? Be instructive. Okay, then I just uh, then I just prevent knight takes h6 by playing um, something king very h7? something very simple. Yeah, we'll take king h7. Okay. Okay. So here I was thinking I can hop around with this knight. Yeah, obviously I can't sack anymore because mm -hmm. that isn't going anywhere. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking somehow intuitively that maybe this knight here would be good. Now you have rook d2 ideas. Yeah, but as I promised Sometimes. you, as I promised you to be instructive, I will not play it. Yeah, I mean, I, s I would still have knight f1. Okay. Yeah, I'll just play bishop c5. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. By the way, we're seeing a move from Jan, and, and it is he goes bishop a2. Bishop a2. Okay. okay. So what is? How do we understand this move? It's a little bit. I mean, okay, it's not the most intuitive move to me by any means because, like, you're actually letting that square go, right? Yeah. There's, it's a little more likely that Black's knight could arrive here, and it's a little easier for Black to play b5, so I mm -hmm. don't know. Yeah. At the same time, b5 was only effective being a tempo, right? Mm -hmm. um, like, b5 itself is not a big deal. Like it's not that we, we go b5 here as black and, right. we, and we start clapping for some reason. Yeah. It probably makes sense, but um, not more than that. Mm -hmm. No, I think his logic is uh, kind of simple. So there, there was some elimination process. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't want bishop e3 in general, mm -hmm. as this allows black to trade and play in knight c5. He didn't like knight f5 because of taking followed by e5, e4. Mm -hmm. And we completely understand that. Mm -hmm. He didn't like knight h4 for some reason, but it kind of makes sense too. Knight h4 makes it way more double-edged. Yeah, that's really the move that you know seemed the most natural knight h4, I think. Yeah, but as I said before, I mean, if you want to be solid in this game, knight h4 is a bit you know tricky. And then you play some pass, trying to figure out what mm. was this queen c7 about, and um, kind of you know to let the guy play move. So let's make just a prediction of what uh, Ding will do before we go on our break. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, would, you s like, would you say this bishop is going to move to somewhere in this diagonal? Or, I mean, it's a little strange to move him here and then block him with the knight, right? Yeah. At the same time, it's a little weird to play bishop of 8 with a knight on f3. 
Then white will just reshuffle. He'll play bishop e3. Mm -hmm. And there will be no knight h4. He'll just play rook a to d1. So in terms of logic, it kind of makes sense to pass back. Mm. Something like, I don't know, even. So you're saying that if bishop f8, I'm allowing you to just develop. Yeah. And then if I go here, you're going just rook a d1. Yeah. I can't get in. And, and I kind of let your bishop have a better square. Yeah. Hmm. And then I still have to like make, s I mean, I guess the question is, how do we just evaluate this position? Because this is a move that, you know, black probably wants to get in. Yeah, so your point is that it allows bishop takes c5, right? And then you, you will have your favorite pawns. Yeah. On a six and e five, but yeah. Unfortunately, have unfortunately, I was kind of considering this, but I realized like now my bishop gets trapped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little sad. I can't take because then you're gonna like throw in that trade, and at the end of all of that, you're gonna trap that bishop. It's not exactly what I wanted. Yeah. I would say that that was not the plan. Okay. Um, but actually, I don't know. No, this actually is with the bishop here. Yeah, the bishop yeah, kind of unchallenged. Maybe yeah. we can do this. Yeah, it is not the worst position in the world for sure. Like, there are some queen b3s that mm -hmm. will be annoying. But I must say I changed my mind a little. Now looking at the position after bishop a2, I must say if I'm ding, I actually kind of want, want to consider b5 for real. Mm. Especially, yes. especially because I don't see, I kind of don't see too many reasonable moves instead. Mm -hmm. And then b5 is at least, you know, I'm doing something. Yeah. I guess I'm in general quite often happy to take on a4 even. Mm -hmm. And then play bishop b6, knight c5 for the tempo. So I would like mm -hmm. very much like to examine that. Like maybe white has a better version of knight f5. I or think something. he just he went for it. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So you're going to get to examine that. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, first I would prefer to, to examine the break, to be honest. All right. So, guys, we're going to go on our first break. Uh, the game is developing, I would say, in a pretty interesting way in terms of maybe black even uh, being able to create a fighting game out of the symmetrical structure. Yeah. So we're definitely not headed for um, a quiet draw just yet. Um, so stay tuned and we'll see you on the other side of the break. At that point, it was uh, some mixed feelings uh, because it's a big challenge for me. But now I can see I'm, I'm ready for this challenge. I'm confident about my preparation. Also, I think I, uh, I grew up a little bit. I'm more mature, <laughs> so I can handle the pressure I didn't feel any nervous right now. Uh, as I remember, it was a uh, Topalov Anand match. I was uh, in my teenagers. Uh, Topalov's attacking play uh, inspired me a lot. Because he had higher ratings, also my recent play in White Kanze was a disaster. So maybe that's why he, he's a favorite to this match. But I think we have equal chance. It's uh, not a friend, but a good and friendly chess player. Well, he can play very fast and very strong if he's in very good shape. Also, he has a, the experience of the World Championship. But <laughs> as I said, maybe he's a little bit Emotional. Sometimes he played too fast. He forgot his preparation. Or yeah, if he made mistakes, I will try to explore it.
the match is uh, is developing in a very unexpected manner. Uh, players are trading blows. Um, Ding um, just uh, how to say some games he plays uh, excellent and some games he plays extremely badly and uh, yeah and, uh, it's pretty much impossible to predict what's uh, going to happen next uh, although uh, now of course Jan is again a very clear favorite Ding uh, is clearly playing the strategy of uh, just jumping around with white uh, playing uh, some different uh, quite rare uh, systems so uh, yeah it's all, I, I'm pretty sure he's uh, going to employ the same strategy uh, so yeah there was no there were not any big surprises but I think uh, his second Richard Rapport uh, did a good job of advising uh, Dink this strategy because uh, at least with White it definitely works up to this moment.
Hey guys, we're back with our coverage of the ninth game. Today we have an anti-Berlin on the board. Um, it's a symmetric structure in the center with one pair of pawns getting traded. Um, but still, a lot of pieces are on the board. In fact, there have been no piece trades so far. And uh, Daniil, you're actually saying that in these kinds of structures, anything can happen despite the symmetric nature of it. Yeah, the game is very much on. Mm -hmm. And no, I mean, I'll take risk and say, uh, I have a feeling. Someone will generate winning chances today. Uh, I was about to say the, the, the symmetry will be broken mm -hmm. um, within the next like, four or five moves. But in general, given this tension between the pawns on uh, a4 and b5, I have a feeling that it won't, you know, it won't be like this forever. And let's say now something like bishop of 8 mm -hmm. I mean, it's really sharp. The game is very much on. Wait, you're saying that basically like, uh, well, right now you don't think black needs to even protect this pawn? Well, I think bishop of eight kind of, kind of. Uh, That's like a pawn sack. You just want to yeah, go knight c5. Right? Yes, yeah, but this looks like overwhelming, no? Yeah. Like no. when you think about it, it's not like, it's not like a sack. It's, uh, you mm -hmm, know, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's clearly good for black. And uh, the only question is if it's only good to to equalize yeah. or um, for something more. Yeah, this queen, um, you know what's funny is that actually this is not just a simple yeah. attack, is it? Like if black gets that move in, that queen is in big trouble. Yeah. But even long term, like let's say white will somehow survive. Mm -hmm. So even if I go a4, I go rook b8, I mm -hmm. mean I have all the compensation in the world. Yes, yes you do, okay. It was actually my friend Sasha Rezansov who once explained me the same thing in the red opening, which made mm -hmm. my life uh, much easier. Yeah, because these ideas exist in the ready as well, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So he, he basically told me once, like I, was, uh, like I was asking him how to play there, and he just said that, I mean, let's say here there is knight d7, where they say white has to play d4. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, what's wrong with bishop g2, e5, d3, and what is the difference? Mm -hmm. And what he said, and it's actually uh, correct, he said that you put the, the bishop on e7, not c5. Mm -hmm. And then when they get this e4, mm -hmm. you at some point take, mm -hmm. you castle, mm -hmm. and I guess you go c6. And then once they start this like a4, and they start this like flexible thing with rook d1, knight h4 or something, you basically don't care, and uh, whatever happens, you just go a5, b5. I you see. sacrifice it, you go bishop a6, and it normally works. Mm -hmm. And my life became so nice, at least uh, those days where I face the rate opening, you know. As, uh, yeah, indeed, it normally works. So here we can, we can look at pretty much the same idea. It's probably a better version for white, as compared to the rate opening, his bishop is on a2, not g2. Mm -hmm. Uh, but still. But still, this square is very, the very idea, weak. Yeah, the idea is very, uh, very valid and it's very healthy. And I would say it's not, even, it's not even based on tactics. I think it's just a general, uh, general thing that, uh, you know, like even if we go a4, we go rook b8 and we mm -hmm. just play a game, uh, it should not be too bad ever, I would say. Daniil, is the sound of your coffee arriving. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Aren't you happy? My, my, yeah, my virtual coffee, yeah. Um, okay. All right, so basically that makes a lot of sense to me that you don't even have to protect this pawn. I mean, I guess if you wanted to, you could play, I don't know, rook b8, yeah? Yeah, but then you need to think. And then yeah. once, once you kind of figure out that you don't need to, yeah. then you just realize, okay, I, I just play some random moves that I wanted to play. Which is bishop of eight in this case? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, you know, I've been advocating for the improvements of this knight for a while. Yeah. I really want to see him get off the side of the board. So to me, if we can just play here, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and also, yeah, because this square, it is weakened in the position. So let's say mm -hmm. we are, you're not going to take this pawn and you're going to do, mm. but here's the thing though, right? That like, actually after this move, this, I mean, somewhere there could be issues with the e4 pawn, right? Yeah. And by the way, do you think it's ever, I mean, I actually think it is an issue that I can maybe just take at some point. Sure. All right. Well, I don't think this is the, 
is the best pawn in the world to take? I don't know. I think it's not a bad one. I mean, yeah, yeah. You, you want your knight on c5 mostly. Yes. I mean, this is the thing. Yeah, I agree. I you mean, because if I can use my pawn to like support my knights, I mean, it's not even like you're getting this this guy back that no. easily. No. So there's even that for uh, Jan to kind of consider. But actually, one second. So let's just um, talk about the obvious then. Why can't black just take this pawn? <laughs> he can. And this is probably one of the things he is considering. Yeah. I personally never played. But then again, we have someone who is um, thinking completely different way. Maybe it's because here the bishop just comes back. And you're not quite in time to, let's say, protect it. I mean, obviously, you could play a3, but that's not like necessarily. The yeah, dream. but then one, then what are the priorities, right? I mean, you still have bishop f8 followed by knight c5. Yes, it's just not like the beautiful version that. So we you're just basically had, but it's saying. It's not bad. Yeah. yeah. So you're basically saying you only take a4 when you kind of protect it afterwards. No, no, I see. You can take it. You can take it. Take it here. It's just not. Yeah, it's not quite as like awesome as the, what we had. But even this, like I would say, doesn't look. I mean, again, we go rook b8, we go a4. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, in general, I would prefer not to not to trade this One way. One thing we don't want to do is this move. Yeah, show this. Yeah. OK. Little tricks, and then positionally, this is actually not really what black wants, because this knight gets kicked away. You can't even go here. Yeah. You're pinned, so you don't have en passant. And um, yeah, that's like a kind of a positional blunder from black. And that's why Daniil is saying that Rook b8 is like the more accurate way to do this, and then go yeah. a4. But then it's funny is that in many lines, white can do exactly the same. So he can mm. play like here, we'll say he can play b4. And then it sometimes also makes sense. You like open the lines, so you open diagonals, you play something like bishop b2, you go bishop b2 or bishop a3, rook c1. Like normally, the best scenario for black here is that white will just pick up the pawn on c6 yeah, and, and we shake hands, mm -hmm. which is also the most likely scenario. Well, let's, OK. L so basically, black has a number of possibilities here, right? So there, this is not an, un, an impossible capture at all. No, but compared to bishop of fate, it's so it's unnatural. You definitely like this one more. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I like it in general too, right? We, are mm -hmm. just, we just make sure we are not getting checkmated there. We kind of yeah. say, don't even think about the whole knight h4 thing. Mm -hmm. Like it's rock solid on that side of the board for black. Like after bishop f8, if you don't take on b5, mm -hmm. then your queen at 2 looks a little stupid. As you could basically play any other move, and still we were planning bishop f8. OK, b, c, b. I mean, taking is, it really is just too dangerous, right? It's just too much. Like we can't I mean, neutralize this at all. If we try. No, I mean, it could be that white will calculate this and uh, he finds a path to, to equality. But it's not something that we need to be worried about as mm. black for sure. Yeah, I agree. Even if we are trying badly to play for a win, actually, then mm -hmm. it's even better. Like you're creating some disbalance, sort mm -hmm. of. Well, it could be that after bishop of 8, he will just play knight h4. And he's saying, uh, well, I kind of bluffed. Bluffed attacking b5, it didn't work. But the plan with uh, queen f3 is still very much there. Mm. Yes. And actually, why not? OK, so then we go on Let's see our five. path of improving the knight. Yeah. And then something do we think like. It's, so do you think maybe now we take, or it's still, still not worth it? I mean, are you getting this pawn back? Uh, um. Well, my guess would be that black is OK mm -hmm. in many ways. Mm -hmm. And I also find it hard to believe that b takes c4 is an attempt to be better. Mm -hmm. Probably same goes to knight c5, but knight c5 just looks more natural. Yeah, kind of. I think, um, I mean, again, it, it's a long way to actually get in trouble with white in Zanta Berlin. Yeah, here we wanted knight d3, I guess. Mm -hmm. But then again, we had the same position, right, with the bishop on c4 and white to move. I mean, before 93. Mm -hmm. So if you 
go here. Mm -hmm. So we literally had the same position with the bishop on c4. And we were trying to play b5 just to get this idea. Yeah, and white to move, and then white plays bishop a2, ignoring everything, right? Bishop right. a2 doesn't feel uh, mm -hmm. great. I mean, it kind of makes some sense, but I mean, you're basically allowing everything. You know, one thing that we have not yet pointed out is that Ding is doing quite okay in the clock today. It's actually up yeah. on time compared to Nepo. I guess Nepo spent, where did he spend the majority of his time? Was it the move queen e2 that took him so long, or bishop a2? Well, bishop, bishop a2, 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 bishop yeah. a2 was his first uh, pulse, I guess. Yes. Yeah. That's it. He spent quite a bit of time on that. Mm -hmm. Right, because uh, queen c7 was, was surprising for him. Yeah. And queen e2, he played fairly quickly. Yeah. All right, so yeah, Ding just needs to regroup these pieces. Mm -hmm. Try to take get the knight to the d3 square. Yeah. It's also a little strange. Basically, if you play this whole queen c7 thing, mm -hmm. and it's your prep, mm -hmm. you know that the basic idea is to get this kind of setup, right? With the bishop on f8 and the knight on c5 and pawn on b5, which at least as we as we think for for the moment is a is a key to the position. I checked, by the way, this position with uh, with two bishops for black where uh, he spawned down uh, during the break. And the agent says it's actually black who is slightly better. So we were right. You checked the position where, which which one? Uh, so the one we had, I guess we were trying some, I don't know, queen e2. What was it, bishop, bishop f8, knight h4, knight c5. Ah, yes. Queen f3, b5? b5, yeah. Yeah. So let's just once again mention that in this kind of position, black is a, black has a very, very comfortable equality, at very least. And the engine is even saying it's like minus 0, 1 or something. Mm -hmm. With pretty much any move. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's not concrete, it's just very, yeah, very stable and uh, good for black. So, yeah, in the game, I guess, makes so much sense to play bishop of 8. And also, I don't even understand. Well, no, he oh, plays rook b8. Oh, he goes something different. Wow. I, I was actually about to say I don't even, even mm. understand what the alternative is. But um, yes, uh, okay. to, uh, to be honest, I mean, again, Ding has you know, his own uh, thinking. And again, I yeah. personally never, ever prefer rook b8 to bishop of 8. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can see the point of b takes a4. If it works, it works. Mm -hmm. But rook b8 is a little strange to me. Yeah, I agree. Spending a tempo to protect a pawn that you can just sacrifice. And it feels like a very thematic sacrifice for this position, right? Yeah. I mean, we're seeing the sack of this pawn in a bunch of lines. Let's see Nepo's reaction. He just came to the board. Uh, he doesn't show a shock on his face from that move. No. But. Yeah, it's kind of hard. Nepo always gives away some sort of like facial expressions. Yeah. Here, this seemed like, you know, like this was just kind of a routine move for him. Yeah. Didn't elicit a whole lot of emotion. Well, um, I think it's at least a bit of a relief for him to, uh, to m make sure the guy's out of the book. Yeah. No, I mean this was just such a beautiful opportunity. Yeah. At the same time, rook b it kind of makes sense. I start to get it. You know, it's like with this uh, bishop f three. It just doesn't look natural, but when the move is played and you're yeah. looking for an explanation. So his point is that he wants to pretend that b, uh, b takes a4 is now a threat mm. at some point. Does he? Well, after bishop f8, let's say at some point he mm. will play, yeah, knight h4 was just played by Jan. So let's say now he will play bishop f8. Mm -hmm. And then after b takes a4, bishop c4, there will be knight c5. Right. And then uh, there is no this b4 that we mentioned. Yeah, this. Uh, yeah, and the rook is pretty good on the b yeah. file. I mean, okay, rook b. I mean, but it's I reasonable, uh, but yeah. But I would prefer, I would prefer the whole tempo instead. Yeah. So knight h4 played. Okay, and so the bishop is still on c5. Yeah, but now it's kind of strange. Is he going to handle it without bishop f8? I mean, the thing is that you don't really want to take here now because then there's bishop c4 and actually even get your knight under attack. Yeah. And then you're going to lose that pawn, so it's not exactly, exactly perfect, right? No. The funny thing is, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess we could, like, try this move. 
and try to then move the bishop and get the knight to c5. I don't know. It doesn't really feel right. No. Um, OK. So, but yeah, playing without moving this bishop means playing without the knight, which is just not yeah. possible. OK. But now, do you think that if you go bishop f8, like you at least have to like kind of look into th things like knight g6? Yeah, knight g6 is always, uh, is always one of the options. I don't think it will be. Uh, you know, killing too often. So mm -hmm. let's say knight g6, knight c5. You mm -hmm. take on a fate. We take back with a rook, I guess, or something. And uh, or maybe even the king. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, but let's not show off. Yeah. I mean, okay. Uh, rook takes f8. Um, yeah. Then if some bishop takes h6, is not killing, and we are in time to get some bishop e6 or something. Shouldn't be too bad. Also, I mean, in general, I just don't get this whole rook b8 thing. I, I don't know. It normally takes me a while to figure out what uh, what Dink's idea is. Yeah, I wonder what Vichy thinks about this position. Maybe it's a good moment for Vichy to tweet something about what he thinks about this rook b8 move. Yeah, but can we then tweet Vichy, Vichy please tweet? I mean, <laughs> you know that Vichy actually might be listening to us. Yeah, this would be great. Yeah. And we Vichy, please be so kind if her. If you're listening to this, please be so kind and tweet that rook b8 is a little bit strange. <laughs> but d d d Dink is still a great player. Something like that would be nice. Yeah. Um, all right. So we got rook b8 on the board, knight h4. Yeah. And yeah, so what other options do we have? I mean, right now, you want to come in with queen f3. Yeah. Yeah, somehow, again and again, I get this feeling during the game that mm -hmm. I simply lose the track. Mm -hmm. Like they play, they play moves, we kind of see the ideas behind them, and then some rook b8 happens. Mm. And then you lose the track completely. Like yeah. even if rook b8 is OK, you just cannot figure out, uh, you know. You know what this move reminds me of in this match? What other move? It's like, remember, I was OK. Oh, we say. Uh, OK. <laughs> Thank you very this much. This tweet has come, uh, has come miraculously. OK. I don't like rook b8. There are lines where the knight a6 isn't defended. Also, knight h4 and white's moves are easy and black's aren't. Yeah, OK. okay. So Vichy uh, came to the rescue with that tweet. Um, yeah. You know what I want to say this reminds me of? This reminds me of his move knight f6 a couple of days ago. You know, and it's like I was tell I, my, my whole point was like he shouldn't give Nepo this easy initiative where Nepo can play moves quickly. Like he just played knight h4 instantly. He knows exactly what he wants to do. Yeah. Even if black's position is OK, right? That's what got him into trouble uh, two games ago. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, he should try to seize the initiative from Nepo, right? And this position was definitely giving him the opportunity to do that. Yeah. Right? And so you slow down with rook b8. You let Nepo play this move. And suddenly you're like, oh, I'm on the defensive again. Like, I got to figure out what I'm doing yeah. against all these ideas. Yeah. And it's, and it's a bit of a pity, you know, because. Um, yeah, it is strange. Well, I'm not sure that rook b8 is that bad objectively. It could be just OK. But it's just that uh, for like most of the people uh, who don't want to be like playing like a dozen of only moves after knight h4, mm -hmm. it's just you know strange not to play bishop f8 in advance yeah. to kind of make sure you're not getting checkmated there. At the same time, I mean, again, Mr. Dink is capable of playing a dozen of brilliant moves. And then he might say, you know what, rook b8 was OK. And it's just that I can play this kind of position, and you cannot. And he could be right, too. Mm. So yeah, we'll see. The problem with that strategy, when you rely on a lot of calculation and a lot of only moves, is that eventually you get tired, and you start running out of time. And then that's where the mistakes crop up, right? But if you play moves based on just understanding, yeah, I mean, you know, well, then well, Playing something like bishop of 8 doesn't take you yeah, this too much time and too much energy. Exactly. It really doesn't. This is not a like a move that is heavy on calculation yeah. at all, right? That's just really just, hey, this pawn stack's not dangerous, and the knight should come here. That's basically yeah. it. So all right, well, he spent a move on this. And now let's try to put ourselves in his shoes and see how he's going to respond. Yeah. But this is always is, this is always my problem. Like I somehow cannot put uh, put myself in in the shoes of someone who just played rook b8. 
I mean, <laughs> I just don't see myself. We had those kind of conversations uh, with uh, Sasha, who's my very good friend and coach. And sometimes, uh, I mean, he would give me some, you know, puzzle to solve some. I mean, some very deep calculation where basically you are under crazy attack, and you need to play this like ten only moves, and then it's a draw. And I'm always saying, well, I'd normally fail to solve it, but I would always say, I mean, okay, but this never happens in my game. Yeah, I mean, I could be on the other side, like sacrificing everything and uh, f failing to checkmate. But it's not that I'll like. Um, I mean, I'll be defending with two extra pieces too often. So here again, I mean, rook b8, knight h4, okay, I normally play bishop f8. If there is a problem after taking on b5 there, I'm ready to... To I'm solve those problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I'm ready to try those shoes, yeah, but these are, uh, you know, these are different shoes. All right, well, let's try bishop f8 anyway. Let's see how it works and move later. Yeah, but then it's just insane that we played rook b8, not knight c5 in I the know, same position. I know, I know. Trust me, I don't feel good about that either. Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> so is white I'm very happy. Okay, let's try. Uh, I mean, which move do we want? Like? I, I mean, don't know. We looked at this. We haven't yeah. looked at this yet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have many reasonable moves. I mean, let's uh, let's try one of them. Mm -hmm. If you like queen f3, let's go queen f3. Okay. I think in general it shouldn't be. Uh, okay, so this is kind of an idea. It's not a, an absolutely humongous threat. Mm, yeah. At the same time. Yeah, it's not exactly a pawn like I'm dreaming of giving away. No. Certainly not. And now it's a little tricky of how to save it. Because it's not like this knight can just move, you know? Moving, the knight has its own issues. Yeah. Um, protecting the knight has its own issues. Yeah, also somehow there are no upsides. Yeah. Like, let's say you go knight h7 and you don't lose immediately, but it's basically like... Uh, you have the knight on a six. Can I can I just no, say no, no. one thing? Like I just have one piece yep. of advice for Team Ding, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't know if they need this, but here's the thing: I would say, don't give Nepo the initiative. Just don't do that. Do everything everything you can to keep the initiative on your side. You got to try that approach. Okay, sure. I will share this to Rich. I, I, yeah. I, I think this will, this will be like a game changer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know because when, I think when you play Rook B8, you need to hear that. And after that knight of six move, you need to hear that. It's just it's like the way you're letting the games develop. It doesn't even matter what the evaluation is, you know? It just matters that, like, you don't want to give Nepo this position where he clearly is so comfortable. Like, who wouldn't feel more comfortable playing on the white side of this? You've got, like, the most obvious moves to make. Yeah. Well, in, in the same game where he played knight of six, he was much better later. But he spent and so much and energy he, and time uh, to get there. And he outplays the guy completely. Yeah, but this is just the way he plays. I mean, that's what I'm saying, you know? You got it. So we can change it up a little bit. You know, you got to you got to play. You can't give your opponent. I mean, basically, chess is a like game of psychology, right? And you just uh, the the. I think I even heard Magnus say, right, that the point of his preparation mm -hmm. is not to let <laughs> let the opponent get his preparation. Sure, but I mean, at the same time, those words like initiative, for instance, they're a little bit random. Like you call initiative what you think the, the initiative is. But the initiative could be a completely different thing for Ding. Mm. He's saying, okay, I'm about to take on a4, actually, and like you need to attack with, uh, with some precise moves to, you know, to uh, basically make up for it, kind of. All right. So it's, yeah, I mean, I see, I see what you're talking about. But I think Ding is, in general, a player that belongs to, uh, to a completely different school of chess. Mm. In general, he's a brilliant player, but he thinks completely different way. And we keep saying this. Mm -hmm. Every day, and let's say, uh, yeah, I mean, if someone who uh, who grew up, let's say, reading the same books that uh, I mean, I was reading being a kid, or you were reading being a kid, then sure, this advice would probably, uh, you know, fit. Mm -hmm. But with Dink, I just, I, it feels like he has a completely different matrix, even, you know. And then uh, I personally just prefer to uh, to watch this and uh, not interfere, kind of. As uh, yeah, I mean you are trying to you're trying to uh, provide some piece, piece of advice for someone who just came from like I don't know Venus or something, right? I mean it's just uh, he, think, he thinks completely different way, and then you know let's just let him play the way he wants. He's actually doing pretty well. Let me ask you something. I heard in one of your interviews you were saying. Um, what was it like that? 
uh, you work for someone who basically like never, um, like you basically don't have to give any advice to. I don't know, I think I even have it written down somewhere. Um, do you remember some, saying something like that? Oh, I'm used to advising the guy who doesn't need my advice. It was your exact yeah. words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is funny. Yeah, I've said many stupid things in my life. Yeah. Is this one well, of those I'll, I'll still ask you to comment on them one by one. OK. So I mean, basically, I mean, uh, what, are you, what are you saying here? Like that, I mean, you don't really, do, do you give Magnus advice? Did you give Magnus advice? Or you just kind of like do your opening thing, and he just knows what to do himself? No, I mean, of course. Uh, uh, I mean, of course, normally these two things are hard to separate. Mm -hmm. Normally, let's say, I mean, if you come and uh, kind of try, try to present your Catalan as a good weapon, mm -hmm. and you say, I think it's a good idea mm -hmm. uh, to play it in the match, mm -hmm. then, of course, uh, there are some certain kinds of positions where you give him advices of, of uh, you know, some general nature. You say, like, in general, I think this trait is good for white, mm -hmm. and this trait isn't, and all mm -hmm. that stuff. And I think it's kind of, it kind of makes sense to uh, normally be you know, trying to get this plan going, not that one, and stuff. But at the same time, he's a brilliant player. And uh, yeah, I mean, of course, I mean, even if he gets to some positions that we have not discussed, mm -hmm. which happens, uh, I mean, most of the times normally, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly, uh, I mean, normally he's a a a capable of, you know, finding his own way. So these terms, it's funny. Yes, I mean, I could say, yeah, uh, there is this position. Like my point is that, uh, I mean, I I suggest we play it this way and that way, but it's not that Magnus wouldn't um, uh, manage it himself, right? Yeah, I gotta say that you kind of followed up on that. You were saying that basically. Um, you could tell him, go play, it's fine, you're a decent player, most probably you won't lose. Sounds like yeah, you yeah. have the easiest job in the world, being an advisor to a guy like that. No, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it's very, uh, it's very nice, seriously. It's like, you are paid for, uh, basically, uh, I mean, playing and looking at chess with, uh, like, arguably, arguably the greatest player ever, who is ready to play, uh, like, the worst openings. But Basically, and uh, who is always winning. So <laughs> I mean, there are not too, too many ways for you to, to screw up, you know? So yeah. So the way you've described it so far, like you're talking about like specific opening positions, how they're played, well, obviously, yeah, that's, that's kind of clear. But did you ever have to give him like more abstract or global advice? Like, like uh, I don't know, play these types, types of positions, or, you know, play faster, play slower, like anything more, um, more general. Well, I think we could discuss that, but um, in general, he's very good at it himself. He kind of has this inner, uh, like inner s spectator inside of him, mm. who is actually following the match. And uh, I mean, he's playing, but at the same time, he's like following it from the side, sort of. So what's going on? Where he plays well? Where he doesn't? What happens when he's um, short on time? And so on. And he's very good at uh, kind of adjusting. I think this is actually what makes him the very best. Like, to be frank, I don't mm -hmm. think uh, it's the case that he is like the absolutely best player in all the kinds of uh, you know positions. Mm -hmm. But it's just that he can always adjust. Mm. And then uh, like people like me won't get uh, some crazy attacks going. Mm -hmm. And let's say people like Dink won't get uh, some straight calculation going. Mm. And people like Jan will always have to play those long games, nerf taking games and stuff. So what you're saying is that he has a very good idea of his opponent's weaknesses and he's able to steer the game in those directions. Yeah, and he's sort of good at everything. Mm -hmm. He's like top three, top five at everything, absolutely. So basically Magnus is a very, very good chess psychologist. Yeah, of course he is. Yeah. I mean, if the thing exists at all, <laughs> then yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it does, right? I mean, you c so basically, it's like you can't say about Magnus that he doesn't like he doesn't have like the right approach to the match, or you know, chose like the wrong strategy in the openings, like at least from what you've been able to observe. Yeah. I mean, normally, uh, well, normally yes. I mean, in general, I like the strategy. I gotta ask you. Uh, an interesting question that I've had in my mind. 
Um, so maybe one of the most talked about moments in Magnus's World Championship matches was that decision, uh, I guess it was game 12 against Fabi to take the draw with the black pieces, right in a position where he was up on time yeah. and uh, had a better position yeah. and basically take the game into the tie break. So first of all, uh, for you guys watching from your training, uh, from your, I don't know, training camp, or that's not, that's not training camp, but wherever you were, mm -hmm. um, helping him prepare for the match. Mm -hmm. um, what was your impression and the impression of your uh, fellow seconds on that decision? Um, well, I mean, I don't want to share too much, and also yeah. we're we watching a different uh, World Championship match. I don't know, but, but we're allowed to talk but about other yeah, things. But, uh, <laughs> but let's say in general, yeah. my, my original impression was, uh, Mm, I was really surprised, mm -hmm. and, I and I didn't like it at first. Mm -hmm. And then I actually realized that uh, it was completely correct. I mean, it took me uh, it took me more than like a week or two, let's say. So it was not like the result or yet thinking. It's not that he wins the very next day, and I start praising him. But then later on, I just realized uh, that it is correct. Uh, and this is a very smart and mature decision. And just given those, like both were like numbers, given those, given the mass, I think he did the right thing. He yeah. just thought he is a massive favorite in Rapid. And in Rapid, you play four games. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, otherwise, you basically gamble it all in one game, where sure, you're better, but it's just one game. And it's actually playable. It's sharp. You're doing well for the moment, but uh, you know, things could hap uh, happen. Say, same would say when he played Karakin, right? He made this famous uh, draw is white and the yes. yeah, very much the same. Oh, well, I still think that one was different. I think that one was actually more understandable, and um, that I mean, at least mm -hmm. for me, that raised less questions because it was like. Um, I could even see how it would work. Like Karyakin doesn't really know his intentions, mm -hmm. and so he's there preparing for a serious game with the black pieces, mm -hmm. and um, you know, not really expecting that Magnus just doesn't want a game. So yeah. Magnus gets like an extra day to relax, yeah. and uh, Karyakin doesn't get that day to relax, and then he has to go play the rapid tie break. So that one I had actually had less questions about. Sure, but then again, like given those, it cannot be that uh, you know when. <laughs> When it's a match between two players, it cannot be that one thing is good for both. So I think given mm -hmm. the odds, it would, uh, it would actually make sense to for, uh, for Karakin to gamble in the last game. Mm. You, you, go, you go play some Pirch, yeah. and then it's, you know, this is really tense. That would have been a very, I think it would have been a very difficult decision for him to take, also not knowing what Magnus' approach would be, right? Like if yeah. he would have known that Magnus doesn't really want to play, then what you're saying is kind yeah. of easier for him to come up with. If he's just thinking Magnus wants once a game with the white pieces, and then to mm. still to have the strategy to like try uh, to play something risky. I mean, yeah. yeah, it's not the most obvious. I get it that he could try that, but yeah. But mathematically yeah. speaking, I think I think it's clearly the best. Like given the fact that Magnus is clearly mm. a better player than you are, mm -hmm. it's like much easier to win one game with black mm. than to win uh, a match of four. Mm. Just uh, you know. So if you were on his team, you would have like pushed him to do that. In Karakian scene, which is hard to imagine. Yeah, yes. but yeah, I mean, I could have said that, yeah. And so when this draw against Fabi took place, um, was it something that Magnus like explained his thinking to his team, or did anyone ask him about it, or was just like, OK, uh, getting ready for the tie breaks now? No, but his thinking is uh, normally straightforward, and I mm -hmm. think he, he, he even explained it at the press conference. It's not even about us. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, his uh, thinking was crystal clear. It's just, uh, it wasn't obvious to me at first that, uh, that it is correct. Mm -hmm. Then later on, I realized it is. And then actually, like in the very same fashion, I played this uh, word rapid in St. Petersburg and actually won. Like, I didn't care at all. I made a very big number of short draws, hmm. and it worked. And I was like, okay. This was actually a nice thing to, uh, to learn from the him. Only thing, the only thing is that in chess, it's a little bit dangerous to not play, right? I mean, we know that the game of chess tends to reward you know, fighting in every game. And so, yes, it's nice to be strategic, but it's a pretty risky strategy to work with. I mean, whether it's making a draw with the white pieces without playing or taking a draw in a better position. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting that it worked for Magnus both times. Yeah. But overall, uh, I don't know, as my experience as a chess player is that it's a quite risky thing to play. Um, to play with that strategy. 
Well, it depends, right? It really depends on the situation. It uh, very much depends on uh, like you being a better player or a worse player uh, compared to the field and uh, many other things. But let's say I'm pretty sure what I learned is that, uh, I mean, I honestly think that, let's say for me, Mm -hmm. When I'm, let's say, tired mm -hmm. and I'm not feeling great, like in general, not some exact day, but let's say, like in general, I come to, uh, to, to, turn, to a tournament being tired. Mm -hmm. Like, it's better to play, let's say, four games with black when you feel uh, reasonably okay mm -hmm. and actually play them for a win even, if mm -hmm. you want to, than to play nine games feeling uh, worse and kind of fighting. So I think it's better, let's say, it even makes sense to mm -hmm. make sh short draws as white and then to play for winners black, for instance. But you're talking about a situation where you're like physically not feeling that great, right? Yeah, kind of. Or you're like a little bit to you. But or, I think, yeah, or something. That's, or, uh, that's kind of understandable. Yeah. But overall, I think chess can be pretty unforgiving when you don't give it like your maximum in every game, right? Uh, I don't know. It's hard to tell. All right. Well, we're going to... We're gonna it's, uh, you know, very much, again, it's very much result-oriented thi thinking. So let's say with Magnus, I mean, yeah. so, uh, sometimes he, uh, he was giving clearly, uh, clearly at all. And sometimes mm -hmm. he, he would make these short draws. Yeah. And he would normally win anyway. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think uh, whoever, win, uh, whoever wins, people normally come up with some, uh, you know, pathetic high moral explanation, kind of. Which, uh, I mean, I, I in general don't like. Like, people are looking for justice always. And whoever wins, they start looking for justice. And then if you have this kind of thinking, you'll mm -hmm. normally find it. But, I mean, in sport, I don't believe in justice. I mean, it's just that there are d different people who can win, and then someone wins in the, at the end of the day. And someone will win anyway. And, you know, there is, uh, there is no, like, justice or something. It's not necessarily the case if you look at the tournaments, if you like examine the games of the candidates, let's say. There is no like justice in Jan winning candidates, for instance, like with all the some short draws and like playing Petrov and winning in 20 moves. It's mm. not what you expect. Or let's say here, if we are talking about like justice exactly, then it's very unfair that uh, Dink is behind. But then again, if Jan will win, they will come up with a, like another explanation that he won two candidates in a row. Mm -hmm. And it's like very fair that this mm -hmm. guy, after Magnus leaving, is a world champion. At the same time, if Dink wins, they will say, yes, he had this legendary streak, his rating was so cool, and uh, you know, there is fate. And he won like so, so many games as the candidates to catch Jan both times. And uh, I mean, he was one of not too many people who were actually praised by uh, Magnus, who said he is brilliant. And then people will find their justice too. I have to say... Um, I just prefer not to believe this story. One of, one of the nicest uh, blitz matches I, I ever got to see was the one that he played in the tie breaks in the Sinkfield Cup against Magnus. Yeah. And, you know, that was the first, I think, playoff that Magnus had lost in, like, uh, in many, many years. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. of course, you know, he's kind of a massive favorite going into any rapid playoff. And to see Ding win um, that Blitz playoff like quite convincingly and very stylishly with this, yeah. you know some nice tactics there, I was really impressed uh, with that because I had just like you know not really seen anyone but be, 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 uh, uh, being able to do that against Magnus. Yeah. No, but it's you know like every single time if you're looking for justice, you can look at the result and come up with some logic that that explains it. I just prefer not to think this way. Hmm. Say when Fabi played Magnus. Yeah. Let's say Fabi wins. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the rating difference was like five fewer points. So I think he, if Fabi, I think if Fabi wins classical part, he he's actually number one in the world. Hmm. And then I mean, it's also fair. You, I mean, looking back, I mean, he had this uh, perfect St. Louis where he won seven games in a row. Mm -hmm. And you can say it was clearly him. He is the one. Right, and then uh, if he beats Magnus, everybody would say sure, and he like overtakes him in the rating and stuff. At the same time, when Magnus won, still you can say yes, Magnus is the best. He won the tie break convincingly. Like he basically has uh, hadn't been like too close to the line. He hasn't lost a single game. And then again, like something happens on the last day, and then people come up with some. Uh, 
you know, very, uh, very, yeah. very deep explanations. Well, okay, let, let me let me interject a little bit here. No, I get what you're saying that you can create a story to explain anything that happens, yeah. right? But still, some narratives are a little bit more compelling than others. Like I think when uh, Kramnik won his 2006 match, you know, against uh, wait, uh, against Topolov, right? It was the whole okay. Alista Gate thing. I think okay. overall the chess world was pretty happy about that. Um, because they saw certain logic in that. I mean, he had been basically kind of forfeited a game. I mean, the chess world didn't like to see that, somebody getting a point for free, and all these kinds of like accusations of, uh, I don't even going to the toilet too much, and I mean, just, yeah. seemed, um, you know, without actual any, any um, evidence of, of cheating or anything, and people basically just thought it was like a scandal meant you know, to, um, to kind of distract him during the match, it kind of worked. And, um, yeah. and, oh, and overall, when he won, I mean, okay, I think it felt uh, pretty right. Yeah, but the case you're talking about is an exception where, uh, well, I'm not the one to judge, yeah. but in people's minds, uh, like, there was a good guy and there was a bad guy. So we are talking some like human justice, not sports justice. But when it's about sport, let's say you have Dink and you have mm -hmm. Napa and you like both. Yeah. Which is a different story, right? Like, no one is being dirty or something. And then, you know, like, whatever happens, I mean, same in football. Well, it's, me, it's like yeah. everywhere, basically, let's say there is a, I mean, there is a f football, right? We just had this world championship. So l you have the final between uh, Argentina and France. And France was the current champion back then. Mm -hmm. And Argentina has Messi, who has his, uh, I mean, probably uh, the last shot of his life to win the World Championship. You're talking about the last World Cup? or Yeah, World Cup. Yeah. And, then, and then, you know, then it's great either way. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I mean, it's a brilliant match. I liked it a lot and stuff. And, and uh, Ar Argentina won that one, right? Yeah, I mean, they, they won the, the penalty shootout. But, yeah. like, I mean, in general, yes, Messi played very well and stuff. Mm -hmm. And now that Messi won, like, I mean, I like him mm -hmm. a lot. He's my favorite player. Like, everybody thinks this is, like, overall justice. Mm. Yeah. He, he gave a talk, he was trying for his whole life. And like in the very end, he, I mean, he, he was finally... Uh, they won against France? Yeah, he was yeah. finally given it. At the same time, France was good, like crazy good. Mm -hmm. They were current champions. The, and they got that they, guy Mbappe, uh, who, he's a great player. Who, who was doing yeah. insanely well and scored, I think, twice in the final. And uh, I mean, if they win, they win two times in a row. Which is also, uh, I mean, it makes history. Like, I don't remember the last time when it happened. And then people would also say it's fair, you know. But that's not, okay, but hold on, Daniel. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, like, some basic things in chess, like, you know, fighting with the white pieces, right? We kind of consider that, like, a big no-no, right, to give up draws with the white pieces. Although, I guess, I guess, yeah, sometimes it can work and you can still get the results you want. But, you know, if you, let's say you look at a match, okay. right, and, like, someone... I don't know, someone takes the lead, yeah. right? But then they basically like stop doing anything with the white pieces. They're just like, okay, okay with the draw. Okay. And then ultimately, it doesn't work out for them. They lose. Yeah. For example, they lose the final game. Sure. I mean, the chess world will be like, okay, that's some justice because you got to play your games. That's just what chess players are supposed to do. But then again, you know, if they manage, then uh, people will say, you know, it was a smart good job. It was, yeah, it was I mean, strategic. Exactly. But 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 overall, For, they're not uh, gonna, uh, they're not not gonna love that, you know. And they're not gonna they're going to look at that and be like, mm, yeah, okay, but no, uh, that kind of decreases the interest for chess, right? All right, let's get back to our four game. played meanwhile, yes. so we finally can, you know, we can come back to the game. But you know what's really funny? Yeah. This scenario, it's like exactly the scenario you don't want, right? He he was up on the clock. Now he's down on the clock because he got himself into some issues with this rig B8 move. Yeah. And again, you know, almost 20 minutes down on the clock compared to Nepo. Yeah. And yeah, he took takes the pawn. It okay. yeah. yeah, going back to the topic, my point is that basically it's good play and bad play. And it's like good moves that bring you trophies, mm -hmm. not the fighting spirit. And, um, you know, I personally don't like it too much. And let's say, uh, look at, let's say, Naka or like mm -hmm. all, all those people who play online. This queen e4, queen d4 became yeah. normal. Like, I mean, I, I was used to mm. like the paradigm where it was basically a shame. Mm 
Yes. And there was a period where, I mean, I was saying, I'll never do that, and mm -hmm. this is just too much. You know what, I still then, think that then way. Then you, the, yeah, but then you just realize everybody does it. And uh, I mean, these people are still invited to like all the tournaments, and everybody loves them. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the organizers are, uh, you know, okay mm. with it. And then you think, okay, sure. Mm. You know, then why would, uh, why would you be the Robin Hood, sort of? Right. And why would you play Naka with uh, like extra odds that he's allowed to do that and you're not, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then yeah, like my m my would say original paradigm about online was that uh, this is basically exhibition. Mm -hmm. um, there are no ratings, and I thought like even when I need to draw in order to like qualify somewhere or something, I thought I will most probably play as we are uh, trying to like entertain people, and I'm paid for that. And yeah. there is no even rating, so I mean, I have to do that. And then I came all the way to uh, basically make, uh, making as many draws as I want, as everybody does it. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, I mean, why to be the only one who is an idiot and, uh, I mean, tries to be like whatever, fighting or, I mean, call it whatever you want, it's Naka who wins. I mean, not people with a, uh, I mean, Naka has his own fighting spirit, Yeah. but, uh, you know, like, he has played so many games with this queen e4, queen d4, and like, the same perpetual in the, in the queen's gambit. And he wins it all, more or less. And I think it's fair, as uh, basically there is no, f I mean, it's not about fighting spirit, he's just playing mm. good moves. He's making draws, sometimes short draws, and sometimes it looks very cynical to me. And even with my current attitude, sometimes I um, dislike it strongly. Mm -hmm. But still, it's good moves that, uh, that win you things. And let's say if you look at Wesley, I mean, it's exactly the same, right? I mean, yeah. so, some of the games they play, I mean, okay, well, this is just pathetic. Let's actually go back to the game, which is not pathetic. Yeah, it, and it yeah. is definitely heating up as uh, Ding took the pawn, allowed bishop takes h6, and yeah, that's what kind of we were thinking that he might have to do, just kind of take the queen side and give up the king side a bit. Oh no. Um, but I mean, it, I it definitely feels like he's given white an initiative that white should not have necessarily had. Yeah, I mean, also if you will go back and try to reach the same position Starting from bishop of eight, yeah, it will look never, it will look it. it will look insanely stupid. So let's say here in, instead of rook b eight, we yeah. go bishop f eight, knight, knight h four, knight c five, queen f three. Yeah, then, then b takes a four. Yeah, no, but b takes a four. I can kind of get. Yeah, but then after bishop takes h six, we just go rook b eight. Yeah, we're uh, yeah, we yeah. are chill. Would, <laughs> I mean. would you ever play that? Yeah, but um, could also be actually. But obviously, uh, you would have thrown in that move. Yeah. And then taking this dangerous bishop. Yeah, for sure. And then black would have been, I think, quite happy, I guess, right? Like rook d1. Yeah. Knight takes. Well, at least it's not dangerous for black. Yeah, I was about to say better late than never when he played knight c5. But I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, all right, let's see. <laughs> Maybe never was actually uh, not too bad. Rook b8. Yeah, rook b8, knight h4. Um, yeah, bishop f8. Okay. Here it takes. Okay, so and we got a completely new new uh, new position to evaluate here, and I guess um, you know ideally at some point black might wanna I don't know close up that bishop. Yeah. But for now, for now it's white's turn. So how's how is Nepo going to develop this? I mean, bishop g5. Yeah, bishop g5. Yeah, is the first thing that comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because you want to like basically make sure you this bishop yeah. isn't always under attack. Although I guess you don't have to do that, right? I mean, you could look at other moves. Yeah. But then if you pass, then it's suddenly rook takes b2 that is uh, mm. an option. Mm -hmm. Black seem, seems to be in the mood for kind of uh, gambling to the very end and saying, okay, if you checkmate me, then well done. All right, so let's go to bishop g5. g5. Right. And we have a pretty big threat here. Yeah, I mean it's amazing because, like, again, I would never want to be in this in, in black shoes here. No, but let's not give up. I actually start yeah. to like this a little for black. Go ahead. So let's go rook d3. Yeah. Let's make sure we we are in time to unpin tonight. Right. So now, uh, I guess I could go back. I mean, are you planning like some bishop a6 or? No, nah, you want to sacrifice. No, no. My original 
Well, this actually makes sense yeah, too. Yeah, this actually is cool. Look at that. Yeah. Unless there's bishop, bishop takes f6. six exists, but then you just go back, and you pretend this was all planned, or you even go bishop a6 first. No, it's not that simple. Bishop a6 probably runs into queen h5. Well, things are heating up. Like, it's not one-way traffic. Yes. And is okay. my impression. Of course, we don't want to get checkmated like that. So maybe no. maybe we go back. But OK, it's still very dangerous here. Right? So I don't mm. know. Do well, I mean, it is dangerous, but it could be uh, better for black, too, on the other hand. Yeah. Like, give me a couple of moves if I'm in time to. I guess you don't have time for this. Is the good news, right? Or do you? Well, I want to take. Well, let's say even if you play knight b3, I don't see, I don't see a threat at all. Yeah, can I just take your bishop though? You probably can, but you are always trying to play the most aggressive move. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like I'm taking free pieces I'm seems kind of critical sometimes. Sure, I mean, I'm normally trying to play something that kind of makes makes people understand immediately that uh, you know. Because the point here there is, is no that danger. there is no checkmate. That's the idea. Yeah. Uh, at least we hope so, but yeah. We got to cover that square. Yeah. But uh, secondly, after queen e2, mm -hmm. well, this is all cool. Maybe you take g3, actually, and go rook f1 then. Or maybe not. Yeah, here we were planning this exchange sack, which yeah. kind of looks nice for black. Does it, though? I don't know. I, don't know. I only have one doubled pawn for the exchange, but it is like... They I don't know, I have very yeah, nice your king knight. Yeah, your king is weak, though. Let's say bishop e3, mm -hmm. and then I go rook f1, the queen will come. Yeah, I don't know. It's very hard can for I me to... A, can I take another pawn, or is it too much? Or you have, like, I don't know, can I... I don't know. Queen f3, yeah, maybe. Yeah, also you have... Okay, let's just try it. Let's try a little bit of... Okay, queen f3. Mm -hmm. So now I can even try with the other knight, but things are getting tangled up, I guess. Yeah. That's the issue. But why don't you play knight b3 instead and just say, I stabilized mm -hmm. and I agree immediately and we just proceed, right? I mean, it's. Yeah, because that was a free pawn. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. Yeah, let's say uh, you play bishop b6 next. Mm -hmm. It does look healthy, I mm -hmm. must say. But secondly, uh, even instead of rook takes g3, which I uh, like, mm -hmm. let's say even uh, knight h7. Right here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, even if I don't yeah. play this the wildest way. Yeah. I mean, okay. No, I think rook d3 is important. Yeah, it's like, actually, you know what? That's reminiscent of his rook d4 move. Yeah. From game number. Six? It's very similar. Yeah, yeah, where he kind of also pushed this queen away. Okay, that's very key. Yeah, but it, it should probably be met by rook e3. That was game seven. That was game seven, yeah. Okay. Um, so let's, um, let's examine rook e3. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's such a relief to be talking about chess, not, not basically yeah, insulting people mm, of the chess <laughs> world for, uh, for making short draws and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. There's actually a funny line I just saw. So rook takes e3, mm -hmm. f takes e3. So knight h7 se uh, seems to be trapping the bishop. But there is actually this funny move, bishop d8. That's cute. Yeah, which is not necessarily killing. You probably go queen b7, and then you go bishop b6. Yeah, but let's and just you show stabilize. people. Yeah. Let's just show people how that queen gets in for the checkmate. But why is this one? Why not knight g6? Oh, okay. You prefer adding in the knight. Okay, yeah. I agree. It's okay. a little bit more aesthetic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you don't have to take the bishop. Mm -hmm. So here, I must say it's very difficult for me to evaluate. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is very much about uh, what I'm sure about is that you know white really has to checkmate sort of. Mm. If black will have enough time to play bishop e six and stabilize. The queen side will actually yeah constant ideas yeah, decide the game and you know now exactly as though it feels like white is doing well but maybe bishop g5 was a bit too slow yeah bishop g5 is not the only move so let's try to look at like some options I guess with the knights right yeah uh, 
Not G6, does it ever make sense? Mm -hmm. Like my point was to start from the like most stupid most mm -hmm. But maybe it does. So we will say bishop e6. As an idea, I just like I want dramatically to play bishop e6 as black here. Yeah, let's just point out that like if you take, take then something. you're just taking on f8. I don't know. The answer is king g7, right? This is actually funny. Oh, is there really? I thought this was just going to be somehow nice, but okay, king g7. G7. It's Wait. funny. I'm protecting knight on f6, and also you I'm just want to win my knight. Yeah, I'm protecting knight g6. Yeah. Ah, there is a cool position I see, but there is no normal way to get there. Wait, uh, but I let um, me can't really go. Yeah, here I just take. Yeah, let me just show you a cool thing that Go will ahead. never work. Mm -hmm. So let's say white plays h4, and mm -hmm. for some reason black plays queen e7, just to be sure. Yeah. Then there is actually queen takes f6. And king takes wow. knight, knight I, I wondered why you played that move. Yeah. I really didn't know. Yeah. Aha, uh -huh, you were inspired by Ding's d5. Oh, yeah. Look at that checkmate, guys. Do you think we're going to see that today? Mm. Well, like one to one, I'm ready to bet that we won't. Yeah. But OK, now hold on. We just stumbled into kind of a crazy line. Like I thought um, that this was just kind of more like of a joke taking this bishop. But maybe it's but not maybe a complete joke. Because yeah. I mean, if this knight is trapped in f8, then. Um, well, we should probably play queen takes f6 instead, right? We then I had bishop. I thought like that wasn't so clear, clear because there was bishop g7. Yeah, but then there is knight e7. Has to be bad, right? Well, not Maybe necessarily. Seven, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Okay, I, okay, I can't go. Obviously, here there's a checkmate. Yeah. Um, so I guess I gotta go here. Yeah, queen takes f7. And you're kind of you want an important pawn. No, I'm actually free rolling, right? I'm a pawn yeah. up, and I'm also checkmating. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. probably a bit too good. Do you think Jan looks confident with uh, the position right now? Well, I, I know him for quite a long time. I don't know, like, it's hard for me to judge his like, current level of, of confidence, like this exact minute. Mm -hmm. But he certainly doesn't look fresh f to me today, in general. Mm. It feels like he had a, like a tough night or something. Interesting. Well, you know, one of the things that Kramnik was saying in the interview after the Dubai match was that it's kind of clear that one of Jan's problems was keeping up his energy levels as you get into the second half of the match. Yeah. And okay, he obviously felt that Jan wasn't able to address those during Dubai. And um, you know, now we are in the second half of the match, and it's obviously been pretty exhausting for the players. They haven't had any quiet games. Yeah. Apart from game three. But you know what? Mm -hmm. At the same time, it's funny. One of my friends mentioned it to me. Mm -hmm. He said, you know what? Like everybody's saying they're fighting so much, they're mm -hmm. fighting so much, and uh, how do they keep their nerves and stuff, and blah, blah, blah. And he said, sure. Mm -hmm. But actually, like, pretty much all the games were kind of finished by move sure. 40. Yes. Yeah. yes. I mean, um, mm -hmm. you would normally don't have uh, many things happening. So Jan played knight g6. Yeah. Which? Yeah, we just started looking at that. Which so. exists. Mm -hmm. So basically, if we just try to understand white's next move, what do you think that next move is? Is it just taking the bishop? Probably. I mean, that looks quite nice. Yeah. I suppose there's other moves you can throw in, but like, I guess the moment like you try to move in a knight, it gets captured, right? Yeah. But oh. knight g6 is kind of admitting that there is no checkmate. Yeah, like, bl black has now many moves that kind of uh, secure him from straight losing, like knight b3 or bishop e6. Jan probably played a good move. He's probably better. But I am just saying, OK, this is not an attempt to, mm -hmm. to win quickly. Yeah. Let's actually start with rook takes b2. Mm. I mean, I understand it's a very optimistic move and stuff, mm -hmm. but actually we need to look at it yes. in a way, right? 
Because Alexia, actually, you. somewhere you could just take that bishop then and then take the knight. Yeah, I mean, moreover, if you're such a such a chicken as I am, you're basically uh, removing rook takes a2. Mm -hmm. And I am like, I mean, whatever, I'll give you everything, just don't. Just don't mate me. Yeah. OK. All right, so rook takes b2, definitely a critical looking move. Um, so let, OK, let's just take a quick look at this one. Yeah. So you're definitely um, taking, by the way, such a yeah, good you position, can, you can't right? do stuff like that just to show people. Yeah. Um, so you got to take with the rook. Yeah. And then fortunately, well, I there's had no rook bishop g7 just yet. Yeah, I had rook takes a2 too, just in case I'm getting made here, which is kind of unlikely. Mm -hmm. So I mean, here black looks fairly safe for the moment, actually. Yeah, I guess white will just play bishop c1. Let's say, and mm -hmm. then um, you kind of reshuffle for a slow positional game. You go bishop yeah. a3 next, maybe queen e3. It actually uh -huh. looks oh, very interesting. You have this idea of bringing the bishop here. Yeah, looks very good for white actually. Mm. Mm -hmm. So this. And could I don't be have any. I don't have any brilliant moves like that because you're always basically. Uh, you're always like basically having this bishop a3. Uh, well, always is a bit too strong, right? When you look at it, I mean, again, if I'm in time with, let's say, bishop e6 followed by knight yeah. f to d7, then who knows? So here I just don't really have the time to make this work. It would have been kind of cool to play rook b3. I mean, I love these exchange sack ideas. OK. Uh -huh. No, I like, I like rook takes b2. I mean, if we're not losing, then I like it. No, but we probably are, yeah. I mean, after knight takes f8, still we failed to come up with the move. Ah, after bishop c1. Yeah. OK, hold on. So how bad Actually, is Actually, how about I'm trying to do something really cool? So Rook I go takes a2, bishop e6? No, no, here I just give up. I mean, like I cannot uh, have it all. But instead, after rook takes b2, knight takes f8, let me play knight b3. Uh, you said after what? Rook takes a2? No, no, instead no. After knight takes f8? Ah, right here. Yeah, I, I just go knight b3 for the moment. Wait, so uh, let's just make it clear. You took the bishop. You yeah. don't want to recapture it. You want to attack this. Yeah, I just want to chill. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying, OK, you have too many pieces next to my king. You're cool. saying this knight is trapped. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. I can hold off with taking it, which is very cool. It is actually not a joke at all. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, see that. I yeah. see it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. I stopped laughing once yeah, I yeah. saw that this yeah, night yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, is not going anywhere. This is not funny. Yeah, this is not funny. Wow. I mean, That's you a very cool idea. Yeah, I mean, you have things like bishop g5. Yeah, but it's. Uh, I mean, I can even try to keep ignoring you, like rook d6. So you don't want to even consider taking this guy. No, I have to consider, but I'm just worried about being mated after, b uh, after bishop takes f6, which is yeah. not necessarily the case. But let's say I go rook d6. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just like it as a concept. Right. I basically you know, defend first, mm -hmm. and then I take everything, slowly. Wow. Well, that's very nice. Yeah, I mean, it looks It actually kind of works, doesn't it? I mean, is well, it works is a bit too strong. You have a billion of moves here, yeah? I mean, I'm not that, that brilliant to like, figure out immediately if it works or not, but. I mean, at least it makes sense. I don't see I don't see a way to like crush it mm -hmm. uh, with a couple of moves. You know, we're gonna take here next. Yeah, I mean, also a one is hanging. Yep. And uh, you know. Wow. So maybe he's like this is enticing Nepo to attack, but he's got uh, his this own. This is uh, such a funny position, isn't it? I yeah. mean, uh, Nate takes a fate and b three. Mm, he's taken off his jacket. I think uh. that's a. That's yeah. a sign that the temperature is rising uh, yeah, on the board. Yes, yeah, so that's probably a sign of him uh, calculating like an engine and yeah, getting I mean, a little hot from yeah, that. Yeah, 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 I mean, exactly. As the depth was, you know. <laughs> Too high. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, so Rook takes B2. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I feel in his body language that Ding is seeing some interesting things. When he sits yeah. up like that, like stranger, he is. Stranger things, right? Yeah, and he's yeah. N he's not unhappy about his position. 
He's, uh, he's really into it. He might have yeah. seen these amazing ideas. Yeah. All right, we're going to take And then again, two. I mean, yeah. imagine this works. Yeah. It probably doesn't, but let's agree, like by this point, we are not sure it's like problematic for Black. Right. It could be just good. And then it was Rook B8 that brought him this Rook takes B2 resource. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying, you know, he plays completely different way. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. we shouldn't use our, you know, primitive human metrics to judge him. Yeah, no, I, I no. haven't seen ideas like that all too often in chess. You just like leave the knight there. Um, I, I think there is a game, one of my favorite games actually, uh, Tau Panno, I guess, mm -hmm. where uh, I think Tau had a queen for, for a rook and uh, two minor pieces, or maybe three. But two of them, Tau was white, mm -hmm. and uh, two of them were black knight on a1 and black bishop on b1, actually. Mm -hmm. And then he went on to win a fantastic game. I remember myself being uh, really impressed by this game as a kid. I mean, in general, people tend to over, uh, overestimate. Yeah, rook takes b2 played. There we go. Wow. I don't know if it's good or bad, but uh, But it's yeah. going to be interesting. I'm, that, so that will I, be I'm certainly having fun here, yeah. Yeah, all right, so rook takes b2. No, I mean, of course, the rook has come into the game, and it does make a good impression from that point of view. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the knight is here to take the bishop. That's literally the main mission of the knight. Is there something else that we're missing that white, what other idea could white have here? Like, at some point, because I, I am interested in taking. Right, that's not a joke. Like no, I, I guess you. I actually will take yeah. and take. Yeah, I guess good to bad. You take on a fade, and yeah. then and then you see what the response is. Is yes. I mean, knight b three is cool, but it's not the only move. Yeah, well, rook f eight is kind of sad to play, because you're taking your rook off the open file. Yeah, but and now king f eight is impossible. Yeah, but now now given the fact that knight b three is interesting, we can actually realize that uh, like most of random moves are legal. Rook d three. For black. Yeah. I mean, for instance, it's not that we don't have moves. Mm -hmm. I mean, knight b3 is interesting indeed. Yes. But let's say you can start by playing rook d3. Mm -hmm. No, the queen actually doesn't have almost any squares. Yeah. I mean, rook e3 is probably the move. Yeah, you can also go bishop e3 if you want. Yeah, which is not attacking anything. Yeah. But um, yeah. It's kind of like making sure you can't take the knight. But yeah, OK, yeah. you want to go rook e3. Yeah. So then but then I can continue like showing off like rook d2, d2, for instance. I mean, I can just pretend, you know, <laughs> as a bishop on h6 and as a knight on f8, I'm kind of dead. Um, also, and uh, the bishop is under attack. Yeah. Then what, what happens next is queen takes f6, g takes knight h5. And, and I think white is checkmating with uh Oh, wow. The rook accidentally has been invited to g3. Yeah. yeah. What an unfortunate accident. And then after rook d3, we'll have some knight takes f6 and some bishop g7s will be there, or maybe not. I mean. OK, where is our checkmate? We might not have one. No, my point was that like at least we have bishop g7 here, followed by knight 8. We take a queen, but we we'll lose the game, right? Because we gave up a little too much of this Yeah. to get this. Yeah, no, but OK. Um, the position is actually fascinating, guys. Yep. And the good news for us is that we're in for another really exciting game. I don't know how the players managed to make it happen, that every game, even if, like, even if it, this game started with a symmetrical structure, is basically gone into the most interesting direction possible with like uh, peace sacrifices, pieces yeah. that could get to make captures and won't get recaptured immediately, tons of fascinating lines. Uh, so we're going to take a very short break for a few minutes, guys, and we will see you shortly.
Hello everyone, welcome in Astana. This is the playing venue of the FIDE World Championship match 2023. I'm Katie, and in this video, I'm gonna take you to the players area as well as spectators area. Follow me. This is the playing venue. Two champions will fight for the title. And also we have here the spectators area where everyone can follow the game here. In the first round, Jan takes white pieces and he will move the first. Ding will take black pieces. Also, the chair that Jana Pomnišić is, is the similar design from the World Championship match from Spassky and Fischer in Reykjavik. Dingley Ren shoes because he thinks this is the most comfortable for him. Compared to the previous World Championship matches, here, the players will have more space during the game. And in the end of the video, I am going to take you in the most secretive place of the whole venue. This is the player's lounge, when during the game, each of the players can come and rest. They'll have drinks and also snacks on the side, as well chess game on the screen. For the first time in the World Championship match history, the players will be observed by the cameras. We are inviting you to join our expert commentary every day at 3 p.m. local time. Okay guys, we're back and there are already fireworks on the board. White is trying to break through on the king side and black is obviously doing better on the queen side having just captured the pawn on b2 and infiltrated with the rook to the second rank. So Daniil, you checked some lines during the break. Do you want to tell us, give us a general idea of 
What is going on in this crazy position? Yeah. Well, first of all, I didn't have uh, have an access for my normal computer. Yeah, we shouldn't even know what is what is as a, as a thing. But yeah, knight takes a fate is indeed probably the best move. I mean, given the is a, is engine I had an access to, and then after knight b3, which is actually interesting, mm -hmm. there was some line. Uh, I guess you can start with taking takes bishop, bishop g5. g5 and then the only problem with rook d6 is c4 is yeah knight takes a fight uh played by Jan is c4 mm -hmm. and then one idea is playing c5 forcing the rook to go away and taking on f6 and the second idea is queen c3 so but only that little pawn move is like it's not the fact that uh, black is down a piece there still that's yeah. the problem is the fact that like maybe the rook on b2 is a, is a little bit awkward, but yeah. I mean, it basically shows that knight b3 no. is a, is a no, real come move, on. but he, he did not go for any of the fun stuff like rook d3 here. Yeah, rook d3 was probably the best move, first of all, but mm -hmm. it's very disappointing that he didn't even consider that. So rook d3, rook e3, rook d2 mm -hmm. was actually the line we looked at. Yeah. And they, I mean, the quick engine approves, uh, approves that black is okay. Queen takes, uh, queen takes f6 actually doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And the only problem here is bishop e3. And mm -hmm. then the, the evolution was jumping from like... Knight b3 you have to go, from right? From, uh, yeah, something like that. And the evolution was jumping from plus one to zeros. And uh, I kind of uh, stopped quickly thinking, okay, it's crazy anyway. And the funny thing is like yeah. you still can't... Well, I mean, you can't quite take this knight yet, but I mean, white has to make a decision here. I guess they got to take. Yeah, A, B. A, B, and so the problem is you still can't quite take the knight because of bishop c5 check. Yeah, but you don't need to. You're going yeah. to, to promote maybe first. You just want to play rook c2, then you go b2. Mm -hmm. This knight is not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. So no. basically, the coolest lines we looked at involved not recapturing that knight on f8 and trying to go for some sort of intermediate move yeah. Um, the position was definitely really rich in those possibilities, but Ding very quickly went for rook takes f8, which, you know, it's a kind of a normal looking move. It's not a, most, what I said about it earlier was like, it's sad to take the rook off the open file. Yeah. But we thought bishop c1 is a problem, right? Yes. First of all, we didn't like it in general, and secondly, bishop c1 was like a big problem we thought. Mm. So what is he planning here? Well, are there potential exchange sack ideas with a3? Yeah, but then white just takes and I kind of... Go rook b1 and yeah. it's not going anywhere. So let's just... Well, I think the exchange sacks are like a big part of this position. So let's just take a look at a few of them. And Jan bishop went g5. bishop g5, okay. which is, I think, not... Uh, yeah, not the engine's favorite move. Okay. So... How do you know? Because look, there's this, like, this little bar, and it went uh -huh. down a little bit. Uh huh. So I just saw that. Uh huh. So we literally base the <laughs> the world championship broadcast on this little bar from chess. Yeah, that, that's okay. most. That's most. <laughs> okay, sure. That sounds uh, very reasonable. Okay. So, bishop g5. Okay. And you could actually use your laptop too. Like yeah. No, no. But I'm no. not his biggest fan, but compared to this bar, okay, it will do. So let's see. Let's okay. see if the bar is correct here. So what what option does black have here that is so amazing? I mean, I guess, I don't know. Do you want to, there's like knight h7, which doesn't look awesome because the knight just gets worse, and then you can go back to c1. Yeah. What other cool move does black have here? I'm not sure. I Can mean, we just ignore this whole thing? This is a, I mean, hard, it's a very big threat, yeah? Hard to believe. Yeah. But, you know, let's think a little. It could be something like rook d8, bishop takes f6, rook d3 again. But I somehow fail to believe that. And rook e3 is just winning there. Can it actually be rook d8, bishop takes f6, rook d2? Um, that is a pretty insane line. Yeah, but there's bishop takes e5. Yeah, most of the insane lines don't work. Mm, yeah, so probably a little too hard. To we can actually keep going, right? I we mean, can keep we going. Yeah. You want to move your queen somewhere? No, I mean queen like takes that. e5 even. 
Really, like even like that, and letting this in. Okay, can get some. So no one has any extra pieces here. White has a lot of extra pawns. But yeah. It's actually, this must somehow. Be, I mean, okay. Actually, Black has some pretty good pieces. I mean, I yeah. Could actually, see if I don't resign uh, next to moves, then you know, who knows. Okay, but I mean, I can kick out your king. All right, so let's say I go to, yeah, somewhere. Maybe g6 even. This certainly feels very dangerous for black. Okay, you're about to face queen takes g3, yeah? So, you know, you yeah. better watch out. I see that, but let me, let me allow, <coughs> allow you to show that because it is quite cool. Well, first of all, rook takes f2 is probably even better. Mm -hmm. Like, queen takes g3 looks interesting, but probably doesn't work. There is some queen f5 check and then fg maybe. Mm. But I just go rook takes f2. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then you have queen f5 check. Wow. So I get the queens off the board. Um, so what's the the wow is about what? Well, rook takes is kind of legal. Oh. It was oh, my wow, oh, oh. but uh, yeah. No, because I was just planning yeah. to do that. Yeah, which, <laughs> which actually works, right? Yeah, I mean, it I mean you okay, take, you, you go king, you know. Somewhere, yeah. anywhere, like h6. Yeah, and then, and then uh, uh, yeah, I mean, again. Black is actually doing fine. Yeah, Black's probably winning. Even. Yeah. yeah, I mean, <laughs> it could be, yeah. Could be anything, yeah. Okay, let's go a little slower because it feels like. Um, yeah, the line didn't look. We're uh, giving up pieces pretty easily here. Knight h7. No, oh, he goes knight h7. Okay, but yeah, that's But then, fine. then uh, I mean, it's either he blunders this bishop c1 completely. Yeah, bishop c1 happens okay. now. Okay, now let's see. Bishop c1. So what was the point? Yeah, Jan played that instantly. Yeah. Mm. Rook where? B5. B5. Okay. But there were no other options, huh? Well. Yeah, the players are playing pretty uh -huh, good. But I see his point, actually. It makes sense. So basically, after bishop c4, he will just ignore it. Mm -hmm. He will play something like bishop e6. And, uh, yeah. That's a cool exchange, Zach. He has a reason, yeah. Well, that's a, I mean, that would be lovely to get this position as black, wouldn't it? I mean, it could still be better for white. It could be that this, you know, mating threat uh, thing with knight h5 is, you know, good. But yeah, I mean, at least it looks fantastic. And Jan played bishop a3 quickly. Okay. So it feels a little discoordinated in a way for black, but the it pressure has been kind of taken off his king side mostly, right? Yeah. And it's, it's been sort of... I mean, there's still some pl pressure, but it's kind of coming from a different, different direction. Yeah. I must say, for white, it kind of looks good. Well, mm -hmm. it could be that he is not better, but just optically, it kind of, it kind of stabilized a little. Mm -hmm. Like all the pieces are good. Mm -hmm. You have two bishops. Mm -hmm. You're about to play rook to d1. This a pawn is you know, blocked in a very solid way. So should we, I mean, somehow get out of this pin so we can actually do something? Uh, should we go back to d8? I don't How know. How about that? How about we just try that? Sure. I mean, it's like at some point I have to make these pieces better, right? I can't My just first them. question will be quite a funny one, actually. I mean, it's not that I believe it, mm -hmm. but it's just funny that I can take on c5. And then after rook takes c5, c4, <laughs> your rook is a little bit p puzzled by, yeah. uh, by what's going on. It's funny, because it's yeah. like very anti-positional, but you're basically just trying to uh, play against this rook. But I yeah. mean, yeah, you don't really believe that, do you? No. No. But it's funny. Yeah. But I think I managed to trick Ali Reza very same way in some like world leads. I was lost, and then uh, yeah, in some rook ending, I basically. I yeah. basically well, you know, I have to. I can. I can try to come out. Yeah, this yeah, way. yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, but yeah. Yeah, sure. um, probably not. But you, yeah, you okay. don't want to be making that trade. Yeah. So normally, something like rook to d one would be my. Okay. Intention. All right. Then, okay, so you do have you have any threats? Is what I want to know. So is it time for me to lock up your bishop with knight b three? Yeah. And just. No, let's lock him up and see you, what You'll happens. have to, yeah, you'll have to eventually anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Then it feels to me like you're lacking forces at the king side a little bit. 
Who's lacking? White? Black. So some Black. knight h5s mm. could, be, could be hard okay, to Okay, interesting. Could be hard to face. Like right here? Yeah, for instance. Okay. So I have this wonderful h7 defender. Mm -hmm. how, can I, how can I use him? Okay, let me see what you're threatening. Um, I don't know myself, not actually. Not much, not much, right? Because yeah. I can always go g6. Okay, that means that I've got time maybe for bishop e6 to solidify things a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't know, I guess I, mean, I, I take, I go rook d1. Uh, I feel like things are not so bad for black if you know we just consolidate a little bit more that I could actually see this being like... I don't know. Okay, he did move his rook. I think he moved it to oh, e8, e8 right? yeah, yeah, just one square. Uh-huh. Which also makes sense, right? I mean, he basically is not that worried about white controlling the d-file. Yeah. There's not really an, any infiltration squares there, so he doesn't want to offer up any trades on the d-file. But at the same time, the way he plays kind of you know, makes me think he's, uh, he's really nervous, right? Mm, it's I, a, so. I mean, it's actually unlucky for him. Like, whichever kind of time management he chooses, we are criticizing him. Now I'm about to say, okay, it's such a sharp position, why don't you think, buddy? I mean, yeah. at least once, and you know. On the other hand, yeah, um, I mean, when he did that, we all know what happened next, so. Yeah, he's trying to make sure he's not gonna get into time trouble and there's still a lot of play, yeah. and he's keeping up on the clock. Mm -hmm. That's good. I mean, on the board, Okay, like the fireworks kind of ended quickly, right? We're not really in that phase of the game right now, although it, there's still a lot of play. Yeah, I mean. The fireworks were like a few moves earlier, I think, that Yeah, but the fireworks can yeah. be back in two moves. I mean, it's, uh, you know. Like right here, things looked like they were just gonna explode, and then when he played this recapture quickly, it really slowed down. And then, I don't know, maybe after bishop g5, there was still something that he could do that was kind of cooler than knight h7. Could be, yeah. But since he went for this, okay, he kind of went on the defensive a bit, just making regular moves to defend his pieces. Yeah, but it's just in general kind of, I mean, I don't like this for black. Okay, try to show me how you're gonna, like, let's count the material. You've got five pawns and I've got six pawns. Okay. So black is actually up a pawn, yeah. even though one of his pawns are doubled. Yeah, but this is not what I like as white. No, it's just that in general I don't see a plan for... Um, I mean, I understand this sounds very old-fashioned and stuff, but I honestly don't see a plan for black long term. Like, I don't see how you can ever, uh, how you can ever make these pawns go. And... Um, now I start to think that, I mean, given the fact that you're about to play knight b3, mm -hmm. blocking my bishop, it probably even makes sense for me to play bishop c4. And then after bishop e6, I'll probably even consider uh, bishop f1. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, that's not the most obvious decision no. in the world. Okay. So you're going here. I'm going to offer you my rook. Yeah. Yeah, I go bishop f1. Bishop f1. I mean, bishop takes b5, I could have. Yeah. In much better version, like even this, and then I start doubling, uh, doubling rooks. Mm. Well, I do like that you've kind of improved your bishop because it could have been very useless on a two, right? So that makes yeah. sense. But and basically, okay. But I'm going to try to say that your bishop is not great, other than like, what is it doing? I get it. You're going to go here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, it's coming to d six, no? I mean, it's, ah, okay. it's a great bishop actually. Well, from that point of view, yes, that's nice. Let's see. Hmm. So if I go, like, I, I don't have time to get myself to the D file. Yeah. I think the only plan Black has long term is bringing the knight to C4. Like, ideally, the knight from H7. We have 6, D7, and B6. But it takes eternity. OK, let's, let's take a look at your plan again. So you're going bishop C4. Yeah. Not exactly a threat yet. But the problem is I can't move my rook anywhere without losing my knight. Yeah, you're also happy to to be offering this rook, right? So you can just play bishop e6, bishop f1, yeah. knight so f6. Yeah, so is there any is there any benefit for me like starting with that and maybe not going bishop e6? Do I have any point to that? I mean, I, the problem is I still can't lock up your bishop. 
Yeah. So this way you're like allowing bishop d6 in all the lines. Yeah. And actually here Problem. exactly it just feels like you're about to be checkmated after some knight f5. Okay, so bishop c4. Hmm. I'm probably being a little bit too smart as white, actually. Maybe we should just examine something more straightforward, like rook a to d1. So let's say bishop e6. No, 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 but if I, so if I go you? here. Ah, this is you what have, you have. Okay. Because yeah, bishop d6 is not like a killer yet. And then your bishop is left out. No. Me too. Still, I'll play bishop d6, let's say. Mm -hmm. And maybe queen b6 that gets my rook trapped. Yeah, also, like at some point, I will just, uh, I'll just go knight h5 in main alliance. Queen a7. So let's say, yeah, but it starts to look really bad. So I don't but know. But I still it. feel like with this, I, I like your bishop out kind of more, but okay. Yeah, but I have all the rest of the pieces, so knight mm -hmm. h5, let's say. Hmm. I think, first of all, white is better. And secondly, it's incredibly difficult for black to play. OK. I'm still feeling happy with this bishop blocked. Yeah, so but then I'll checkmate you, and you'll no, be no, no. Sti still bragging about no, it in the very end. No, you're not yeah? going to do that, because I always have yeah. f6, and I can connect my queen, and my bishop will come in. Things are not so bad here. Hold on. Let's defend a little bit. Let's go f6. OK. Queen g3. OK, so what are your threats? No threats yet? No threats yet. OK, yeah, maybe you queen promised a me that you were going to check me. Maybe. Yeah, that's, that's not going to happen, though, Danil. Queen of seven, yeah? OK, queen of seven is a good move, yeah. Yeah, and maybe. Look at that beautiful defense. That's the thing. I think I, your first idea of improving this bishop kind of yeah. feels a bit more convincing. Yeah, this bishop c4, bishop, uh, bishop f1 somehow clicked, I must say. Yeah. But it could be that, uh, I mean, it's easy to come up with such ideas in the analysis. But over the board, you're like really worried about uh, being a little too smart and, and just w wasting to tempt this for. Really? I, I love this idea because, I mean, I don't know. The moment I see this and I'm like, this bishop could be kept out of the game forever, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I get kind of concerned. So let's look at this again. Bishop c4. Yeah. Because the, then you know, we have a mix too, actually, right? We can prevent knight b3 by playing bishop c4. But, but after bishop e6, we can actually take on a6. This kind of makes sense too. You mean like if I go here? Yeah, just in terms of logic, take? I mean, I force the trade. I mean, I like it. Mm. I like it way, uh, way less. Yeah, right. Now, I also, because I don't know. But I actually don't know why, on the other hand. Mm -hmm. OK. Well, I don't know. Why, why, I don't understand why black would be worse here. Like, black is still up a pawn. You don't have the bishop pair. Yeah. I'm not going to really get mated. My pieces are not like the worst ever. Yeah, it's the knight on h7 I want to highlight. Yeah, I, said, I said they're not the worst ever. I didn't say yeah. they're the best ever. OK. So knight f5? OK. Knight f5, what do you want? You want the square? Yeah. No, I think in general, long term, I just want to play mm -hmm. bishop somewhere. But you know what is interesting here? Yeah, at least here, you don't have a bishop that hits my rook. Okay. So maybe I have some chances of cutting your bishop out of the out of the game. Yeah, but I'm about to play bishop c1 myself anyway. So let's go bishop c1. The bishop, yeah. No, I just want to I just want to be attacking the pawns in general. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, but even if you win this pawn, I mean, you think? Yeah, then I'll it's win. So bad for black. No, but then I'll win another one, and then it mm. will be really bad. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't think it's gonna get that bad. Hold on. Yeah. I feel like black's position is still defensible here. Also, I have like ideas of c4 uh, sometimes. Yeah. Maybe fight for these light squares a little bit. How about maybe improving this rook? Mm -hmm. Go, where should I go to d8? Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, it doesn't look too bad. I certainly always take white here, but yeah, mm. it, it doesn't look too bad. It's just very annoying that over the board, you, you would have to calculate all the queen g3s. And some yeah. h4, h5, like every single move. And then there is no, there is no general plan that, that kind of uh, helps black there. And it will always be very much move by move. But let's try, let's try this idea, because I really feel like we haven't yet solved this plan. Mm -hmm. 
right? Because now, like, this work just cannot move at all. Yeah. And this knight, if it goes there, it actually feels in a way not super relevant, right? It just sort of yeah. not, not doing anything important. Yeah. At the same time, basically, what you need here as buck is to have c6, c5, right? And Without you don't have that. Yeah. yeah, but you could have protected your rook first then. How? Well, somehow, just in terms of logic, bishop e6, bishop f1. Yeah. You somehow overprotect the rook, like rook e to b8, maybe. Okay. But like, you're just never moving anything here, like. No, if I'm to move, I go knight b3. Yeah. yeah. No, but you're not. You're not getting that. Yeah. That's why I love keeping that bishop on the board. Look at that annoying. Yeah, but attack. okay, I go knight f6. Yeah. Now let's switch the roles. Why would I resign here as black? Why well, am I? You're willing to defend black's position now. Yeah. Okay. Well, now at least I see that I'm not getting checkmated. Mm -hmm. Like there is no knight h5. There is no. I mean, I, I understand what white is doing, but it's a slow plan. Like you probably double on d file or you go queen e3 maybe. Mm -hmm. No, it's a deep concept, but um, even if it's good, it won't. Do you think maybe we just go knight f5 here? Yeah, could be. This is one more thing that I'm not sure about. Like if you want this or not. As black, I would be really worried that you do. But um, yeah, because I, it's hard to move these pieces. Yeah. And I, yeah, I, I do mean, feel like like look if look at the look at the picture here. I mean, white's position is feeling very harmonious. Yeah, and also black is doing exactly nothing, right? You you have these two. Two rooks doing nothing. You mm -hmm. you cannot move like the any knight, of them actually. Yeah. You cannot move the knight, and yeah, white is just improving slowly. Hmm. Okay, let's go back a little bit. It's somewhat counterintuitive to be like praising bishop c4, bishop f1 so much. I mean, I know I came up with it myself, but still, it's but yeah. I mean, could be that it's it's such a good idea. I don't know. I'm pretty sure Jan is actually. Uh, I mean, considering it. Mm -hmm. I think once again, in general, we see this I mean, a pretty much similar way. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, it's a Soviet school. And um, I mean, this bishop c4, bishop f1 is actually like, I, I mean, I saw many exercises of this kind where, um, I mean, having a pair of bishops, you actually need to spend two tempests to... Preserve them. To, yeah, to, uh, to prevent your opponent from, yeah, from trading one of them, yeah. And just to like show people, I mean, we have shown very little interest in taking that rook. That might be surprising for people like who don't understand why would we prefer to retreat than to take the rook in this position. So let's try to um, evaluate this position a little bit. I mean, here we kind of improved black's pawn structure. We got rid of one of white's good pieces, <coughs> the bishop, and you know, we are giving, this pawn is kind of weak. I suppose, like, there's some outpost squares. Yeah. What do you think? I mean... No, I think it's long-term good for black. Like, white will basically have to play for, uh, for an attack somehow. Mm -hmm. He'll play rook d1, probably double on d5, will go knight h5. <coughs> and Lang by the way, they have to constantly watch out for this, because, I mean, black sure. can try to prepare just the advance of those pawns. Sure. Long-term, uh, long black has very good prospects here. This would be mm -hmm. such a gift for Black, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's a what you're, what mouse you're, slip. Mouse what slip. you're dreaming of, yeah, in the World Championship match. Okay, yeah. so this is not going to happen, and that's why um, we're looking at th this oh, bishop this is retreat. Oh, this quite a, quite a, I mean... Quite oh, did I just make another Quite mouse? an angle, right? I mean... Yeah, oh, bishop e6, and... Oh, what are we... Yeah, yeah. oh, he's playing with the pawns. That's why yeah. they showed that side of him. Okay. Yeah. Okay, bishop f1. Let's try a little harder here for, for Ding's position. Yeah. So basically, your next move is rook ad1, and then you just like tie me up to, to that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? It could be that knight b7 makes sense here. I was just thinking it about looks, that. It looks ugly, but you actually, you actually mm. cover this um, entry square on d6. Yes. And then, yeah, you're preparing rook b3. Mm -hmm. And there actually, and, and what is actually wrong with that? No, it makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Well, it could be that bishop takes b5 now works tactically, but I failed to believe it anyway. 
And I think given the position we have as black, we need to we need to yeah. we need to accept that. And yeah. I mean, I like this uh, sort of struggle between the rook and the bishop here. You yeah. Know, like black is like, please take my rook, and white's like, not interested at all. Here, yeah. I'll leave it a little longer for you, and you know, still, um, still probably not. I mean, you can take it now, but it yeah. still doesn't feel like it's going to be that amazing. No. And I'm not even sure that the knight is much worse on b7 than on c5. Yeah, and just to show this line, this is actually the piece that we want to see on b3. And this work is amazing here. Yeah. Really, like, showing that this bishop on a3 can be quite awkward. And he did go bishop c4. OK. So we might be seeing you know, these next couple of moves play out. Yeah. I think bishop e6 is very intuitive for black. Yeah. But not forced at all, on the other hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just so you know, actually, actually, your yeah. Actually, if we think that bishop f1 is a point, then uh, you know. I mean, I agree. You want to play bishop e6. Jan is actually down to 32 minutes. Jan, uh, Jan has 32, and Dink has a bit less than 41. And it's moved 26, right? Mm hmm Okay. I mean, there's just no point playing knight b7 before you've kicked that bishop off the diagonal. No, no, but I'm saying something like knight f6 is, uh, I mean, you can just wait for one more move. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, maybe you want to wait for rook a to d1, mm -hmm. and then rook b3 will be, will be a time for. I see, I see. OK, so you're yeah. thinking there's some point in improving this knight. Yeah. And the knight generally has to improve through that square and not through g5, right? This would be my guess. Also, knight g5 normally allows queen e3, mm -hmm. which is a double attack. And uh, I mean, knight e6 probably works, but it, I mean, it, it becomes so shaky. So knight f5 is there. You don't have bishop takes f5 anymore. Yeah. Looks scary. Yeah. So I, can, I see why you're trying to go this way. Yeah. At the same time, it could be that like, if in general we are going to play bishop e6 as black, it could be that the knight on h7 is kind of a good um, defender. Maybe you want to play mm -hmm. f7, f6 there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and wait, kind of. But yeah. yeah, knight f6 doesn't look insane either. Well, what do you think if I attack you and kind of threaten bishop takes b5 now, or um, bishop takes c5? I don't know. Now you don't have time for bishop e6. No. So you got to do something else. No. No, I must say, uh, yeah, in general, I'm not too much invested in it. As uh, I mean, we're trying to come up with the lines, but it feels like bishop e6 is uh, so natural Yeah. in the current position that, you know, you cannot just ignore it. Yeah, because that move, I mean, basically, you're developing a piece. You're challenging white for the diagonal. Mm -hmm. And if white's best move is to move back, I mean, it feels like you've gained something. Yeah. So I definitely expect Ding to, to play that move. By the way, yeah, bishop e6 plays. Yes. By the way, uh, another setup we could mm -hmm. examine is actually bishop e6, bishop f1. Mm -hmm. And then, just in terms of ideas, after bishop f1, mm -hmm. imagine black plays bishop b3. Mm -hmm. It actually makes sense, too. Ah, not letting the rook come here. Yeah. And then it would be funny if white plays rook d1. And we're like, you take my rook. No, you, <laughs> you take my rook. No, I don't want to. Uh, yeah. yeah. OK, that one, though, is the joke sacrifice, not like blacks. Um, well. I'm not sure, by the way, but yeah, most probably. Yeah. Yeah, I most mean, I just want to know, OK, if I attack you like this, where, where is your knight going? Yeah, it doesn't matter. I will have rook d8 in all the lines. I can go to e6, let's say, now. I don't need knight b7. Yeah. As long as you don't have rook d1, I'm not to like. Yeah, basically, you're just not ever afraid of that move. Or at least I'm yeah. trying to, to make you believe it, yes. No, I think that's very interesting. That's, it's actually, so either of these two pieces could try to take the b3 square. That's going to be a little bit of a challenge for Ding to figure out which one he wants. But like not letting the rook go there is, is very nice. Hold on. So let's no. see. And basically, you're saying that like you're playing like if I go knight f5. Yeah, I, I don't know, rook d8 maybe. Or something like that. And then it's not that simple for white to come up with a plan. 
I mean, maybe you go rook e2 and then rook d2. But it's not, you know, it's not simple. It's too bad that that check doesn't really yeah. doesn't lead anywhere too much. I don't yeah. know. I feel like we should still look at that. Yeah. No, I agree that intuitively you very much prefer the rook on b3, mm. not the bishop. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this one is hard to crack too. Yeah. Doesn't look ideal for black, but you know. I know. You don't feel like there's something kind of like a little awkward about this position for black? Wow. I mean, it took you quite a while to finally get this feeling. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> I, I, I've been feeling this way for like two hours straight already or something. But uh, yeah, yeah, only now, only now. I only feel okay. a little slightly uncomfortable with that king in the corner. Uh huh. So there was nothing wrong with the rook on b5 and the knight on c5. There no, was that was fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there was nothing wrong with the knight on h7. And then finally, right. uh, finally they um, played one check, and you're like, okay, now I'm actually a little worried. Yeah, okay. Yep, I'm sure. a little worried here because okay. I see p potential checkmates. I see I don't know, like what, somehow. What checkmates? I mean, like yeah, how? The pattern of a checkmate. Do you see it? No. So, so show me. Okay, I will be skipping moves. So, how do you checkmate? Well, all me? I gotta do is get that pawn to move, right? Like that's what I'm looking at, like queen f3. Okay. But I mean. Sure. I go f6 just to help you. Oh, you know what? Yeah. Okay, I see what you mean. Okay. I uh, confuse the diagonals. Ah, okay. You see what I mean? Like I was like thinking this. I don't know that this was a. Yeah, white bishop there. But yeah, that's not a checkmate. That's right. The king just moves yeah. away. OK. OK. So now you, you're not too worried anymore. Yeah, no, no actually, I'm not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That feels all right then. But it's cool. I mean, you know, working with you, I actually realize that you have very, very clear uh, priorities, which are basically that it's only checkmates that you care about. And I think it, uh, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Like all the rest, you can survive. Yeah, it's funny that you think so, Daniel. Yeah. Um, all right. Now. Um, so Jan took on a six, actually, mm -hmm. which I kind of like. Mm -hmm. I think I mentioned it too, right? Mm. I mean, we had this. And uh, yeah, this looks like a safe option for It's safe, yeah. Safe, white. but not, not super ambitious. And I mean, OK, the square, square is cleared for the rook now. Yeah. So, um, but how did we survive this as black? So knight takes c6, knight f5. What was our? We looked at this, right? Yeah, yeah a little. And we even tried c5 here. Ah, c5. Uh huh. So we were like trying to not to let sure. your piece into d6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I missed it at first, and I missed it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For some reason, c5 is counterintuitive to me. Also. Yeah, yeah, it's because we couldn't do it earlier because there was a bishop attacking the rook. But yeah, probably after the trade. Yeah, probably because of that. Yeah. Yeah. So this seems not so bad. Yeah, I mean, it's not even clear why why it is like 100% safe for white. Right, right, exactly. White's still down a pawn. Black still has these outside pass pawns. Yeah, like not that you are worse, but some, yeah, bishop c1, mm -hmm. okay. I mean, something like c4. This was exactly our conversation from yep. like 10, in, 10 minutes ago, yeah? Okay. Yeah, so you're going here trying to win that pawn. Ah, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So you are going to win back. One of the pawns. Yeah, and then you said c4 is in Sometimes, general yeah. a good resource. <coughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. I agree. I don't, know if I, I don't know if I want to yeah. do it now. Yeah, I don't know. c4, rook a4. I mean, I still can't. If I go there, you take. I still can't play knight c5 because you're going to take that pawn. Yeah. So also, is, c4 is, it is very much inviting bishop a3 back. You just played c5 to limit the bishop, right? So yeah, also, we should notice maybe that square positionally. Like, that could matter. Yeah. OK, so I, I mean, I need to finally start getting this knight somewhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's try. I know there's always these ideas, but I guess I don't have to take you. Let's actually have a look at at the current position. Like, Dink, mm -hmm. Dink is actually thinking. OK. He's thinking which way to recapture. Yeah, so what is the reason? Rook takes? Yeah, rook takes is an option as well. OK. okay that controls that square, at least. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, prob it not probably senseless, yeah. yeah, it probably is an option indeed, yeah. Which is a little bit unfortunate for him. Yeah, he has to waste time on that, yeah. thinking about this. This kind of allows bishop takes c5, which is super solid for white. Mm. And actually, uh, I would be optimistic even here. 
So this oh, one is position. really easy to play. You go rookie to e1, mm -hmm. some queen e3, knight f5. Like it's very simple. This pawn on e5 is clearly more of a weakness than uh, than something than else. Strength. Yeah, and then maybe you don't have much, but um, this is really safe. With knight takes e6, black is saying, you know, I'm probably worse, mm. but I'm not ready give not ready to give up on uh, you know trying to win this game. Yeah, no, I agree. This is like more ambitious. You don't. I mean, this bishop is a double-edged sword. It's not necessarily going to be an amazing piece in these positions, right? Yeah, it could be limited badly to any mm -hmm, moment. Mm -hmm. But actually, maybe. Well, your logic was uh, was perfect. So maybe knight takes c6, knight f5 is in general the idea to provoke c5, and maybe then white should make use of this. This uh, d5 square. Yeah, maybe you go knight to 3 d5, and then you play yeah. bishop c1, bishop c3, and maybe you're doing very well. Who knows? Mm. OK, other, OK, how do I have to play this move? Yeah, because normally I may not really want to if I can find other ways to guard yeah. d6. So let's figure out how big of an issue all of this is. Well. It's a bit of an issue. You can include rook d8, but then there is rook d1. And there is also knight e7 check that yeah. is winning immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. you can actually try to like do the same, right? You can just ignore, you can just ignore white. Mm -hmm. Like play something you want. I don't know, knight f6. And then after knight d6, you go rook d8 and say, OK. Take, take the exchange. Yeah, again. yeah, yeah. Here we go again. But um, it doesn't feel as good without the light squared bishop, but yeah. It doesn't look terrible either, to be honest. At some point, we also need to improve this knight. Yeah. And I'm not sure where it belongs. Like, ideally, if, uh, if, they, want, if they want checkmate us, we want to go knight f6, knight d7, knight b6. Knight c4. Yeah. Okay. I, let's try c5 again. Yeah. I still feel like that's sort of the most obvious choice. Okay. So knight e3, for instance. Knight e3 immediately. Mm hmm. Mm. Knight take takes. It with the knight. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Knight f5. Yeah. Play it quickly. Yep. Okay. And ding. And also c5, c5 okay. answers quickly. Okay. okay. Here we are. Okay. And so now you're trying knight e3. Yeah. And the funny thing is that even a knight of six, um, you can go knight d5. Yeah, you're, this move doesn't yeah. actually stop you. Like, you can still go in. Yeah. Go in and get that trade. So, this square. And does Jan do it? No, he plays queen e2. OK. Not sure I get it. But OK, I mean, I get it. He wants to put the queen on c4, ideally. Yeah. Is that what's going to happen? Yeah, there's no c4 because of knight d6. I don't think I get it. You don't think you understand this move? Yeah. Well, I don't think I get the, the necessity. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, because also you're taking the queen, like, let's say, further away from the king side. Yeah. Well, rook b3 is very, like, logical. Mm -hmm. So what's the point? Yeah, queen c4. Yeah. But still, what's the point? Like, is he trying to capture with a queen? Mm -hmm. Exactly. But why? I mean, it does make some sense. But why, uh, why is it necessarily worse to Tempest? So let's say I go queen c6. Mm -hmm. So how do you proceed? Like, bishop c1 at some point? You actually have bishop c1. Still, it doesn't look. I mean, exactly killing, but yeah. Should I start with bishop c1, or should I go for this one first? I'm not sure. Or even, actually, there's rook d1 and some Well, rook b3 stuff. played queen c4. OK. Yeah, for some reason, they started blitzing a little, yeah? Yep. Both of them are playing really fast. OK, rook b3, queen yeah. c4, so that's what we were just looking at. Yeah. OK, and he needs to figure out, does is this even an issue? Like, does this pawn need to be protected? I mean, obviously, he would still have rook b8 if it got captured. Or knight f6, which is uh, protecting yes. the rook on h2. Right? Yeah, and that way you can capture on c3. So I do like the idea of one day unleashing this knight. So let's let's try that. 
Yep. Nice, healthy move. Yeah. Because if you take now, I take your pawn, and I get away with it. And yeah. I get like, more squares for my knights. You actually don't get away. You lose your rook. Wait, you, hold on. Queen takes a4, rook takes a3, bishop b2. Is a bit of an issue, right? Mm. Mm, rook d3? Ah, rook d3. Wow, OK. I'm going crazy. Cool. Yeah, here we. Yeah, this has to be okay, almost right? Almost are trapped. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fortunately, we got one little mm -hmm. we survived. escape. OK. Yeah. And there is nothing else, right? After rook takes c3, like, there is mm -hmm. no way. Ah, uh, you can trap the rook. I mean, I somehow prepare it, but probably no. Yeah, you, you will have knight d4s. Yeah. You will have c4 at very least, followed by rook d3. Mm -hmm. rook. Yeah. This looks OK. Yeah, so I, I like knight f6. Yeah, so I go bishop c1 then. OK. So you want to play uh, rook takes a4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. But then you somehow just allow it, and then you play rook b1. Wait one second. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm thinking, like, is it time to maybe start thinking about that type of maneuver? Could be. But you can do something simple, too, like rook d8, rook for instance. Mm -hmm. Just, you know. Because if you take, just kind of go rook b1. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know. And black actually is looking pretty harmonious here. Yeah. You got these knights, I think, on good positions. Yeah. The rooks are on the open files. They actually look better than white's rooks. Yeah. I mean, white pieces look good too, but they are somehow discoordinated, right? Yep. Like, two heavy pieces are trying to collect the queen side. Mm -hmm. The knight is, for some reason, uh, I mean, attacking the king. Mm -hmm. Basically solo. And this bishop is still not able to really do that much, I guess, other than going to e3, but one day if it can yeah. get out of the pin. And yeah. also you're pinned, which is not that fun. Yeah. Another point of queen c4 could be to, to prepare rook e3 followed by rook g3. Yeah, here I thought we go queen b7. Yeah. Somehow the, there are some harmony problems starting to appear for white. Just like some well, I mean, here. yeah, rook takes a5. Yeah, I guess you can try that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, knight a4, rook a7. Does it work? It's starting to get kind of crazy. Yeah, it feels like black will have some cool tactics. Um, but unfortunately, I don't have knight c3. No. Actually, are you sure that we have tactics? Maybe we don't. But Well, if we don't, we have queen b6. OK, he played queen c6. OK. So we were talking up this move. Yeah. He decides uh, he's just going to calmly defend that pawn. We should also mention that. Yeah. So what's his point after bishop c1? Oh, well, his point is pretty much the same. What I don't like, though, mm. is that we cannot really play rook b8 anymore if there is 97 check. Mm, so you got to constantly and, uh, watch out for that. Yeah. You can't move your rook anywhere, actually. Mm -hmm. Your queen is not the best. Yeah, he probably wants to do kind of the same thing. He wants to play knight f6, rook a4, rook b1. Can I ask you something? Do you yeah. think that maybe when rook a4 happens, he wants to have like that trick somewhere? Ah, yeah. Then you are giving up e5, on the other hand. But, but, but yeah. here's the thing. I'm going knight f6, so I'm yep. we're going to see if those tactics work. Yep, so takes, yeah. takes. You take, and then we do a deflection tactic. OK, takes. Take, take. I want a pawn. And now the question is, what happens on this, right? Wait, what did you call it? It's called a deflection tactic. Deflection, OK. Deflection, yeah. When okay. we deflect that queen away from protecting the rook, then we okay. call that deflection. OK, so takes. Takes. Queen takes a4, mm -hmm. queen takes a5. Mm -hmm. Now, where is my discovery? Yeah, I mean, it has to be there. I mean, even if it's not, probably this position is not too bad for black, but. Well, if it's not, you basically need to make sure white is not going to to create an attack. To go bishop b2 and like sack on g7 or something. Yeah, 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 or some knight takes bishop g7. Bishop h6. Yeah, 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 bishop h6, all that stuff. So you want yeah. something like knight d4 to work. Ah, uh, yes, we want this to work. Yeah, but then there is knight 7 check, and yeah, I don't know. 
Maybe we pray and we go king of eight. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And we actually mm -hmm. pick up the knight, and I mean, it does look scary, but maybe it just works. I mean, queen takes c5, rook takes c7. Like in the moment, it, like at the moment, it doesn't look good. But bishop a3, mm -hmm. maybe we have some, you know, cool move, and then it will work. Yeah, like this one. Still looks, I mean, a little bit scary, right? Yeah. No. Yeah, but then you're in time to go king g8, I guess. Yeah, maybe and the... We, and we survive. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Actually, bishop c1 is on the board. Yeah. So we're going to get okay. a lot of these questions answered. Okay. So this pawn cannot really be protected anymore. Yeah. Well, this pawn wasn't meant to leap for. Okay, there we go. He goes with knight f6. Mm -hmm. Always okay. happy to see peace improvement. Yeah. Knights don't belong on the side of the board. Okay, so knight f6, and now, yeah, I do like where these knights have settled. Yeah. Um, at some point, yeah, he's going to have to make a decision about that. Is there anything he can do? He, it's not easy for him to move the bishop here anymore because then he has to consider the d e4 pawn. Yeah. So in terms of like what white could do other than taking on a4, um, what else do you see? Well, the question is very much if black has a plan at all. Let's say mm -hmm. I go f2, f3. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, OK. And uh, well, slow, slowly but surely, like if you just wait, I'll come up with something eventually. Yeah. The question is uh, if you have options. Yeah, g6. Where does this knight belong? I don't know, e3? e3 Maybe e3. Yeah. Want to still try to get him to d5? OK. Yeah, but you have rook d8, yeah? I mean, somehow I'm doing perfect job still meeting myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my pieces yeah, are I mean, coming to life. I yeah, like yeah. it. Yeah, and mine are going backwards <laughs> all the time. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, OK. So knight of six, I mean, so if he takes this pawn, well, obviously taking with the queen is like not dangerous, right? Or should we still take a look? Yeah, not for too long, but we can. We so can. yeah, I guess we just take take on c3. Yes, now do we want to, uh, let's try that. Let's add that guy. Yeah. And then we calculate something. And by saying we, I meant ding. Not us. Oh, I, and I thought you meant you for sure. No, I was no, like, no, that's no, definitely no. your job, Daniel. No, no. No, I thought rook c2, I mean, rook c2 pretty much forces bishop to take c5. Uh -huh. And then from far away, the, the move you want to work here is black is normally knight d4. This would be my uh, kind yeah. of kind of intention. To get like you get th that pawn in the end. Yeah, but here exactly, first of all, knight takes d4 is a tempi, unfortunately. And then, and then what? Then we have this rook ending that uh, is most probably a draw. Like which one? Yeah, you just take f6 and take take d4, basically. Ah, OK, this one. Uh-huh. By the way, we're getting a move from Nepo. Queen, queen takes. Queen yeah. OK. Oh, look at that. So Dink will take, I'm pretty sure, and then, mm -hmm. uh, then we'll try and to And we'll, we'll probably continue this uh, streak of games where they don't go too much longer than uh, the time control. What do you think? I mean, unless someone will be a little bit better. Better, but yeah, I mean, right now I'm pretty optimistic that Ding will be able to neutralize this. OK. Yeah, but I'm not, uh, I mean, I'm not convinced at all that Ding is necessarily. The one who's trying to neutralize? Yeah. Maybe he's. I mean, this ending is a little bit sharp. Mm. You don't need to take on C3, right? You can play, I don't know, Rook 8 or something. I mean, you can think here. OK, yeah, I agree. Yeah, one thing you don't want to do is defend the pawn like that and step into the fork. Yeah. Um, rook eight is an interesting option, actually. Yeah. And you think that's quite, quite a big option for black. Yeah, there is some weird 97 check there. Mm -hmm. But then again, it is weird. And I mean, okay. And then your knight is trying to go where exactly? I thought suddenly c6. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, again, it's playable. Even rook takes c3. I mean, mm -hmm. okay, I'll give up. I'll give up one of the two. 
You can also just go knight d7, right? Yeah. And maybe it was also reasonable to play king h7, actually, not to be running into it's some a checkmate, yeah, back ranks. Uh -huh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like that. And then if you go here, at least just like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then let's say if you take on a five and black takes on c3, let's say takes, takes, mm -hmm. then it's not necessarily a dead draw, no? Because black is still trying. Yeah. I mean, here is probably not a draw at all, to be honest. I mean, yeah, I mean it's probably this just. Knight is not amazing. Yeah. We're going to yeah. play f6 and we're going to like get the knight in, start pushing the pawn. And uh, yeah, white is still going to have to struggle here. Yeah. I mean, black's pieces actually just look a lot better. Yeah. Um, okay, I kind of like that line. So for after black. rook a8, what else is there? Yeah, no, I mean, he probably needs to do that if he wants to keep this game going, right? Or. No, I think at the moment his thinking process should go like, I play rook takes c3 if mm -hmm. it's a comfortable draw by force. Mm -hmm. And if not, okay, I go rook 8 and I. But maybe know. rook 8 is like even trying to be more ambitious though, no? Yeah, I mean, at the moment it's hard to believe that you can look better. I don't know. In the end but game, we know the outside pass pawn can be good, right? Just yeah. we use that basic principle. Yeah, at the same time, if you don't win c3 pawns and. Let's say something like bishop d2 happens. Okay. The problem is that you will win it. I mean, you have moves like rook d, just tactically it feels like you will win it. Mm -hmm. But let's say long term, if white is in time. Let's say I don't play any tactics. Yeah. Or, well, let, me, what see, let me see what you want. You want c4? No, I want rook e2, e1, and then I want f3. Mm. And then I basically want to stabilize and get a5. Yeah, and I then actually, I don't win too often either. <laughs> but, uh, this is my dream, but I need, I need a little bit of time for that. Yeah. Which I might not be able to have. Yeah. Yeah, let's go rook d8, no? Looks good. Rook d8, yeah. Hmm. Very uncomfortable to face, so where actually. Where was this rook to begin with? It was on e8? It was a... It was e8. Yeah, but we, we provoked... Right. what did he do? Did he take the pawn? Oh, okay. Yeah. He's going for the very concrete move. Ah, so he wants maybe bishop b2, rook b3. Bishop takes e5, rook b4. Bishop b2. Rook b3, maybe. Okay, well, yeah. he's getting played. Rook b3. Bishop takes e5. Yeah, rook b4. Yeah. Yeah, then it's... Um, well, it looks convincing. Rook b4. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, that's what he's calculated. So now white's going to be taking that pawn, right? Yeah, but then we take e4. Yeah, black is completely fine, yeah? Or, well, okay, let's look at this. Yeah, rook takes c4. You're takes, definitely taking take. with a rook, right? You don't want to take with a knight? Oh, because of what? Just some danger with, I don't know, f3 or? Yeah, I think in general, it's normally the side with, with the bishop who is trying in those. Mm -hmm. And I think in general, it's way less dangerous uh, with, uh, with like a small number of heavy pieces. Zero, preferably. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, he went yeah. for your move. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think the players know where this is heading. And let's say rook takes, knight yeah. takes. I guess the question for white is how to like, they get some more pieces off the board, right? Or Really, yeah, I would think it's white who is. You think white is trying to play for something here? I mean, not play, but I think as white you, I mean, kind of wait for black to play mm. one one decent move in a row and yeah, pull it. Yeah, here, but I, I, I might play f6. And you might not like that decent move, because I don't know, your bishop is getting a little in the way. OK, let's say yeah, even if it's black to move, like f6, I don't have, yeah. I don't know, bishop d6, maybe. Or knight d6. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Pieces are going to come off the board. Yeah. No, but I guess as white, I go f3 here, right? I mean, I can play too. OK, so he traded. Yeah. Knight takes e4. So after f3, what is it, actually? White has a little pressure, maybe. OK. I mean, of course, it's a draw. Mm -hmm. But let's say as black, from this position, yeah. I mean, some rook ending 3 against 2, I probably don't, I don't even mind. Sure. I mean, I, I honestly think it's white who is like showing off a little. Mm -hmm. And I think, okay, I mean, you you deserve. Uh, I guess knight d2. 
try to get it at square. Yeah, 96. Mm -hmm. And where are we going to put that rook? I guess. No, but that's what I'm saying. It's not we like. We go to d8. OK. OK. He goes for rook a4. Four. Four. Which is probably also a good move. And same kind of idea as f3, right? Yeah. But now, as black would say, like if you are worried, mm -hmm. you can just play knight d4. Mm. Like this, this ah, because you're attacking the bishop. Yeah. And then after bishop takes d4, c takes d4, you are not supposed to lose, and also you are not even supposed to have yeah, problems. Yeah, I doubt that he's going to give up the pawn like that. Mm, okay. I don't know. M maybe not. But at the same I don't time, yeah, I don't see that happening. But yeah, okay. not not because I disagree with the evaluation so much, but I don't know. I feel like it's a little bit of a concession, maybe to give up that pawn like that. Um, yeah, yeah. But after knight d two, you have rook g four. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to. It's White who is trying, right? Are you trying to mate me? Yeah. That's it. No, but I'm not even joking. Like after rook g4, it's not. Uh, I mean, what do we play actually? No, I see. <laughs> I see that. That's actually a pretty um, dangerous mating threat. Except, hold on. Mm, can I make this work? Well, I don't know. But you are playing with fire here. I am. I am. So knight, knight d6, rook d8. Well, first of all, I have absolutely no choice because I'm about to get mated. So yeah. Got to play with some in the fire. So knight d6 and rook d8, rook right? d8 was the idea. Yeah, maybe. By the way, um, not yet. Yeah. Ah, it's protected. Yeah. Lucky for me. Yeah. Because you almost have that trick where you like try to win a pawn, but it doesn't work because the knight was protecting that rook. Yeah. Um, okay, so no rook a4. I see the point. I see the point of rook, this rook g4 gives yeah. Ding something to calculate. Um, well, there could be some mm -hmm. there could be some brilliant idea with a perpetual actually, like you go knight d two, rook g four, and then somehow the e five opens. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine we play knight g five here, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it doesn't work. My point was rook takes g five. Yeah, it doesn't work because of this, right? Yeah, I mean also f six you have rook takes g seven, and here you have this. Yeah, exactly. But I wanted to have uh, some. Background check. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. You, you want it like this one. Yeah. Yeah, and then. Uh, and you yeah. get like I guess you get. Yeah, here I probably even win, yeah, but yeah, I would be I I would be satisfied with a perpetual too. Um, yeah. Right. So, okay, still a question for Ding. Yeah. Um, so taking into account the missed opportunities in the past two games for Ding. And the rumors of the leaked prep, do we think that Ding can be very happy with this game so far? Well, this game that we assume he will navigate to a draw at this point. Mm. I don't know. We should probably ask Mr. Ding, right? Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to tell. I mean, this whole match has been a roller coaster, and even this game. I mean, it could be that let's say if you look at the position after uh, Rook D3 instead of Rook takes a fate after the game. Yeah. You feel like this was um, like a chance to win, even, and then he was probably from like what we were told, he was objectively much worse mm -hmm. throughout the game. Although it was far from obvious to us and to Yan too, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, this result is not bad for him for sure. It gives him like a free day yeah. now to deal with all the issues with his prep, to think about what he's going to do with the white pieces, kind of stabilize after. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of emotions of the last couple of days. Yeah. No, right. I mean, at the same time, you are not very happy when you're like one point down in the match and you make a draw. I mean, there's nothing to celebrate, right? I mean, exactly celebrate. And uh, yeah, it's a decent result. I think uh, there's going to be five more games left and he's got three whites. That's the situation. Yeah. And his whites have been uh, promising mm -hmm. along the way. So yeah. There is not, uh, I mean, it's not a disaster for sure. Like, this is not a must win. Yeah. Not even close to being must win. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, at the same time, you know, given the opening, let's say, I mean, 
Just play bishop f8, not rook b8, right? And from yeah. there, and from there, you don't take a draw compared to mm -hmm. to uh, to the game going. I would say. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he definitely gave Jan kind of um, some initiative there in the middle game that yeah. he didn't need to. Um, but still, yeah, he had some opportunities for like some crazy moves that he didn't take. We could ask him about it in the press conference. Yeah. Um, I mean. But this game will actually go forever, I start to feel like. You really think so? I okay, mean, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to make a bet that somehow it's going to wrap up, you know, as it's supposed to. Well, the, the, I mean, it's not equal. The more I think about it, the more I believe that basically in black shoes, I just go 94 here. Hmm. And then, I mean, I don't lose it, but uh, it's not that we shake hands. Okay. Uh, earlier than move 16. So right? you're basically saying that this knight has a real problem in finding a square right now. Yeah. What are the options? I mean, knight g5? I, I mean, I guess this is an option. Um, it's kind of... Yeah, but then you run into knight, knight g7, g7, yeah. yeah. And rook g, uh, king g7, rook g4. Uh, that right. shows that. Yep. This is nice. And then I agree, this game would not be <laughs> ending. No, I mean, this one... Who, wouldn't go forever. I mean, this one. Yeah, why would win pretty yeah. quickly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, exactly. Okay, so that's actually a cool way to blunder. Um, okay, this is the key line. Knight d2, rook yeah. g4, and we need something cool here for black. So you know, piling up on this pawn. So g6 was making sense, yeah. and we didn't actually exactly break this down for yeah black, but right we were like still holding on here yeah but let's say i go um i think you're just worse in general here so let's say i don't play rook h4 mm -hmm. let's say i uh i mean i have knight d6 i have knight h6 check too mm -hmm. um let me choose one yeah, knight h6 okay i go king f8 yeah but then i'll just um play something like so let's say i go knight h6 but isn't there a What's chance actually? like your pieces get a little tangled up on the king side and maybe then my pawn starts to bother you? I mean. Okay, let's look at some context. There is a chance uh, th there will be no earth tomorrow. But um, right. I mean, I bet it will no, be No, but there's there. a better chance that this pawn can go somewhere. Let, let's continue. Okay, so here exactly. So bishop f6, mm -hmm. isn't, it, isn't it actually? Are you weaving a mating knot? Like yeah. Or what? You're trying to do this again? Yeah. Uh, you're, but basically, you're just trying to go here without me having f6. Yeah. Ah, so this is actually where my idea could work, right? Something knight like. Knight d4. Or knight g7, or basically yes. any move. Yes. But most of them will run into knight e7 check. Mm. Maybe all of them even. That's a big problem, right? Yeah. So let's just, let's just look at that. So basically, your idea is rook here and then give some kind of a perpetual. Okay. So and so you're closing that. And then after king of eight, you're lucky to have uh, rook h4, knight of three check, right? Yeah, can I just ask you, like, I know this is mm -hmm. not going to work, but just for fun. Okay. I don't know, there's no there's no chance for, like, these pawns to actually run, is there? It's, it's like my knights are actually kind of supporting them. Yeah, but there is no chance for Ding to play it. But hold on, let's just take a look. Yeah. I mean, are you going to mate me? Is that like... No, no, I guess I just go bishop g5, and that's how I stop this thing normally. Like bishop g5, c3, rook b4 or something. Mm -hmm. I can also play bishop f6 and checkmate you, by the way, just in case. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, guess, I guess here the two knights are still inferior to the rook and the bishop, yeah? Can't yeah, the knights are normally bad help for... Yeah, uh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, we tried. Yeah. Um, 97, so your point is if I go here. No, there was no point here exactly. Rook h4, knight f3 works. Oh, okay. Yeah, he played 94. He played 94. Ah, interesting. Which is correct. No, no, this is very professional. I mean, okay, you don't need to like check. So let's say after yeah. 92, I mm -hmm. mean, it could be that let's say you calculate rook g4, then mm -hmm. some bishop c3 happens instead, mm. which is also annoying. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to calculate some knight b3, then some bishop takes g7, will be back or something. I mean, you just don't need this. S three against two, you're not supposed to lose. Mm -hmm. And uh, But at the same time, I mean, again, p p playing rook a8 was probably uh, a little bit more ambitious. Now mm -hmm. he will have to 
defend for a little while. Yeah. At the same time, I mean, he has a free day tomorrow. You know. Yeah. As long as he doesn't lose, I don't think it matters much. Okay. They are, at least one of them has now made the time control. Now oh. both of them have. Okay, G6. So he's just feeling like this position is, should not be too hard to defend. But yeah, I mean, I guess if I'm Jan and still with the knights on the board, you can play this, right? I mean, you yeah. go knight e3. No, I mean, also, knights off, it's a dead draw, of course. But uh, yeah, with knights, I mean, okay, it actually requires some, uh, you know, some precision yeah. from black. I mean, Jan is thinking, but obviously he's, he's not going to be going, like, I don't know, for some knight trade here. No, it's knight e3 or knight h4. I personally uh. bet on knight e3, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that's what Ding is going to be defending. I don't know. Um, how okay. easy of a draw do you think this is going to be? I think objectively very easy. But. Um, so he's just going to. But yeah, but this is but definitely it's gonna take forever. Yeah, and now she he's shaking his head. This is typical Jan. Like you 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 got a good position out of literally nowhere. Right. And then you pretend that you're disappointed happy, that right. you are not straight winning. Yeah, yeah. yeah th this is amazing. Like you had exactly nothing. Uh, okay. This is funny. I yeah. mean I saw it so many times, but I mean it you know, it breaks me every single time. Yeah, so he's gonna be going, I guess, King G seven. Okay, you can play literally in Maybe you put the knight here. I mean, almost any legal move. Yeah, yeah. king g7. Okay. 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 So for white to improve this. Mm -hmm. Let's actually uh, forget about white for the moment. I have a serious question. Yeah. So should we actually order some pizza or something? Uh, Do you think we're going to be here for that long? Um, I mean. Well, you still got those three shrimps to eat. Yeah. Uh, sure. I no, think, but I think this can. But some uh, delivery, yeah, with your uh, delivery, plans. Uh, delivery on air would be cool, no? Uh, you know. Yeah. Oh, haha! -ha. Break. What's your favorite pizza? Yeah, that's an important question. Let's talk uh, about that. Some salami, maybe, or something. No, no. Look at the guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was so good for him, and now, yeah, yeah, yeah. such a disaster. <laughs> Indeed. I mean, you know. So I, you think Jan I, I, I'm not sure yeah, how he will survive getting three against two against three against three. I mean, yes, indeed. He's a bit dramatic. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's no, I mean, it's funny because like it makes no, no sense, right? I mean, you just, I mean, you played all the moves as, uh, starting from queen takes a4 yeah. to basically make it safe and kind of force a draw. Mm -hmm. And like if you're super lucky, then you get something like this. And then you are super lucky and you're still disappointed. Okay. I'm not buying this, but uh, yeah, sure. All right, guys. Well, we made the time control. We got to settle in for a long end game as Jan will try to nurse this extra pawn he has on the king side. So we're going to go on our break and maybe order some pizza, and we'll see you soon. Yep.
Hello everyone, welcome in Astana at the FIDE World Chess Championship match between Yanni Pomnishi and Ding Liren. I'm Katy Tazalashvili and in this video I'm going to show you the trophy of the champion. The trophy is four and a half kilos, silver with beautiful blue stones. It has a unique design inspired by Baiteric Tower, which was built in 1997 when Astana became a capital city of Kazakhstan. The tower is 105 meters tall and resembles the shape of the chess queen, which is a suitable symbol for the trophy of the FIDE World Chess Championship. Besides this beautiful trophy, there is a stake of 2 million euros for the players from which the winner will get 60% of out of it and the runner-upper will get 40%. Hello everyone, welcome in Astana at the FIDE World Chess Championship.
Hey guys, we are back with a ninth game coverage and we are in the middle of the most interesting end game in the world. You don't want to miss this. Did that sound convincing, Daniil? Did you buy that? Yeah. Good. All right. So yeah, in fact, Ding is showing a bit of a sense of humor here um, in playing this move knight g3, which of course he didn't have to do, but um, it's amusing because of course he knows that Jan is not going to be taking that knight and going for the rook end game, which would basically end White's dreams of winning this game. Right. Um, so what can we expect White to do? You said the point here is that if he goes king h2, there's knight e4. Yeah, it's, it's probably a bit too strong to, to call it the point. The point, yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean at we least... We can have a repetition like Yeah, that. yeah, but at least you can pretend that, you know, you're doing something there. Yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. if you want, you can go like f3. He actually, okay, he made a move. There Which is go. rook a7, I guess, rook b7. Rook b7. Okay. Yeah, so Jan kind of finds some, s oh, you know what we should do? We should go back at all the cool moments that have come up in this game so far. Sure. Because there were, were plenty of them. Sure. So which one do you want to, to All start right. with? Let me, uh. let me show you how well I remembered one of the lines that we looked at. Yep. Okay. I, now, I first have to remember which line that was. Yeah. Which line was that? Um, we go back somewhere. I think it was move 22, knight takes f8. Was it here? So it was knight takes f8. Um, okay. Well, here was, it was not this one. Okay. Then right. you then you had bishop c4 instead of knight takes f8. Yeah, no, that wasn't it. Uh, but okay. I mean, I told you. <laughs> I wouldn't even remember the first line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no way. I mean. It's no, uh, I will. I will remember that line okay. once we get there. Hold on. Okay. So first of all, yeah, this was definitely one of the most exciting points of the game when. Oh, Ding actually. Sorry for oh, interrupting, wow. but he actually does play knight f5. It's really funny because I asked Daniil on the break if I think there's any chance that Ding is going to want to go for this. Rook end game. I mean, it's obviously a big change in the position, and he says um, that he doesn't mind this transition. Yeah. Uh, which is interesting. I mean, yeah, like it should still be a draw, I guess. That he no, just it's probably an easy draw even, but. Um, but Jan says no to that very quickly. Okay. Also makes sense. So I guess what does Jan want? He wants g3, h4. No, he basically wants to play forever. I mean, you know, if you take on f5 and the guy knows how to hold this. Yeah, it's easier for him. Yeah, then you can look like an idiot. He will literally spend uh, like five seconds for mm -hmm. a move and uh, mm -hmm. you'll never get to, to push him. And this way, okay, you don't really have ideas. But, uh, I mean, you have the knight. The knight is jumping. Yeah, and I mean, uh, the knight, can, you can always, like, if you want, you can always bring it around to h2, yeah, yeah. and then f3, and then g5, and like. Yeah. And the, here's the thing, you know what I'm curious about? What do you think about this other transformation that black could offer like that? Is that like a bad one? Uh, I think it's a draw, first of all. Secondly. But it's not what you would play. Hmm, I'm not sure. I guess, in general, as black, I would probably. Uh, I would probably just wait for quite some time. And then at least I would want white to show me the pawn setup. Yeah. And then we'll see. Like this thing, like rook e7, it won't go away, most probably. Do you think maybe I actually just want to stop you from going with this plan and maybe like make sure we get a pawn trade? Yeah, but this probably start? loses already, no? Or at least it's very close. So rook b5, mm -hmm. king g6, knight e5 check, mm -hmm. knight takes f7. Mm. This doesn't, I mean. Yeah, no matter where I go, I kind of like blundered into this, yeah? Yeah, probably. I mean, yeah. again, it could be that you go king f6, knight takes f7, then you have some lucky, I don't know, knight d4. But then I have rook b7, and then you attack f2 somehow. But in general, this is not how you. Yeah, like also, ha yeah, this uh, is not how you go around uh, trying to draw these uh, positions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. OK, so pushing the pawn is a little bit, well, I'm asking you in principle. Like, forget about rook b5 immediately. In principle, if like I could have this, would, oh, look at that. Ding <laughs> is like, it's amazing. He makes all these huge decisions of the peace trades so easily. He's okay. like feeling very confident that the knight end game is not an issue. And of course, if it's not, then I completely agree that getting this rook off of the seventh rank is a good idea. 
Yeah, but what do you call an issue? I mean, you <laughs> I mean, you don't lose this in three moves anyway. Rook e7 is a is a sign of confidence mm -hmm. or uh, a sign of lack of education. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the two. I think in general it's kind of easier to wait for quite some time and uh, you know at the same point what's what's good about rook e7 is that you actually have an hour mm -hmm. and you're pretty sure the knight ending is a draw and the knight ending is actually sort of easier to i mean maybe you, you you'll have to calculate a couple of times and calculate mm -hmm. well but in general the number of resources is limited and you are saying uh, you know what i'm not going to let you torture me for for an hour with this like stupid rook moves and I will just have to like follow your actions. Mm. Yeah, and this is why Jan goes away. I mean, exactly. So Jan just kind of believes him on that or believes yeah. that this would be a little too easy yeah. for black to hold. So he says no. Okay. And yeah, he just wants to play yeah. the most complicated version of this position that he can. Although I do think that this was a nice uh, gain by Black to get back to seventh rank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, of course, he's not going to be pushing these pawns anymore. And so now I think Black can just sort of sit, right? And yeah. I don't know, go knight d4, knight f5. What else can he do? White can try to one day, I don't know, like... like what? I, um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the dream, right? Yeah, yeah, but this will try to, this will try to prevent him. I mean, maybe if you want to be super straightforward as black, mm -hmm. maybe you actually go rook e1 check, king h2, rook e2. Mm -hmm. And then you, j you just wait like this and you say, you know, knight h6 is a threat, by the way. Uh huh. That's actually at least a very concrete idea. Yeah. You want to trade the knights to make things easier. Yeah. And I can't. I can't do that for, let's say, this reason. Yeah, can't is a bit too strong, but yeah. Kind of, right? Because I lose this pawn, yeah. Um, no, we don't really want that. So yeah. I actually kind of like this approach that you're offering here. Rookie one, and then latch on to this pawn, Yeah. and threaten the nitrate. I mean, because that gives us chances of still having an early dinner. Yeah. Uh. So basically, the rules of the of the sending are such that, like a knight, a knight trade is basically a straight draw. Mm -hmm. If we trade rooks, uh, they'll still keep playing. Yeah, uh, they will still keep playing. Black will have to be a little bit precise, but in general, uh, I mean, as long as you can calculate a couple of lines, it's not a big deal. Do you actually and see a way to avoid the night trade? I'm sorry to interrupt. No, I'm not sure. I mean, it was me who uh, came up with this. No, I don't know. Probably not. Like even well, you mm -hmm. can play rook b7, right? But uh, rook b7. Yeah, but then oh, I then, see. then at least we have rook e7, which we just had. Uh, but secondly, then you go rookie, yeah. yeah. But secondly, I guess as black, we actually now we actually kind of become ambitious in terms of holding this, and we just play I don't know knight d4. Or knight d6 yeah. and knight f5 back. So this is basically the only move that stops knight h6, because then we can trade and win that pawn. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. So, OK, that's a good point. So then you're. So mm -hmm. given that, you can actually even try a rookie one check, king h2, knight h6, as like the cleanest really? attempt. Like that. Ah, but then I allow knight is three, king g three, right? Mm -hmm. I thought there is no no move after yeah, rook two, but there is. is this, yeah. yeah. Then what I did is insanely stupid, but the position is of course still draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no, I, I like rookie one, rookie two. Rookie two, and okay. then the rook will come back, and if I come back, then maybe you come back, yeah. and it just goes on and on. Yeah, yeah. I think in general it's a. Uh, Sometimes it's not an ideal strategy when you're defending to always rely on these things like rookie one, rookie two. Mm -hmm. As in general, normally white will have a way to kind of avoid the, the trades. Mm -hmm. And then you basically invest time in uh, calculating something and you could just be waiting instead. Yeah, but I think Ding is going for your idea. Yeah, rookie one. I mean, okay, he will get his, uh, he'll get his rook b7. King here. Rook e2, let's yeah. say, and rook b7. And what else can we come up with for black here? 
No, I guess is we there can. anything tricky? No, but well. No, we can just come up with a pass. What's like a pass like knight d4. Let's say the, let's say knight d6. Knight d6. Remove knight f5. Mm -hmm. Like and, uh, and you want to sit on this yeah. position, and you're like you can't move the knight. Mm -hmm. You don't really have a way to move the king. Yeah. In that case. Um, but then at the end of the day, some g3 will work exactly magically, right? and mm -hmm. you will still be you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I kind of tried it, and you know. Oh yeah, and they're playing yeah. into this line like immediately. Yeah. Yep. So here we go. This is the current position on the yeah. board. And so Jan normally is this kind of strategy with, uh, you know, trying to uh, force things when you're defending this kind of position. I mean, it's normally not uh, not ideal. It kind of makes sense if you play quickly, but in general, like emotionally, you don't need to really believe that you're about to finish this game mm. within 10 minutes. It normally, uh, it normally doesn't happen. Yeah, it's a little unpleasant, I mean, psychologically for Ding, I feel like. Well, first of all, we do want to point out that he didn't really have to find himself in this end game at all, right? So yeah. one of the key moments along the way was, let's see if I can find it. It was we had somewhere around we here. We had too yeah. many, yeah, we had too many. We had a lot of moments, but yeah. one of them was here, and he made the sort of uh, decision of taking the pawn, even when we were watching without having checked the computer, we weren't like super enthused by that decision just because we thought black had so many other options. Yeah. And so we liked rook a8, which was indeed possible. Um, also knight d7 was interesting. Yeah. You even mentioned like rook b1. And all of them were just 0, 0, 0. Yeah. yeah. So, this, so he, he went for this rook takes c3, and there was this line, which of course, you know, it's very plausible for black. It's not like this was bad at all. But I mean, I, I'm just saying like, he could have even just kept the game going for any result with like this move. It wasn't like it, the game was a dead draw at this point, right, yeah. Daniel? But it's not that it's White who is necessarily pressing. It's, yeah. ju it's just a game of chess where, I mean, both sides have, you know. Yeah, now Ding is upset, look at this. That's what I'm saying, basically. Like, if you believe in this rookie one, rookie two too much, yeah. then, I mean, somehow you can be a little bit overexcited about it emotionally and you know. So he went for this and then there yeah. was another kind of crazy critical point um, at this point, right? So this is where he went for this pawn down position, yeah. like giving up the pawn like that. But he could have played right d2. Now we were yeah. definitely worried about this move and here the computer showed an amazing solution. So you were showing us ideas, Daniel, where this like rook comes to e1, yeah, but, but we weren't I, quite yeah. sure how to do it. Yeah, I mean, we clearly failed to you know, come up And look at this, guys. I mean, this is such an amazing move. Uh, could have ended his suffering, but he would have had to go into something pretty crazy. I mean, obviously, the point is like you're opening up an attack on the bishop, trying to get to this square. But who would allow this to happen, especially when you can't even go there because of bishop uh, d6? So you have to walk into a discovered check. Yeah. And apparently, this position is a draw. Yeah, I mean, I do think that's a big ask of the player to allow something like this. It's pretty much insane, right? Yeah. Who, who, who would see this? Yeah, it also doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, even if you see it, mm -hmm. I mean, compared to some 3-3 against 2, there has to be a limit to, one, to one's confidence, right? Uh, you know. Yeah, like right now the bishop is hanging. He still can't take the knight. And the problem is when we try to like mate you from this side, at this point you just take the bishop. Yeah. And then even though you get the fork, you lose the rook, and okay, here white loses. Mm -hmm. So basically the game um, so bishop would end takes in a draw. A, yeah, bishop takes a four, let's show this. Once we started, let's show yeah, the, let's the perpetual. Yeah, let's show the perpetual. So it's the famous rook and knight. Yeah. You can go from here if you'd like. Too bad there's no black pawn in h4 anymore. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't get that checkmate, guys, because the king escapes, so it's going to be a draw. So that was um, one really, really fancy way that Ding could have avoided losing the pawn at this point. But yeah, I mean, after knight d2, this, he really would have needed to find this move, right? I think that was the only move that was yeah. like, equalizing and for that, sure. And also bishop c3 that we mentioned instead of rook g4 mm -hmm. is also possible 
and black has to play knight b3, rook g4, knight to d4. And then it is also three against mm. two, but it's just that black is, uh, is in time to trade all the minor pieces. It's a much better three against two. Yeah, which kind of makes uh, th the task easier. Yeah. But still, you know. Okay, yeah, here then um, we would know exactly how this game would finish. Yeah. Okay, so that was one of the key points. Now let's go back a little bit earlier in this game. There were some other really interesting points. All uh, right, so rook takes b2, knight takes f8. And so here Ding took quickly back with the rook. And he had this move rook to d3. Yeah, and he also had knight b3, I guess. Yeah, knight b3, we talked about that. But this one, the idea, I think that it was rook e3, right? Well, I think the main line was bishop e3. And after rook e3, rook d2, d2 is, uh, okay. e is an issue. So it was this. And, and then black was playing some completely random moves, right? Like what? Like knight b3? Like knight b3. Yeah. But the lines you wanted to I think it was show were yeah. actually with a knight on h7. Uh-huh. Okay. So, so I think it was like bishop c1 and so Yeah, well, there was one thing I wanted to show here, which was that after bishop here, knight here, yeah. here. OK, so this was. This was a, apparently a bit of a mistake from Ding, rook b5, and this was cool move rook c2. Yeah, not the most obvious, although of course you do want to keep your rook on this active position on the second rank. First of all, I mean, I guess you have to see that like on queen d1, you know, I guess you're escaping. Your, yeah, your there, rook is not trapped. There has to be an explanation to that at least. Mm -hmm. And the big point of this is uh, this awesome idea. When they pin you, right? We often wanted to sacrifice the this rook, but instead we go and sacrifice that rook. Yeah. And the reason all of this works like so beautifully for black is because at the end of all of this, right? Let's say knight of fate, this rook is still here attacking the bishop, so this rook cannot move away. Yeah. A white's attack is done if he takes the knight. I mean, then black's pawns are just too strong. Yeah. So that was really cool. And instead of that, he went rook back. And then, of course, these exchange sacks, they don't work the same because you know even if you do go there, I mean, eventually this rook can just move. Correct. Yeah, so, so Ding kind of had a chance, I guess, to have um, to fight for more of the initiative in, in this part of the game. Yeah. He played very Actually, if you're enjoying moves. this, yeah. uh, feel free to record the recap. Yeah, I mean, I'll be happy, uh, you know. <laughs> No, Daniil, uh, I know you got that appointment at 9 o'clock every day. I wouldn't want to deprive you of that. Okay. Okay, this one could, you and know. And also all your fans on YouTube, right? I mean, I don't think they, they would forgive me for that. This one could be later. We can press record. Yeah, it's a joint recap. Okay. That'd be pretty funny. Yeah, this is funny. But we will not do that. As I normally, uh, like, analyze stuff be before saying things, but yeah. I yeah. Don't know. So Ding is still Ding, is, and you don't want to analyze with this engine. You want your special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Computer no, engine. Uh, yeah, yeah, but it's not that I'm showing off. I mean, believe me, people, the the difference is massive, and especially I mean in this, uh, I mean Bishop G5, Bishop C1, all mm -hmm, that stuff. Mm -hmm. The the Lichter Stockfish evaluation was jumping, so uh, it is clear that the the position is uh, very sharp even for even for engines. So yeah, I guess I'll, you know, have to look at it and then I'll record it at night, but finally people will find out what my name is or something from here. Yeah, I mean, I think in this position, um, like, first of all, like, you'll have to really spend some time, right, like figuring out like all these options that Black had, because the computer is not gonna be able to just give you a printout in like a few seconds, right, of these moves. Sure. Like rook d3. It would have been exciting, but yeah, Ding just kept it kind of simple. He took this knight, and then when uh, it was time to move the rook, he went also to kind of like maybe the more obvious square. And so it still was fine for him to be uh, not really having any problems. And the computer didn't really love Nepo's uh, queen e2. Well, the computer actually wanted bishop takes b5, I guess. Really? Yeah. Right here. I think we looked at it, no? No, I don't, I, I don't remember seeing that. Really, taking that? 
I thought he wanted to, I don't know, like here, like there was maybe some other move. Yeah, but there was some taken on b5. I mean, how else you can? Yeah, there was like knight f5. No, really? You think he wanted to take? Let's see. Yeah, one of the moves, oh, yeah. One of the moves is actually yeah. taking. OK, yeah. but that's OK. That's a hard one, I think. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like to go for. When you let it run, it could, yeah. be, it could be that black is completely fine. Both we had this mm -hmm. feeling, right? Yes. Yeah, so um, this is why I just I don't want to jump, jump with conclusions. Sort right. Of, yeah. yeah, it's kind of too complicated Yeah, to um, figure it out in a few seconds with this engine. So he took, took, and then played queen e2. Uh, no, he went to knight f5, c5, yeah, so stopping the knight from getting in. And queen e2. So fr from now on, actually, both played yeah. re reasonably, kind of. Mm -hmm. Both played very well. And queen c6 was also one move out of many that he could do. It was by no means forced. Yeah. We looked at like knight f6 here, that was possible. Yeah. Still, it's, it's okay. Yeah, so queen c6 was okay, but I think. Ultimately, this, this decision kind of disappointed me a bit. Yeah, but he first of all blundered rook a4. And secondly... Uh, blundered rook a4 in what sense? What do you mean? Oh, oh, in mean the very end, I mean, yeah. he, yeah, he didn't realize he's actually slightly worse. Yeah, Which, in my opinion, is kind of obvious for mm -hmm. ra Russian schoolboys, kind mm -hmm. of, that it could be the case. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, again, he says just his own way. Yeah, and because he felt some pressure from that rook coming down here. Yeah. Then he was like, it's time to bail out, just make a draw. But unfortunately, there's still knights on the board in this position. Yeah. Well, which doesn't make it lost or something, right? He's actually, he's actually spending time, right? He's thinking for like 15 to 20 minutes by now, I guess. Yeah, and the players are going to get increment, they actually have to get to move 60 first, which I don't think is a problem, given how much time they have. Yeah. Um, and they start getting an increment after move 60. Yeah. And yeah, we'll very likely. Oh, where are we? We're right here. Mm -hmm. We'll very likely get to move 60. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I must say, um, maybe it's about my weird taste. But actually, today, in my opinion, mm -hmm. they played well. I mean, given given how sharp the position was, yeah. Well, it was not uh, it was not like rook d three lights out or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's even sharp for for the engine. And yeah. I I don't think we had this like plus two plus three at any point, right? Right. So uh, I mean, at least I mean, at least given what we what we've seen for the moment. So mm. yeah, I think they played kind of reasonably. And, um, well, rook b8 was a bit disappointing, I must say. Rook b8, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Early on in the opening, yeah. We yeah. talked about that. We talked about that a lot when it happened. Yeah. And I'll just show the viewers who are tuning in. It was right here. We felt like, you know, Nep okay, he played this very interesting and unusual idea that's been seen in correspondence games. It's like queen to c7. Um, yeah, not intuitive at all, but approved, I guess, by the computer. And Nepo answered with bishop a2, allowing b5 to happen. So that seemed like things were going nicely for black. And here we were just so surprised that he decided to spend a whole tempo on protecting the pawn when the pawn could just be given away with bishop f8. Right. And the knight coming to c5, a move quicker. Yeah. And taking this pawn just was not even uh, a starting conversation because, uh, <laughs> I mean, black would get so much play instantly, right? So we were just very surprised that he slowed his play down uh, with the move rook b8, although ultimately that rook wound up coming to b2, but still, I was very yeah, surprised by that. And then he went for this, but then Nepo has an extra move to get that like initiative in. Yeah. He went for a pretty concrete approach. I mean. Again, you know, um, yeah, I mean, it's a good solution in a position that is looking uh, kind of dangerous for him already. He allowed this capture, went in for this, and this was certainly the wild part of the game. But then actually, given the way he played, he was kind of, kind of consistent, right? I mean, there is some logic in it. You go rook b8, you go b takes a4, mm -hmm. you take b2. Yeah. I mean, 
It's consistent. It's, it, I mean, he, 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 he let White get a lot of progress in on the king side, a lot of ideas, right? Yeah, but he, I mean, he wants a bit of pawn. So the knight came there. OK, finally improved himself. Nepo went with knight g6, which, I don't know, it seemed like an obvious move to us. But there were actually, I guess, a lot of other ideas as well, including bishop g5. Yeah, bishop g5, I think we've been mentioning. Yeah, we uh, mentioned but, uh, that one. But we didn't, we didn't go into depth so much in this position. And so he went knight g6. It made a lot of sense. And um, after rook b2, that's when we really felt like the game was at its peak interest mo uh, point. Yeah. But unfortunately, yeah, it got a little bit less interesting when Ding went for the standard rook takes f8. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. And it's, it's not even rook takes f8 it itself. It's, it's a speed of it, kind mm. of. I mean, it's very disappointing that he didn't even. I mean, maybe he saw, uh, he saw things. And uh, he just decided in advance that he will take instantly, as he doesn't want to, to invest time. But Black had uh, very interesting alternatives here. Mm -hmm. And Ding played rook takes a fate pretty much instantly. Yeah, it's interesting because, I mean, of course, when a piece gets captured, the instinct is to recapture it. And it's not, it's not easy to just invest a lot of time yeah. into these crazy lines. And, like, and then you don't know that this is actually a critical moment. And you think this is like, well, this is not so bad. So I mean, it's, it's yeah. understandable. Yeah. yeah, but rook d3 could also be good. Yeah. I mean, when you start the game by playing rook b8, b takes a4, rook takes b2, I mean, no more obvious decisions for you, right? Mm. So yeah, I don't know. You feel like you're signing up for like a very concrete game. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. And then he went kind of like more general with this. Take which, back. Yeah, which could be correct. Once again, I'm saying it's just uh, the speed that was disappointing. Mm -hmm. it, it just felt like he did not even consider the, the alternatives for you. Yeah, and it's funny because uh, when we were talking about it, I mean, I think when we got around here, like that was the first thing that you started considering is the alternatives, right? Yeah. Like you, you, we, you didn't even really want to look, look at taking the knight. Yeah. Um, when, when we realized there was, like, first you suggested this move. Yeah. Which also is extremely attractive and is close to working. But I guess maybe the computer ultimately liked that second yeah. thought that you had. Which we mentioned too. Yeah. I mean, it's either. It's easier to be sitting here, I must say, and uh, coming up with random ideas and playing the moves in the World Championship match. Yeah. As this should be mentioned too, right? So, uh, yeah. Well, he took back, and then Bishop G5 also, I think this, this one maybe was not the computer's very favorite move, Bishop G5. Um, OK, there were a lot of alternatives here for white. Yeah, but again, when you're saying computers, you basically mean the <laughs> Yeah. L Liches, Stockfish 14. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. Um, interesting idea. Look at this queen e3 option that he could have done. Actually, are we threatening to come in with this? Or Probably. Not? I don't know. Yeah, because on that, we still have a bishop that can take it. Well, Arena, watch out. I feel like you are getting addicted quickly to using an engine. Uh, no, just uh, because I have it broadcast. on for you know 30 seconds while we're basically doing our recap of the game, mm -hmm. I don't think. I don't think it's going to make me addicted. Because the thing is, I really enjoy analyzing without the engine. Like, yeah. I will always vote against the engine. OK, cool. And me too, that actually. only makes me happy. Yeah. And when Vichy uh, you know, suggested that that was like his preference, I was like, great. You yeah. know? I mean, we didn't, even, we, don't, um, we didn't even have like an engine bar. I see there is like something here that resembles an engine bar. <laughs> you know, that we don't really look at that much either. But yeah, yeah I think the best part is actually uh, analyzing without the engine, but when you do a review, you know, it's nice. Yeah. I think that's the stage that we're in. The game is kind of, this part of the game is over, so. Ah, Grandmaster Dennis Boros, who I re recently saw in St. Louis, um, said, good match, one of the best of recent years. Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, look, the average chess fan, if they don't want to be, t um, if they're not like the very contradictory type, yeah. They will have that feeling, you know, that this is a great match. Yeah, you're being polite. I like that. Yeah, I agree. It has to be exciting to to watch so many decided games. Actually, yeah. we're we're about to see two draws in a row. I mean, there is a fair chance that we'll see two draws in a row. Uh, but it doesn't even feel like we're really we, seeing draws. That's yeah, which is like sensational yeah. by the standards of this match. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, even like even though the official results may be draws, it doesn't feel like that's what we've been witnessing as we've been analyzing the game because the game's just um, 
yeah, they, they developed, both of these games have developed in such interesting directions. Yeah. So look at this move, queen e3. Nepo, he actually played bishop g5, I feel like, pretty quickly, right? But yeah. um, I don't think he even gave us really time to, to, figure, uh, out, to figure out anything, and then we just kind of kept going. Queen e3 with this idea of queen g5 would have been pretty interesting. And yeah, forgive us guys that we're not talking about the live board because, uh, you know, it's just been a bit of shuffling around with a rook and a king there. But the game is actually going. I feel like Jan has some fair 20% for winning. Yeah. Actually. No, I agree. I mean, as long as the knights are on the board, we're going to be here. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, uh, I, I'm talking to, uh, to the rest of the people mostly. So um, don't think if we... If we've been ignoring it for, for for the time being, that we think it's 100% draw. Yep. Not necessarily. It's just that, uh, like the as the game will proceed slowly, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, we'll have for we'll have to wait for Jan to kind of like activate his king and um, probably uh, push some of the pawns, and then we will be uh, uh, back to it, watching it closely. Mm -hmm. But next 10 to 15 moves, I think, will be very much shuffling around. Yeah, I mean until White. Pushes his pawns. I mean, I, okay, we'll come, we'll come back to that in a few minutes. But I mean, this move, queen e3, it's you're attacking the knight, you're threatening queen g5, and if indeed black has to play this move, which looks so not like the kind of move you want to play. Here, exactly, I want to play it though. You really do? I, I mean, mean, if you don't take h6, then yes. Yeah, so. And now. All right, uh, what's going on here yeah, strategically? Queen, yeah, queen b6 is a trade. Ah, uh, you're forcing it because, yeah. because of that. And then yeah. we'll, we'll have one of the weirdest endings I've seen, actually. Yeah, it's, it's lucky for you that you got this trade, huh? Yeah, but then there is bishop e6, right? I mean, is this, like, engine's lines is cool. So bishop right, c4, here. so bishop c4, it wants bishop e6. Wow, Takes like completely F, yeah. ruining the pawn structure for black. I mean, but I guess you're getting the f5 square back. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah, it's already ruined, right? Yeah. So what is this position? Okay, let me just turn off the engine so I don't see. <laughs> what okay. what so is now, this? Okay, so now you uh, you don't have the line, but you have numbers, yeah? I mean, ah, okay. Uh, okay, this is I much better, of course. Yeah. Okay, well, it's, yeah. But you can refresh the page, and then it will go away. Ah, that's how it works. Yeah. yeah you're our computer expert, that's for sure. Mm, um, not with Lichia, so, but yeah, a little bit. All right, so I know how to make the engine disappear, at least, yes. Yeah, we got five versus five, and you're tr tr well. You're trying to win this pawn and just be clearly better. Yeah. So in terms of how black, well, first of all, if I were black here, I wouldn't feel great with this ugly pawn structure. Mm hmm Yeah. Right. I don't know. I mean, point seven is uh, not a pleasant evaluation for black either, but it certainly doesn't feel great. I guess we need to defend this guy. Yeah, you go rook eight. I mean, I don't see why it's this bad. You're, well, you're not losing the pawn is the point. Yeah, you're kind of like somehow. Yeah, I think you even go rook b to a6, and then you go 97, and you wanted to go forward, actually. Mm. And maybe use the fact that this knight is still far away. Yeah. Hmm. I'll share you an interesting thing, actually, yeah. which helps to fight uh, when you have this bad pawn structure. Mm -hmm. Like here it looks horrible, mm -hmm. but I mean, h having some, uh, some position like this, I normally say to myself, all right, my pawn structure is horrible, but let's imagine I don't have the pawn on e5. Then okay, I'm just one pawn down, I'll play knight d7, knight b6, knight mm -hmm. c5 or something. I mean, mm. it, it doesn't look like I have to resign right. at all. And then, and then I actually come back and I'm like, wow, and I actually have a, an extra pawn compared to that. And I mean, it kind of helps to live with it. All like right. indeed, your pawn structure is uh, like bad, but most probably you'll lose one of the pawns, and then it will be okay. <laughs> and know? if I take this pawn, and basically I'm p sacrificing a piece. Yeah, then I guess we take uh, we take on h two, or oh, on a two, sorry, and um, sack. Okay, so yeah. you got two pieces for the rook. Okay, so the reason you sacked, by the way, is because you were like afraid of some stuff happening here? No, I think it's that after knight h7, knight h5, I need to have f6 very much. Ah. Or knight e6. Yeah. One of those. 
Basically, you need to get rid of my attacking bishop. Still, still, I must say, from far away, it looks scary. I mean, rook e3, rook g3 is coming. Mm -hmm. I can very well understand someone who, who would expect this to be bad for black. Yeah, like knight e6. Yeah. I guess we are somehow holding it together. For the moment, yes. Yeah. Fortunately, you can't get like your knight here. Yeah, but rook takes a4. I mean, it's not that we are like a bunch of material up is black. Yeah, you have a rook and pawn for the two pieces. Yeah. Looks scary, actually. Maybe we, maybe we misplayed it as black, or maybe not. Chess is not the, the easiest game in the world, unfortunately, or fortunately. Hmm. Depending like on I the way. Uh, I can't really move this rook. No, you can move it to f7. Don't know why. But yeah, I mean, I have to say that, that could have been a in really interesting line. I wonder if, I mean, if Jan thought about this at all. I mean, he played this so, so, so fast. Yeah. But what he did was very logical, right? We liked all the ideas with bishop c1 very much. Mm -hmm. And then he realized he can actually force knight h7 even. Mm -hmm. And um, and it was interesting because I didn't, I didn't really understand. So bishop here, when the knight was there, then there was rook c2. But like, why is there no rook c2 right here? Why don't we try to explore that question? So basically, the only difference is that the knight was going to be on h7. Yeah. What does that have to do with the subtlety? Let's see if we can get this one without an engine. Because you would think that normally having a knight here is actually like better for black, but the computer was kind of saying, no, it's better to have the knight there. Yeah, first of all, it's not that there is necessary an answer. Yeah. Um, this engine could just, could just, you know, be tired. So here. Yeah, so knight b3 was the move there. No, you're describing how we're going to feel in a few hours, Daniel. OK. From some point, I think uh, you will stop regretting this too much. Like, if they will play for, let's say, 90 more minutes, yeah. then I will not be emotionally invested anymore in uh, like rooting for them to finish the game quickly. Mm -hmm. Like, from, from some point. What are you going to root for? I'm not going to root for anything, to be honest. I'll just you know, watch well, it. We, well, we got a lot more interesting themes to cover, like yeah. the kind of music you listen to. Yeah. Yesterday um, on the broadcast, Anish and Tanya and uh, Robert, they were talking about Nicki Minaj songs. OK. Is that someone you listen to? Sue Anish very well, I must say. Uh, no, not me. Yeah. I can't, I couldn't, if you asked me to name a single uh, Nicki Minaj song, I unfortunately would fail at that task. Yeah. I, I'm probably in the same team, yeah. Yeah. OK. But so let me tell you, l l let's talk about that for a second. Mm -hmm. So if there is like some sort of song that you can put on, mm -hmm. that in general, it will always suit you no matter what's going on. Like you will just always enjoy that song. It's not a matter of mood. Like you're always happy to hear it. Mm -hmm. What song would that be for you? Oh, I'm not sure, actually. But it would most probably, I would expect it to be uh, some Russian rap. Unfor Russian rap. Unfortunately, yeah. I'm sorry. But, uh, oh, you like rap music. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry to disappoint. Yes, I do. Good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No, I do see you. Uh, you know, one, one of the, I think I, I think um, one of the words that I was used to describe you in the YouTube chat was gangster. Uh, you got it wrong, but uh, yeah. I mean, you it's don't not feel like it, you it's not that you're only allowed to to listen to the rap music being a gangster. You know. No, no. But I mean, do you feel like that's a little bit? Do you think that word would describe your style at all? Like your approach to chess, to life. I don't know. I mean, you have to ask someone who, who knows me well, and yeah. I don't know. They will come up with an answer. Um, I mean, compared to mm -hmm. Anish, maybe. That is true. But um, you, you know. think you're a little more gangster than Anish? Yes, like much more gangster than Anish. Let's go for it. See, we're getting you to say interesting things. Yeah, I mean, compared now, to. Now, now we can put that as a, make a little clip out of that. No, I mean, but compared to Anish, uh, you are also, I mean, you know, like. <laughs> Am I also a gangster? Yeah, I mean, toughest guy of Brooklyn, you know, I mean, it's, you know, seriously. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we come pretty tough from Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, uh, well, hold on. Look, um, 
I gave you an opportunity to ask me about my favorite music. You, you, okay. you missed it. Come on. Go, go ahead. No, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure, like, when I faced this question, you know, I didn't really want to share its Russian rap at the end of the day, so I just wanted to save you from this. But, I mean, if you want to share, go ahead. Well, Irina, yeah. what is your favorite song? Okay, let me tell you a song that I will always be ready to listen to. Okay, go ahead. Okay. And this, I don't know, this might surprise you a little bit, but honestly, um, you know, like, l let me give you an example. Like, you know the song Dance Monkey? Yes. You know, that's a nice song, and I think it's a matter of mood. Like, I'll enjoy it sometimes, but it's mm -hmm. definitely not something that, like, I'll always want to listen to. Okay. But something that always seems to fit my mood is uh, these two songs by Dr. Dre. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so you're actually against her too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's uh, still DRE. Mm -hmm. And yeah, good what's, one. The, what's the difference? Okay. Yeah, those two, I mean, I don't know. I put them on and. Um, what's well, the difference is actually, I mean, quite a sign of a brilliant taste. Yeah, it's not like it's a very, very famous one. You know, I'll tell you something. One of the comments on YouTube to uh, one of these songs, it's more like uh -huh. 99, 1999, he's like, it's number one. Mm -hmm. Like 2009, it's number one. Like, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. 2023, it's still the best. It's honestly, like, it doesn't mm -hmm. age at all. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes your things get a little old. Like, no, those songs are classic and they mm -hmm. will be good, like, I think, <laughs> I think forever, actually. Okay. But hold on, hold on. I'm no, not done telling you about my music. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll just uh, get people back to reality and then, sure, go ahead. Uh -huh. All right, I'll tell you my, this funny one. So a few days ago, I was thinking about like how, you know, um, this example of the hound, this, uh, the hound is on the scent yep. of the lines. And I was like, I was like, let me take a, let me find a picture of a hound online. Okay. So I found pictures of the dogs, the floppy ears. Okay. <laughs> okay? And then this song came to my mind. I don't know why I, I associated it with the hound dog. Okay. Okay. And it was the song Riding, R Riding Dirty by Chameleon Air. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I started sure. listening to that. Good one too. So that's my, that's my taste in music. I mean, that's at least yeah. part of my taste in music. Yeah. And ha having heard that, people, you can understand how dangerous game chess is. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, you have some weird taste like mine. Or if you're lucky, like Arenas, which is not, uh, you know. Well, you know, I was always, I was kind of into rap music even more before. Okay, I can yeah. imagine. No, I mean, I've always been, but um, like normally people are surprised that you're not listening to like Mozart or, you know. I, you, can, you I can listen to some Mozart, but. Yeah, I can from time to time too, yeah. Sure. But I mean, I guess, I think with rap music, it kind of, if I speak honestly, it's like reflecting my inner energy. Mm hmm okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I kind of share the, the opinion. It's just uh, that I have a feeling we we got a bit too far from the um, from the World Championship match, but the, the conversation is going well. Yeah. So speaking of Jana, actually, by the way, I mean, I'm trying desperately to somehow connect this weird conversation to the match. Uh, so speaking of Jan, I think at some point uh, we played some tournament where actually players were asked to um, to come up with the name of the songs that they would want to. Um, they, they would want to go sort of during the, the, the announcement, like in boxing, let's say, mm. when, when these guys are coming to the, you know, to the ring and stuff. And Jan actually came up with a, sa uh, with a song that I love very much too. He came mm. with this, um, uh, remember the name of Fort Minor. This oh, is actually yeah. very, very famous yes. too. Like equally famous well, who too. Sings, who sings that? That's so famous. Fort Minor. Fort that's Minor, uh, yeah. yeah. Re remember the name is what yes, it's called. Yes, remember that's the name, ah, exactly. That's it, yes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Jan is into it too. Yeah, that's right. That song um, brings back some positive memories as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's, let's okay, I allow us to spend a couple of minutes talking about this position, Daniel, okay, before sure. we get back to more okay. interesting things. Yeah, okay. Um, here we go. So the pawn has moved after a bunch of maneuvering, so King F8. And actually, Ding, not Nepo, is the first one to move a pawn. Wow, so that. Yeah, but this was a very forcing move. Basically, mm. uh, you cannot just re retreat with the knight as there is knight for check. Mm -hmm. we, just, we just win the pawn for, uh, for black. Mm -hmm. So king of three is pretty much a must. And then yeah. after. I mean, also, we should point out that this move just trades the knights, right? Yeah, which was we still consider to be a dead draw. Yeah, even though it's like a position where your king is cut, but I guess... Which is completely big, fine. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter yeah. at all, I guess. Yeah. So king of three was played because of that. And that allows rook e7, which was also played. All right, so king f3. Yeah. 
So rook e7. Now suddenly both white pieces are uh, are attacked, mm -hmm. and you cannot take on e7 as uh, f takes g4 is a check. Oh, that's well, you funny. technically can. You don't lose this, but uh, you don't want mm -hmm. to. So rook a check was kind of forced. Mm -hmm. And now, yeah, it's exactly. Again, rookie eight, yeah. yeah, exactly. And now he managed uh, to. He's forcing a pair of pieces off the board. Indeed, but at the same time, the pawn structure is kind of good for white by the standards of the knight ending. Mm -hmm. Like with a pawn on f7, let's say if we trade rooks, I don't think black plays f5 too often. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. So rook takes e8 is a must. I'm ready to bet. Jan will play it. And then maybe knight takes, right? Mm -hmm. King takes knight, uh, knight e5 looks scary. Then oh, g5. Because you have to, like, you don't have a good way to guard this pawn. Yeah, like g5 is forced, and then we're worried a little. Yeah. I don't know why exactly, actually. But the more you push these pawns forward, yeah. um, the more you push them forward, the more chances maybe you have to lose them. Yeah. So your instinct. At the same time, maybe mm -hmm. we go king e7, e f6, and it's okay. Okay, but like this seems fairly safe for black, right? So yeah, yeah, I thought. Five. Yeah, king g7. I thought we played chicken way. And then king of four. Knight of six, and you can't get in. Yeah, but then I will somehow try to. I mean, it will be a game. Like, I'll go knight f3. Yeah. Or knight, I don't know, d3. Then I'll go king e5. But you know what I'm kind of happy about is that at least with the rooks off the board, like, it feel like it narrows, like, how long this, uh, this can take, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, and let's see, Jan, okay, is so he, he ready to make the trade? But actually, maybe yeah. king takes is even wiser. Maybe it kind of makes sense, actually, to to play g6, g5, I start to feel like. It's, I it's interesting what he plays. So king takes. Yeah. You're saying, like, maybe actually you can go for this. Ah, so he did play king takes, like, oh, wow. instantly. instantly. That was the plan. I mean, again, he sees chess his own way. He's like, I'm not losing the pawns, and if you want to... Yeah, yeah, but also he is not even thinking here. Like, if I play this, I'm really scared. I check g4, well, I check h4. Well, I think he was thinking while we were talking about music. OK, very bad of him. Yeah, he wasn't taking part in that discussion with us. Yeah. So but he, he's allowing, for instance, knight e5, g5, king e3, followed by f4. And you want to go king e3? Yeah. Yeah, that's on the board. Jan looks surprised. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, for a change, I think this is quite a, quite a sincere uh, reaction from him. Mm. Like, first of all, it's the speed that is surprising. Mm -hmm. Secondly, after king is 3 mm -hmm. I mean, how do you hold this section? I mean, it's probably a bit early to be panicking like this. But f2, f4, followed by this kind of trade is like the best scenario. Yeah, I that I agree. Like, you're yeah. going to get the fast h pawn, then white you know, has serious chances. So Maybe it's not much anyway. Maybe you bring the knight to g7. So let's say king e7. King e7, we go f4. Let's say king f6. Mm -hmm. mm. I have to admit, I've never studied this particular end game. Yeah, me neither. Let's see. No, I was going to take the knight, but OK, sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But let's say, actually, I play king take g5, exactly. Let's just examine. Mm -hmm, this position. Yeah. So knight f3, king f6, mm -hmm. king e4, king f4. Mm. Well, it has to be a draw. The question is uh, how simple. I would expect it to be not so simple, mm -hmm. to be honest. Yeah, also, like, there's, like, some kind of zugzwang ideas. And, I mean, like, once I get my knight here, you're barely going to be able to move, right? Probably. So let's say I go knight f7, knight d4, I go knight... One of these two? Well, somewhere. Let's say d6. Yeah. So now I can start moving my pawn. Yeah, and then I go king g6. Mm -hmm. So you go, yeah, exactly. You go g3, king f6, h5. It looks insanely close. It's probably just lost. I mean, it looks like we might have just reached that zigzag. Yes. OK. Um, 
so what was what was wrong with that? I mean, where did we go wrong? Was it knight h6 that was required in, instead of knight d6? But knight h6 I what don't want to play. Yeah, let's see, let's see. Uh, we went a couple of moves earlier. You were here, and then, OK, you could try going here. Yeah. H4. Yeah, I'm not sure what the difference is. I mean, you can't move this knight. Yeah, king g6, g3, and king f6, h5. the same type of zugzwang, right? Yeah. Well, it could be that it's still, you know. A draw, like after you lose the pawn. But yeah, but. I mean, only if you get lucky, right? Like yeah, I mean, also, to be honest, I just don't think it's a draw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, let's go back. So, g5, king is 3 Okay. Um, yeah, it, it is a little bit surprising. I have to say that, like, the fact that he didn't take with the knight and to keep the pawns a little closer to home. Um, that does surprise me, right? Because yeah. we generally just know, like, the chess understanding says, like, okay, once the pawns start extending themselves too far, it just gets more dangerous. So then you have to have, like, a very concrete calculation. Yeah. So well, I'm not necessarily. But here, here exactly, it's also that basically whenever you're holding this 3 against 2, mm -hmm. basically G and H versus F is always, like, the, the hardest to hold. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least you want to... I mean, yeah. you you want your pawns to be in the opposition to the uh, to the strongest side, right? Mm -hmm. So same with let's say rookending with a G and F for white versus H for black is mm -hmm. actually the hardest to yeah. to, uh, to defend. It's still a draw, but it's um, the worst. Scenario. Right? Because okay, wh what you're saying is that like right now, white has a realistic chance to trade those pawns and then achieve some kind of imbalance, and that's the best chance for white to win. Yeah, kind of. Mm -hmm. So maybe after king is 3 he has some smart point, which in Ding's case I would expect to be concrete. Like king is 7, f4, and then he may maybe goes king e6, let's say. So you don't think there's any chance like these pawns just keep going? Yeah, I thought about this too. But first of all, I'm really worried about king d4. Mm -hmm. This is also an option, actually. So let's just see what happens when I try to approach the pawns. Yeah, maybe not much happens. I think you just Maybe win. I go, yeah. you think white just wins? So Could be. So king of six is a must, right? Mm -hmm. 97 check. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then something like h4 will happen at some point. Yep, and the pawns yeah, start getting undermined. But mm -hmm. okay, hold on. And also, you, you may want to go here one day. Yeah. But for the moment, I just want to take on g5. I don't know. No, I'm just thinking about knight e4, you know? Yeah, yeah, but then at very least, I just go knight e5 check, knight d3 back. And in general, I force the trade. And then even if it's a draw, it's a start like draw, and I actually don't see why yeah. this is a draw. Show me this one. Oh, you mean like? No, no, knight e5 check simply. Oh, just knight e5, yeah. Yeah, and then knight e5 to g3. You push my king, yeah. You push my king out of position. Yeah. You capture here with like a check. Then I have to go like the yeah. Yeah, but still not this three even. Mm -hmm. You guard that, you start breaking this up. I'm getting a little concerned seeing yeah. these lines. No, no, but I told you. I mean, given the way Ding plays, this is a very bad strategy in general of holding uh, mm -hmm. those. Okay. But we're still going to try to find. So uh, king is three? At the same time, it's only king is 3 that is uh, problematic, right? So basically, if he found something here, so let's say king is 7, mm -hmm. f4. First of all, our line was based on... Uh, Maybe king f6? Yeah, uh, I mean... Oh yeah, uh, our line was based on us taking and blundering this knight. Yeah, 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 but knight f3 is there. And so, so what is the difference? Mm -hmm. There is a move g4, mm -hmm. which exists. Um, now I'm pretty sure... Like whenever we trade on h3, it's actually good for black. It will be just a dead draw. Because white is left with just the h pawn that is not that effective. Yeah. So I guess you take on g4, f takes g4. Mm -hmm. OK, then you do something. And we'll look at this position, something like knight, I don't know, d4 or h4. My guess would be that it's a draw. The question is if it's a simple draw or not. Maybe it is a simple draw, but somehow intuitively it's not. 
But maybe it is, yeah? Just king g6, sort of asking how you can, how you can make progress here. Mm. You're having a hard time bringing that king in. Yeah. And whenever you play something like knight, basically anywhere, then there is knight f5 check followed by knight h4. Mm -hmm. And black will create counterplay against the... Against the, the pawn. Yeah, against the pawn on g2. Yeah, black is walking a fine line, I guess, here. But, um, but I guess you're just making it in time. Yeah. Well, that's what it looks like. G3, knight f5. Yeah. And I'm lucky. Knight f8, king f6, you have this. Yeah, you cannot really get rid of the king protecting the knight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have this wheel, but it doesn't really, mm -hmm. doesn't really help much. Yeah, just go back and forth. And no, no, not like this, actually. You want to go from e5. Yeah. No, no, but here you. Oh, I just messed up. Yeah, you tricked yourself a I little. But yeah, I forgot that there was a check here. Yeah, but king e6 was the move. Yes. After knight d7. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Stay away from the checks. Uh huh. Look at Jan. No, this is quite a picture. Oh yeah. Well, he, you know, he feels like a dramatic kind of guy. Yeah. I mean, this m like that sort of like I'm half asleep pose at the board. No, no. But here exactly it actually makes sense. Here exactly it's um, no. I think he's just he thinking in his head. Yeah, yeah. He's just being himself. He has like 50 minutes mm. to kind to kind of calculate something. Like imagine having an hour to. Like, I don't know, solve some math problem, for instance. I mean, it could be that you just you know, sit on the couch and relax and try to think in your head. So here, exactly, it's not about sport anymore. It's basically uh, the number of pieces is, uh, is small. And um, yeah, there is no rush either. OK, so, so let's try to figure this out a little bit and predict the events. Um, we think white's best try is this king e3, trying to get the trade of the pawns and the past h pawn. Yeah. And then our best try for black has been king e7. Well, but we basically had only one try, right? Yeah, I so think, I think two, yeah. two. We also looked at f4 here. Yeah, but f4 was, uh, well. It was a try that yeah. didn't seem to work. Yeah. OK, king e7. Mm -hmm. And then the point is, OK, you get here at least improving the king on time. Yeah. Then there was 97 check here, too. Mm, yes. Which I kind of saw. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't too worried. Like, first of all, we, we, can, try, uh, we can try attacking the knight. Secondly, mm -hmm. even after king g6, mm -hmm. I don't see uh, how white will make, prog make progress exactly. This one is different. White fail, failed to, to establish his uh, king on a four. Ah, I see. The king yeah. is not as active. And you can't really get him that active because it's, I don't know, it's. Um, it would it take takes time, right? Mm -hmm. you, you basically need king f3, then you need g3, then you need h4. Well, let me actually do it then. Yeah. But then some tactics will work. Like here, for instance, maybe a four check, g takes king h4. Mm. And this one, normally, I'm not supposed to lose. Yeah, takes. I mean, I have king g4. Yeah, my king is way too close. Has to be OK. I mean, has to be dead draw, sort of. Uh, like, OK is the one uh, I'm panicking a little. So king f3. Mm -hmm. So what do you want, some knight d5? All right. Yeah, but then I have knight c4, knight c3. It's just a bit too close. Uh-huh, yeah. Just kind of like... Here. Yeah, then there is knight c3, and we just shake hands. Ah, OK. Yeah, because I was like, shake hands not because it's a knight trade, but because yeah, yeah. it's a knight for pawn trade. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, OK. Um, so we're still feeling like, yeah, this is still in the realm of a draw, I guess, from, yeah. from an our analysis so far. So what is the alternative for Jan, actually? Is it g3? Like, king g3 makes no sense as there is 94 check. Yeah. g4 kind of makes sense strategically. But there's f4, right? No, there is just king e7, I think. g takes king f6. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Buck is just in time, and he's very happy. Yeah, the, these two pawns separated are not really going to be enough to create problems, yeah, for Black. Yeah. 
Then there is King E3 that we like. Mm -hmm. What else is there? There is G3, I guess. Yeah. But G3, King E7, let's say H4, I don't know, King F6. I mm -hmm. think he's in general in black's favor. Like, first of all, it's hard to even force G takes H4. And this is not really going to work so well because of what? King takes E5, I would guess. Yeah, <laughs> OK, that's right. Yeah. All right, so we see him getting a little tired. Yeah. Um, Which is understandable, to be honest. Yeah, so let's see. King E3, King E7. Yeah. And F4, F4. feels like the only reasonable thing to me. Yeah, so king f6. Yeah, it's important to activate that king and not give your king the f4 square, yeah? Yeah. So but then this knight f3, g4 is kind of important. So knight f3, g yeah. takes f4, I actually don't see, I mean, I still don't yeah, see yeah, how. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was like yeah. a, something kind of serious looking for white. Yeah. But you're basically going with this slightly unusual move. Yeah, kind of breaking mm -hmm. most of the principles in a way, right? Because normally yeah. you want to trade pawns when you're yeah. down material. Yeah, exactly. But here you're like, nope, I don't want that pawn trade. Let's go forward. Let's try to get another one. Mm -hmm. And somehow it's uh, more effective. And basically you feel like if I let you, I don't know, trade here. That then it has to be a very simple draw. Mm -hmm. I will just bring the king to like h6 or h5. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I mean, in most of the lines, yeah. you just cannot do much. Right, that makes sense. OK. So So I think you ca take. kind of need to, yeah. Take, we looked at that. So F takes. takes. Maybe knight h2 is kind of interesting here. I don't know. Knight h2. So king f5, mm -hmm. maybe knight f1. But yeah, it does look like a draw, I must say. As we keep looking on it, I kind of, uh, I kind of start to to give up as white. There is also knight f5 check maybe, which yeah, is also. Yeah, but I like king f5. Yeah, and then g3, knight c4, and we go back, right? Yeah, like that. Yeah, actually, let's actually, ah, uh, no, maybe even knight e4. Yeah, knight f1. Knight f1, yeah, you can't go for this one because it's going to be a draw. Yeah. Um, so you go knight f1. Yep. OK, and then I sit. How do you make progress? King d4. Yeah. But then just in terms of ideas, you'll just play knight h5, and you wait mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. This is probably yeah. the cleanest, by the way. Yeah, but then you go anywhere. Might go anywhere, maybe like g6. Yeah, you can go under check even, yeah? Yeah. If you want. Basically, I'm not that yeah. worried. Yeah, yeah. Because I get that pawn in the end. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is probably quite clean. OK. OK, so we're waiting for Jan to, to figure out how he wants to, to do things here. Yeah. Back to rap music. Or I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a feeling this is or some or kind you, of. Or you can pick a subject. Uh, we can take turns. I'm not sure. Let's actually talk about chess movies. There are not too many, mm -hmm. but is there a single one that you like, mm -hmm. or or at least that you don't hate? I don't know. I feel like okay, other than Queen's Gambit, Queen's Gambit. I mean, I enjoyed it. Uh -huh. I, I in general enjoy seeing chess kind of like get the spotlight. Mm -hmm. You know, so it has to be something. I don't know something. I don't even think I'm aware of a bad chess movie. You know, Searching for Bobby Fischer was something that I watched uh -huh. as a kid, and I still think that's a great that's a great uh, kind of like film for kids. Yeah, it is the one with kids. Yeah, it's not the yes, uh, yeah, yeah. It's the kids. Uh -huh. It's like based on uh, the story of Josh Waitzkin. Yeah, his dad wrote this book, and yeah, I watched that. Came out in 1992. Okay. And I watched it um, probably a few times in my life, and I thought that was a great movie about like scholastic chess. Okay. Then there were some Bone sacrifice documentaries. Do yeah, you know, I can't remember. That's the one with b about Bobby Fischer, right? Toby Maguire. Yeah, is, exactly. Is, Spassky Fischer. You know what? I actually don't think I didn't see that one. Okay. I think I might have missed that. Yeah, yeah it's not it's not bad. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, the guy who played um, who played Spassky did very well, I think. Like Spassky is a you believe it all, Lev mm -hmm. Schreiber, I guess is his name. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, yeah, Toby Maguire was Fisher. Yeah, I mean, okay, he he tried his best. It was not bad, I would say. Still, uh, 
I mean, given we are chess players who who know quite a lot about Bobby, I mean, it was hard to buy it sometimes. I think it will be very hard to portray Bobby. Yeah, most I probably. Mean, yeah, it's like he's so, so unique. I don't know who could do that job. Yeah. Even when you see his interviews, like his old interviews from like the 70s, I mean, it's yeah. like, what, you know, you can see that this is a not, not a character that you see every day. Yeah. And given it was Toby, I mean, with all the respect, but Fisher, I mean, I've never s I seen him obviously in my life, but I saw the interviews. I mean, he looks like a giant, right? I mean, he was tall, tall actually. Guy, yeah. Yeah, and stuff. And uh, I mean, Toby, uh, Toby is more like me, sort of. And, uh, you know, mm. um, yeah, he just didn't look. Then there was a documentary on Magnus. I can't remember what, what was that called. Like, was yeah, it's called Magnus, actually. Magnus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For some reason. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember enjoying that. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. That is true. I, you know, it's funny because I can't really remember anything there ex ex except that there was some footage of Magnus as a young kid. There was some of that. Yeah. Um, but I, I, think, I, I think I did like that one. Yeah, I think it was good. No, they, I mean, I think it also had some, I mean, later videos with him, some private ones, actually, mm. from the tournaments and stuff. No, it was good. What else is there? There is one about um, Alekhine, right? Like in Russian, it's called, what is it called? Like uh, White Snow of Russia, if you translate it oh, literally. Interesting. I haven't yeah, yeah. seen that one at all. I haven't even heard about it. Oh, I like it a lot, actually. It was only yesterday, actually, when I met a friend here mm -hmm. who, I mean, somehow we had a discussion, and for some reason, I mean, he told me that uh, this is one of his favorite movies. Oh, OK. And, uh, and it's available, like, in, I, guess, uh, it's, I guess I can find it, yeah, on the internet. Yeah. That's or at very least buy it. If you yes. uh, fail to find it, buy it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also there was a recent one about the Karpov uh, Korshnoi match, which I haven't seen. Oh, yeah. And I have a, I have a very uh, mixed um, you know, emotions about it. Oh, tell us something about that film. Well, the thing is, um, well, the guy who, who plays Karpov is actually mm -hmm. a brilliant guy. I mean, I know him. And he texted me and he asked me to, to help to, to prepare for a role, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I mean, another guy I know played uh, Balashov. And the guy is also brilliant. And they are both, I mean, nice. And they're like my, like almost friends, sort mm -hmm. of. Uh, so we're on really good terms and stuff. And uh, I was really rooting for this. And then, uh, I mean, the Karpov guy, his name, uh, his name is Ivan Yankovsky. And we met a lot. And I, I was actually impressed by, uh, by his dedication, kind of. Mm -hmm. I was actually impressed by, uh, I mean, how, t how hard they're trying, indeed. And he would be interested in all the facts, and he would be interested in, uh, like, the, the movements over the board, let's say. And we would sometimes, even we had meetings where he would literally try to, let's say, push a pawn, and I would say, like, if it looks um, OK or not, mm -hmm. and so on and so on. But then when I saw the movie, you felt like they weren't pushing the pawns in the proper way? I mean, way. I was not, no, no, I was not excited. I mean, the, uh, the point is, basically, in the movie, it's like uh, Karpov, who is like the best guy in the world, and Korshnoi, who is, who is the only evil person. Mm. And then, like, the whole world was actually helping Korshnoi to beat Karpov. Which, I mean, I was not there, but the way I see things is not exactly uh, what it was. Meanwhile, Jan played H4. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, which so is which is by the way we didn't spend a whole lot of time yeah. talking about that because that didn't seem so dangerous giving up that pawn. But I guess he he can always kind of get it. Yeah, like that. But two against one, you kind of only want if uh, you are in time to kind of set some. Is he trying to like do that? I mean, is is it king f four? Yeah, but then we'll normally just go like knight e4 or something. Maybe we try f3 somewhere. So what do you do? Like king e7? Or yeah, king, king I mean, e7? So king e7, knight g6 check is the question. Right. So, so let's say there, you, you there, get this. There. Yes, you get this position. Yeah, so we saw something similar. But here is black. Um, so wiring. Um, mm -hmm. So I have to basically go like this. Yeah. Or you go knight e4 even to, to provoke f3. Mm -hmm. Then you go back mm -hmm. and basically g3 is kind of a must. Mm -hmm. Then you go king e6. Mm -hmm. And then you ask. 
But Jan, yeah, Jan I think played king f4. Jan is actually very optimistic about this. Yeah, you feel that from his yeah, yeah, body yeah. language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. To win three, three against two in the World Championship match would be quite cool, I must say. Well, I, I won uh, that kind yeah, of Yeah, and Dink, and Dink is yeah. now, I mean, look at this, yeah? He's uh. Oh, yes, that head in the hands posture tends to uh, worry us when we see that from Ding. Yeah. But OK, Ding, you, so there's only two pawns left, so let's figure out how to deal with them. No, but it could be a bit too late to, you know. It's actually very forcing, no? Let's go back. So king is seven, once again. Right here. Yeah, knight g6. King, let's say, f6. Mm -hmm. Knight takes h4. Mm -hmm. Then knight e4, f3, knight e6, g3, you will get anyway. Mm -hmm. King e6 is the only move. Yeah. King g5. Mm -hmm. How should we hold this? Or it is not so king you're g5. Saying but I think it is king g5. OK, so like I've had go here. Yeah, and then let's say, um, yeah, I'm not sure. F4, king e4, right? Yeah, I guess I'll go active. And then after king g6, you basically uh, somehow, I don't know, you go like knight c4, and then king f3, which looks crazy scary for black, but I don't know, maybe. But Dink is like so upset. It feels like he's sort of completely sure that he's lost. You really think so? That's no, I mean, I but he's clearly upset. No, this is clearly not uh, not what he wanted, kind of. Yeah, I mean, the body language is kind of concerning. Yeah. That's not how you look when you're confident you're going to make a draw. Yeah, exactly. OK, w what are you saying here for black? How does black play this? Uh, yeah, like knight c4. Yeah. Knight takes f5. Yeah. King f3. Yeah. Yeah, then basically to get your stuff going, you need to bring the king to h4. Yeah, or, or, or you kind of give up one of the pawns, which will normally be a draw. So maybe let's say king g5, yeah, okay. or or like this, yeah, doesn't yeah, matter. Sure. Mm -hmm. So knight g2, you bring the king to h4. Then your next move has to be knight d4 check. Mm -hmm. And it will be, actually. I can probably play like knight e4, mm -hmm. knight d4 check. But yeah, but it's like very, I mean. Yeah. Well, like, okay. I mean, over the board, first of all, you're not sure. From far away, it felt to me like it's a draw. Maybe I go knight f1, not knight e4, actually. Like, maybe I go knight f1. And then after knight, I'm threatening knight g 3 And after knight e4 check, I go knight, yeah, exactly. And then. And you're still, like, holding on? Yeah. But it could be, I mean, knight c6, you bring the knight to e5. I mean, it could be that at some point. Mm -hmm. The fortress. Yeah, this is just, not uh, what you ever, ever <laughs> want to rely on. Yeah? yeah, when you're trying to make a draw, this yeah. is a very bad scenario. Yeah. Wow. But then, I mean, mm -hmm. again, he was kind of uh, he was asking for it, right? I mean, you go king takes e8. Why on earth? But let's try to let's I try kind to defend of, the position uh, here. I, I, I kind of fail to believe it's uh, exactly a loss now. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. So basically, we stepped right into this check, and we let you take the pawn. Perhaps that's not the smartest thing. OK. So what is the smartest thing? Yeah. Well, let's think about that. Well, h3, g takes, followed by something like king g5. It could be that it's a draw. But over the board, you, I mean, certainly suspect that it is lost. Yeah, and the problem is, like, if you go here, you attack the pawn, you try to, like, hold. I mean, there's a lot of problems with that. But basically, it just doesn't seem to have much of a point. Yeah. You're going to lose. I mean, also, uh, 94, 93 kind of, kind of on the lines. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. You're saying, like, just defend. Yeah, and then defend. just take it, yeah. So. OK. So I mean, it could be that it's time now to go h3, 
and then g takes king e7. And then I guess normally with white king on g5, black would lose, but now there is 94 check. Uh-huh. So maybe you're saying black should voluntarily give up this pawn like that. Yeah. But then it's, I mean, then it's ins okay. not Let's insane. Let's that, though. You, you had those ideas, right? Like that maybe the h pawn was not such a big deal to give it to white. Yeah. So I feel like maybe that's it. Yeah, somehow tempo-wise we are... The king is getting to f6 at least. Yeah. White is still in time to kind of get the setup he wants, right? Like with a knight on d4 if he wants to. You want to go knight f3 or knight c6. Yeah, probably. I actually failed to win this for the moment, I must say. I mean, I don't see why, why this would be lost. Mm -hmm. And in general, with the h-pawn, it's quite often, quite often a chance. Mm -hmm. But then let's, let's put ourselves in Ding's shoes. So let's actually try to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So king e4, king e7 is much easier to calculate in general. And so it was working out for us that so we were going Yeah, there, yeah. So knight g6 is a must. King f6. Or e6, doesn't matter. I mean, we'll get to... Mm -hmm. Ah, wait. Maybe it actually matters. What if I start with king e6? So what was our winning plan here? It was like f3. Yeah, king f6, f6 g3. g3. Yeah. So my question is now... Mm -hmm. uh, Given that, I'll try. I'll try king e6 here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, I see. You want to win a tempo, like somehow. Yeah, but I might lose the tempo instead. That's a problem. So you will take. I will go king f6. Mm -hmm. Now, indeed, if you go, let's say f3, f3. king e6, g3, then after king f6, I'm. What if I throw in? Can I throw in king g5? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Then I probably lost the tempo. Or maybe not, actually. It's hard to, hard to figure out. I mean, we still have king e5, G3? right? Yeah. Knight, knight f7, or? Yeah, probably. Knight f7. Or we actually go back again. So we go back. Oh, was that f4? And then, ah, f4, there's knight e4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we had it with a. Uh, with black to move. Mm. So we would go king e5. So let me somehow triangle, right? Mm -hmm. King g5, king e5. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we would go a four check. And then we wanted this. And then we were somehow winning this pawn yeah, by. Yeah, maybe king f6. King g6 or f6, we would normally give up mm -hmm. on the pawn. And then we would play king f3 and. Uh, yeah, yeah. We weren't sure if we're losing or not, sort of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, okay, black has to make a pretty difficult decision here. Oh, yeah. No, I think now it's like 50-50 uh, at very least. Probably Jan is a favorite to win this one. Yeah, and I mean, especially because like now we're getting to five hours of play. Yeah. And the players are definitely getting tired. Yeah, but that's what I told you in general. This is not how you this is not how you defend those. Like first of all, you don't try to mm -hmm. basically draw them by by a trick. Mm -hmm. You don't invest uh, too much in it. Secondly, I mean, I don't think you like in general you offer like all the traits in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, also king takes eight. I don't know. But at the same time, I mean, to win three three against two in the world championship match is quite remarkable. I must say, but yeah, this, this might yeah. happen. I mean, it's not going to be the most surprising thing ever. Three okay. against two? No, I mean, okay, it's quite. I mean, it's not a blunder, right? It's just that someone who got to the World Championship match actually just loses three against two, not by a blunder. Like there were many exactly blunders. Like people would blunder rook and resign immediately. But like to get outplayed in three against two, it's actually. I mean, it takes quite something. And, um, you know, it's probably not the most surprising thing, but at the same time, you know, it's quite impressive in its own way. It's impressive that he didn't blunder. Mm. It's impressive that he was just outplayed. All right, so intuitively, what are you feeling between these two moves? Well, I don't know. This is actually, I mean, kind of a puzzle that I hate most, to be honest. 
It's like, I think you can only get there by some straight calculation. You basically um, need to, you know, sit and think for 20 minutes straight. Which is what Ding, li Ding likes to do no matter what, sort of, but... Um, yeah, no, psychologically it's definitely hard for him here, right? Like knowing yeah. um, the draw is not that easy. Um, yeah, that is true. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I think in general, again, if he loses it, it's well deserved, to be honest. Somehow, I mean, I'm, it's hard to, you know. But for the sake of the match, we really hope he doesn't lose. I mean, minus yeah. two, it's a, it, it's, a, it's a big hole to crawl out of. Yeah, probably. I mean, uh, with minus two, it's very likely that there will be no game 14. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, the fans will, will um, miss one more like exciting, decisive games full of mistakes, which mm -hmm. is not what we want, of course. No. So yeah, we are um, hoping for a draw, indeed. Yeah, all right. Well, let's, let's see if we can make it happen. Um, so we were looking at H3. Mm -hmm. So you get the H pawn. Yeah. That is not supposed to be that strong. We go king e7. Yeah. King g5, right? Yeah, knight e4. No, no, king g5 is not what we are yeah, doing. Yeah, so, so we have to spend a tempi for something. Mm -hmm. You can play h4. You can play f3. It does not really matter. Like, blocking is in time to, to get to f6. Mm -hmm. So let's say we go f3, king f6. I don't know, h4 maybe? Mm -hmm. So I gotta make a move with the knight? Yeah, I suggest we go knight e8. Okay. I think it's quite often reasonable to, yeah. to move the knight yeah, towards the pawn. But then again, h5, you'll have to calculate all the stuff and it's probably just bad. So knight g7 runs into knight d7, check. No. Uh, Seven. Yeah, h6. Looks bad, actually. Oh, because I can't even take your knight, huh? Mm-hmm. You, like, promote that pawn. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, it's, like, uh, not a position you just want to be in where so much accuracy is required from you. No. And all you're going to get at the end of all that accuracy is, like, a draw. But yeah. But, of course, you know, it's not just a draw. It's a chance to continue the match. But it, it is really a tough position to be in, having to make these big decisions. Yeah. That's why I wish he would have played Rook A8 earlier. Then it would have been a three-result game. Yeah, you sure. Know? No, um, but let's say uh, Vichy is actually someone I, I kind of pick to hold this uh, three, uh, three against two mm -hmm. out of the whole world, maybe like in top three or top five. And uh, I mean, it used to be absolutely the best. Now maybe uh, top one uh, just because of his age. Yeah? I mean, Magnus has mm -hmm. more, more energy. But in general, Vichy would normally be like extremely solid in defending those uh, fortresses and ending spawn down. All right, so we found a way for white to win, but let's go through this more carefully. Well, I'm not sure it, it's like a way for white to win. It's just a random line. A, that, a way uh, for white, for black to lose. That's what we found. Just a random line. Yes. Basically, uh, <laughs> yeah. So h4. And you were just keep going with that h pawn. Yeah, maybe we had to try knight c7, not knight uh, g7. So knight c7, mm -hmm. knight d7 check still. Mm -hmm. You're threatening, by the way, knight d5, knight d7. Yeah. And then you have to, like, in terms of ideas, you have to try something like king g7. Then you give up the pawn, you run to h6. And even if it's a starter like draw, you lose at the end, to be honest. Maybe, I don't know, king g4, knight d5. Here, exactly, I think we managed to. It's like very close to a draw. There is no f4. Mm -hmm. And you cannot touch the knight as there is knight f6 check then. So king h4 is only mm -hmm. attempt. Yeah, but then it keeps going and going, you know? This is the problem with this uh, kind yeah, of. Yeah, who's in Zugzwang here? A, a kind of exercise, yeah, exactly. Because maybe I'll try to get you out of this square. Yeah. Okay, that's not easy. No. Also, what happens after move 60, actually, time-wise? <coughs> Bless you. So, uh, you. yeah. So are they going to get 15 more minutes, or is it 30? 
Yeah, you know, that question hasn't come up in the match so far. Exactly, yeah. Right, so, so I already forgot that the games can go so long. Uh, what do they get? I feel like they get 15 minutes. Okay. I think it's 15 minutes after yeah. move 16. But then actually, uh, it's even harder for Ding. Is, uh, so this basically means he, he will have like about 30 minutes for the rest of the game. And despite, uh, I mean, despite limited material, it is actually very, very uh, spot to be in. And um, he will basically have to be brilliant if it's not too late already. But then again, why to play king takes eight? Why to do? Yeah, he played h3. All right, he went for it. OK. Yeah. Yeah, so the time control is that they're getting 15 minutes with an increment of 30 seconds after move 61. So we're getting there. Mm -hmm. And he just made this big, big decision with that. Well, H3, I think, mm -hmm. is, is a move you play. Like, my thinking process would be, say, if I fail to calculate both, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure about both cases, then I go H3. Mm -hmm. Like, in general, it's like more likely to hold this with H pawn. Yeah. I mean, statistically, you know, this has better odds to work. OK, so we know Jan's next move. Yeah, G takes. Yeah. Yes, very impressive. And then, and then we're expecting, I guess, king e7. Yeah. Yeah, king e7 played. I hope he played it quickly. All right, so our problem was uh, in some order, f3, king f6, h4. Mm -hmm. eh? Yeah, I guess you want to control the square before you try to improve your king. Yeah. You normally, um, you know, normally there is this weird rule mm -hmm. that once again, I think um, Sasha and I once had a session that we kind of dedicated to these night endings. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I learned much. But uh, the one thing I learned is that basically when you're defending, you normally need to keep your knight quite far away from the base, sort of. And, mm -hmm. and then you have this like weird, weird roots to, uh, to attack from, from behind somehow. Like knight b5, for instance. Mm -hmm. Let's say we go knight b5. So you got to keep your knight active, in other words. Yeah, but not on g7, let's say. Right, right, not, right. Uh, not fighting the spawn directly, but somehow right. you go to like c3, e2. And very often, uh, I mean, the roots are weird. So let's say here. Knight d7, king g6 is not what we're worried about, right? Probably not. There mm -hmm. is king h5. Yeah. Uh, so what we're worried about is something like h5. Well, can I just let your pawn get to h6 and say that that's not a problem? Can I just let that happen? How are you going to win if your pawn gets to h6? So well, let's I, say I don't know. Let's say I but go knight c7 here. Or is there some? Yeah, but we had that position, oh, I think. We had something similar, knight d7 check. Yeah. So my point is that we probably need to play something like knight d4. Mm -hmm. Like you, normally when you're defending something like this, you need to kind of use some weird angles of the attack, kind of. So you go knight d6, b5, d4, then after, let's say, h6, we like clearly have something like knight d6 yeah, check. Yeah, knight d6, and maybe you can just. Yeah, maybe knight f8 then, I don't know. Let's see, and if we, uh, let's, see if we, let's try it. Okay. Can we take the knight? Or well, well, but this one was, uh, was a bit cooperative, Yeah, we, right? can't, we can't take the knight here. Yeah, but we're still good. We can uh, just go somewhere. I mean, again, it's not. Here it feels right for black. Maybe we go knight f8. We are threatening king g5 too. And then after f4, we probably go back. And then white cannot make progress. Or maybe he can, but I don't want him to. But you cannot touch knight, you, you cannot go h7, and you cannot give up f4. So this is actually a draw. I suspect strongly that it is a draw. So let's say this is a draw. So um, after knight d4, we don't play we don't play h6 as white, but I think we go knight d7 check, and then after king g7, this is kind of the setup that black wants. His knight is brilliant on d4, mm -hmm. both both attacking f3 and protecting f5. Mm, the king can't and, move. And we are about to play king h6. Ah, I see, I see. And so this is and this is actually a straight draw. Yeah, because so white can't, can't get their king anywhere. Yeah. 
So maybe a knight b5. Uh -huh. So d4 is like a key square that you want to try to get to. Yeah. Interesting. And, and if you try to, to prevent me from doing this, then, uh, well, knight c6 will probably give me some, some other weird roots, like maybe knight c3. And then I try knight d5 check or knight d2 check. And it seems that uh, I'm holding on. OK. Yeah, I think you found a, a really important idea here. Yeah, I want a coffee for that. Please, yeah, I think, someone. I think you deserve one, Emil. Yes. So as Nepo ponders his next move, um, we're going to go for a short break, guys. And then we're going to come back and, uh, and be with you for this uh, exciting night end game where white is up a pawn and uh, Ding is trying so hard to defend. OK. See you in a few minutes, guys.
Hey guys, we're back and Nepo is still thinking over his next move. Daniil, I have to confess that during the break I thought about escaping and uh, letting you analyze this night end game on your own, but for some reason <laughs> I'm back here. Okay. No, I mean, you can do that. No yeah, worries. You, would, I mean, you wouldn't hold a grudge, right, if I went to dinner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of yeah, sure. Also, you can go to dinner and come back. I mean, not too many things will happen, I guess. So, you know, feel free to do that. Yeah, yeah that would be, that would be uh, funny. Yeah. Um, okay, so what do we have going on here? Um, well, nothing has changed since yeah. our break. Yeah, I checked it briefly. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not only that our line was correct, but it's also that actually in this position, mm -hmm. well, I mean, king of six is of course a must, but um, in this position, it's not only knight b5. Knight b5 is a draw, but actually everything is a draw. Like uh, knight e8 that we looked at is for some reason a draw. Knight b7 is a draw, knight c8 is a draw. In terms of logic, I still like knight b5. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's very natural to bring the knight to, to d4. Mm -hmm. And basically not, um, not give up the, the, the f5 pawn. Actually, I think after, uh, I mean, after having some uh, little panic attack for, uh, for Ding, Mm -hmm. I think we're now back to saying, uh, I mean, there are some chances for Jan for sure, but um, yeah, I mean, it's way more likely that the game will finish on a draw. Still, I must say, I, uh, I mean, kind of h hate the way he was uh, holding this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jan just played some move. I think and it's uh, six. That's a six, okay. Okay, so I think the king is going to go to f6. Is that the most natural square here? Uh, probably. Feels like it, staying out of the checks of the knight. Yeah. Hmm. Well, again, it's very much about those six ones. Uh, so knight c6 is actually smart, right? He, mm -hmm. he He's preventing us from... He wants to go knight d4. Yeah, but the problem with that has to be that we are in time with some stupid knight maneuver. Where exactly? Like knight e4, maybe? F and what, F3 knight F3 knight F2? And, uh, and then we have something stupid that works. Let's just find it. Hmm. Well, knight d2 kind of stops knight f5 for a moment, but that's probably not it. Um. No, I think it's just knight f2, h4, mm -hmm. and then we give, yeah, we give a check and we go back. Yeah. So we basically need, need to avoid the situation where uh, white has his king on f4 and the knight on d4. And we have to sit uh, sit with the uh, knight on d6, mm -hmm. and basically wait wait pa possibly. Mm -hmm. So this is, I think, the key idea. So my bet would be that um, yeah, knight f2 has to be okay here. Yeah. So knight f2, and then we give a check, and so then we and yeah, and then we're just in time to to release the pressure. We go knight e5, let's say, and then king f4, knight g6 check will always be there. Mm -hmm. And whenever we, we provoke h5, we, I mean, normally capture the spawn a few months later, like knight d3, and then there is king g5. Has to be okay. All right, Daniil, let me ask you, um, who is your favorite chess streamer? Chess streamer? Yeah, that's a big topic these days, as so many people are streaming. Um, listen, yeah, I mean, given the fact I'm the, the, the official commentator, yeah, I mean, I cannot say I just hate, I hate them all. <laughs> But uh, yeah, the, the one I had. I think you can pick one that the, that is safe to pick and that is he's not so the bad. The one the one I hate the least is actually Alexander Gilman. He is actually a brilliant guy. I'm pretty oh, yeah. sure uh, he's a brilliant guy. Uh, well, I think he's uh, he's international master. Mm -hmm. He's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I think he played some match against Kostinuk, for instance, where like it's like either he won or it was v very close. I don't remember. So he's a very, very decent blitz player. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, people, if you are watching this for some reason, just uh, you know, like open YouTube, Google Alexander Gelman chess, and mm -hmm. uh, I mean, watch some blitz game and uh, your life. Is he streaming in English or Russian? I think Russian, but you don't need, I mean, it's mm -hmm. he, he's way more about emotions. Mm. You won't, uh, I mean, you won't. You won't need to uh, translate to too many things. It's just you know the, the atmosphere that he creates. Yeah. Um, well, okay. I'll tell you who my favorite streamer is. Okay. Um, go ahead. Yeah. It's, it's a, 
Very surprisingly, it's a, it's a guy that you know. OK. Yeah, his name is Magnus. Huh, OK, sure. Yeah, I actually really enjoy Magnus' dreams. Like when he started doing this a few years ago, I was like, like this is awesome, you know, to hear the world champion kind of talk as he's playing. Yeah, no, Magnus is, uh, is normally very instructive. Mm -hmm. This is true. Yeah, no, no, I mean, he's good. It's just that, I mean, compared to Gilman, he has to, you know, you think he needs learn a couple of things still. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I kind of like Magnus's chill streams, you know, when it's just him and he's just talking about the game and that's it, you know? For me, okay. that's like a. And you're the same person who, who's li listening to the rap music as crazy, yes. yeah? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, it's so exactly the same person. 94 played, by the way. So we are, we are exactly following the line we just discussed. Okay. Are you are you like disappointed yourself that you're not like getting to second Magnus in another World Championship match, or is it like, dong, not a big deal for uh, you? I mean, it's um, it's complicated, um, and it really uh, it really depends. I must say I was excited to I was like absolutely excited to help him um, against Fabi, mm -hmm. as I felt like, I mean the match itself is uh, itself is historical. And uh, it didn't feel to me like mm, he's absolutely sort of obliged to win. And actually, Magnus was saying the same. I mean, mm -hmm. he values the, uh, this match very highly. As uh, he said, in general, he didn't have an impression that he is like a much better player, if, if better at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was all before the rating gap was something like five points, uh, five points or something. So uh, yeah, this one was exciting. And also, th the engines were completely different. Uh, which would make the work way more, you know, creative thing mm -hmm. and stuff. Then against Jan, uh, I mean, I liked the the work and stuff, but in general, I mean, it was a completely different match, right? I mean, first of mm -hmm. all, c uh, clearly, uh, I mean, if you're on on Magnus team and you can't beat uh, with all the respect Jan, I mean, compared to Fabi. This is a match that you kind of need to win somehow. Moreover, you basically mm -hmm. need to win it convincingly, not to not to be blamed. And I think this is the way uh, Magnus felt, and uh, I mean the whole team felt. And he actually managed, or I don't know, we managed, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I must say, in terms of emotions, it was less uh, less pleasant. As uh, well, there was nothing to celebrate, basically. Like with Fabi, we won. I mean. I honestly wasn't sure that um, he will win. Mm -hmm. It was clear that it's going to be tough. And also the, the quality of games. I mean, yes, there were no decisive games, unlike in mm -hmm. this match. But the quality of games was also not like in this match. And uh, this is something I value really higher, to be honest. I mean, I prefer to watch like brilliant chess, even if the games finish in, uh, in a draw. And then, I mean, it was fantastic. With Jan, it felt like, OK, we need to get the job done, sort of. Mm -hmm. And it has to be convincing. And even when he was winning, I mean, game six was, uh, was special, of course. And it was cool to watch this. And uh, you know, this was special. But the rest, in general, we expected him to win. He won. He, he expected him, himself to win kind of easily, to be honest. And um, he did. And then there is nothing to celebrate. I mean, it's like a negative free roll, basically. Yeah, I mean, we could only we could only look like idiots. With Magnus, basically, if you win the match, okay, sure, mm -hmm. he he's brilliant. I mean, of course you won. And if you don't win, then uh, I mean, how stupid do do you need to be to to actually prevent Magnus from from winning the match, right? And say the same goes to him. Like he wins the he <coughs> wins the match plus four, mm -hmm. and still. People are not really, really praising him. Yeah, they're like, okay, this is what we expected. Yeah, I was thinking maybe Dink could play King G6, and so that's what's happening. Okay, Jan is trying to push this knight out of his but why good position. Why didn't he go to H6? His king was just on G6, mm -hmm. right? Uh, okay, so White played Knight E6. Why not to go here? Yeah, seems like it was possible as well. Yeah. That it's like more logical, no? Mm. All right, let's see what happened. King f6, knight f4. Let's see where the black knight's gonna go. 
Yeah, but wherever it goes, it's much better to be on h6, where you have the access to the h5 square, where you can attack the pawn. Okay, no, so no. let's say we just go, what, probably knight e5 here? No, I mean, of course it's not lost yet, but uh, he's trying. Nothing's really happening, like knight e5, like what's, what's going on? That's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, maybe not much. Knight e5 check. King back to g6? Yeah, let's say knight e3. Knight back to d3. Okay. Okay, he moved his knight to b4. Yeah. Okay. Shouldn't be too bad either. Yeah, that no, it's just that in general, I mean, again, his logic works different way. Like, objectively, mm -hmm. both king f6 and h6 are draw, of course. Interesting that he moved. So let's say now Jan played king f2. Yeah. I mean, with the king on h6, you're never worried at all. Mm. Like, you just, so let's say my king is on h6. Right, I just go knight to six. I mean, I probably just go knight e5. Then whenever you touch the knight, I go king h5. And how can I lose this? Yeah, I like the knight on e5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the king on h6. Like, mm -hmm. h6 is uh, probably the square where the, you know, the, uh, as the king is uh, the most active, sort of. All right, so this is the current position. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not that he is about to lose <coughs> in two moves. Do you think he wants to play maybe knight c2 and get the knight to d4? I don't know. Let's try it. Knight c2, okay. Yeah. All right, so let's say uh, king e2. Yeah, knight d4. But you see, again, he's trying to play it move by move. I'm just saying if I'm black, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to, to come up with a fortress. Ah, so he plays king e5, okay. Um, that seems fine, because there's no king e3, I guess. Yeah, or there is knight c2 check, right? And then king g2, knight d4 at very least. Yeah. Okay. So this does work. Um, yeah. So this is his fortress. What I was about to say is that, I mean, if I'm black in this position, mm -hmm. I normally don't want to play it move by move. I just want to make sure that I mean, I calculate a different way. I basically think, okay, let's imagine my king is on h6 and the knight is on e5. Is there a way for white to make progress? If the answer is no, and I'm pretty sure the answer is no, then I just wait like this. And that I don't play it uh, move by move anymore. I'll, right. just, I'll just stick to the setup. Yeah, yeah, I was But what, mm -hmm. what Dink is doing is also fine, probably. So he maneuvered his knight over to b4. Yeah. And king e3, is it now going to be just a repetition? Mm. Is it like uh, knight c2? The yeah. King's, uh, the king's on e3, Daniel. Yeah. Yeah, knight c2, king d2, and okay, you can't, you can't take an f4, but maybe just. But it's not a repetition. There will be knight d3 check, and we'll continue. Ah, okay, knight d4. Though, torturing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's what I told you, basically. I mean, you don't need to to invest too much energy trying to force a draw in this kind mm -hmm, of position. Mm -hmm. It's just much better to find one fortress and, you know, wait. Then again, he will be now upset that it's not like a draw by force. Mm -hmm. And he will have to reshuffle somehow. I mean, of course it's a draw now. By, I mean, quite some margin, to be honest. So king back to f6? Yeah, so... I mean, I guess we give a check and then we go back to d4. But it's just in general, why not? Or should we go back to e6? Should we just go straight back to e6 and like not let your king come anymore? Like right here? Yeah, you can do that too. But then let's say knight f4. Now actually, I, I mean, I start feeling like you're getting outplayed a little. Ah, because you're going like king d4. Yeah. I mean, again, why didn't you wait with the mm. king on h6, Mr. Dink? Please mm. explain to me. Yeah, I don't know. I think in general, I mean, honestly, I played some, some games against him too. And uh, I mean, it has been my feeling that, uh, I mean, it's not his strongest side as uh, this kind of positions. King e3. And yeah, I guess now we go nice to the, the way yeah. I see this. I mean, okay, let's stick to some fortress at least. King. Let's give a check and uh, go back. Yeah, king f4. Okay, let's go back. And then you go back. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then we want some 92 check and then we start. Yeah, start this yeah. little procedure all over again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but then again, sense. imagine Bla Black King is on h6 now. I mean, we just go King h5, it's game over immediately. Mm-hmm. 
So, um, yeah. So in both of your, the matches that you were second in, did you um, have your base like while the match was going on in Thailand or like you were in different places in those matches? Uh, I'm actually not sure how much I'm allowed to review. Oh, but okay. I think there are, there are like videos or at least po podcasts about uh, both matches mm -hmm. from sort of inside of the Team Magnus. Because it's interesting, because like long time ago, it really wouldn't be a thing, right? I mean, this, like, I mean, the seconds would be actually physically present at the match. Yeah. Even like 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, but it makes a lot of sense, actually. Uh, so, I mean, we were indeed in Thailand. Okay, this much I guess I can tell. And the point is that basically, uh, normally, there would be a massive time difference mm -hmm. uh, between the place uh, um, we were staying and the match venue, sort of. Mm -hmm. And the point is that basically it makes a lot of sense and you're way more productive when you're working uh, with the daylight. Mm -hmm. So the point is that so there is like yeah. there is like a task to be solved that mm -hmm. first of all we, ne we need to work when, uh, when Magnus, Magnus is, is sleeping. Magnus right? is sleeping and yes. then at the same time we want to be in daylight mm -hmm. at this p mom moment. Mm -hmm. And this is why Thailand. Actually Krasnoyarsk was uh, considered too but somehow People were not excited for some reason. I was yeah. very much in for Krasnoyarsk. Really? Yeah. Over Thailand. I mean, you guys seem to have like very nice conditions there. Uh, I mean, given it was COVID, actually, uh, I was way more worried mm. about having COVID in Thailand than in Krasnoyarsk. Believe me. I mean, I think the level of danger, even if, even if you people don't know where uh, Krasnoyarsk is, I think it's much safer in in Krasnoyarsk. On average, uh, but uh, but also in the winter they're colder. I, I can I can see why no one would want to travel there. No, I mean of course I'm joking. Yeah, I mean <laughs> we we mentioned it's normally the best part of the prep. Like you you, you open the map, yeah, uh, and you start exploring where we could actually go. I mean where the time difference works. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, yeah. So what was the time difference between Thailand and London, for example? Well, I don't remember, but it was. I mean it was quite uh, quite big. So basically, the idea is that instead of working through the night, yeah. you guys would be able to get good sleep and work during the day and kind of with fresh minds and then give Magnus ideas. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Which I think makes a lot of sense. Another upside is that um, I think just in terms of you know, psychology of the player, Mm -hmm. It's probably uh, not ideal either to have too many people around. Yeah. And I mean, then this team, it's like five to, I mean, whatever. Now we, we heard the number 30, yeah? I mean, like 30, what was it? Is it Dink or Jan who has like 30 people in the team? It's definitely not Someone, Dink. Uh, someone said that. Yeah. And I think someone said that actually about Dink. Really? About yeah, yeah. Dink? But not, not like here, certainly not on the site. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm trolling, uh, but uh, someone said 30 indeed. Yeah, maybe 30 leech has accounts. That's a yeah, good yeah. joke. Yeah, this was funny. Mm -hmm. um, so actually having too many people around is not ideal either. And then, uh, I, I, I mean, normally most of the people in the team are ambitious too. And I mean, like each has his own ideas. And uh, you basically don't want to be like in the middle of some argument where people cannot decide what mm what you're su supposed to play and stuff, so um, yeah, I think like all in all having uh, uh, most of the team quite far mm -hmm. uh, is a very, very good idea. And I think it actually became, thanks to Magnus, mm -hmm. it actually became from uh, something unusual uh, to... Standard. Yeah, now it is a routine. No one like brings 20 people now to the match. Yeah, no, it's a very sensible innovation. Yeah. Yeah. So would you be directly in contact with Magnus, like about your opening ideas, or there would be like a p person on the team who kind of processes that and is in touch with Magnus? Here, I think we just stop. Uh, okay. I mean, enough is enough. You can ask Magnus. I actually don't. Yeah. I actually don't think. I mean, given the fact he's uh, not playing so much, I don't think he really cares this much anymore. But still, I mean, it's better to, to ask him. Sure. All right, so we got the king attacking the knight. Have we had any yeah. like uh, progress in this position? So what has happened? It's like not much. Okay, the king's gone around. There's been a few checks. Yeah. The knight's gone there. Okay. Yeah, this is the current position. Yeah, okay. So nothing, nothing much is happening. Yeah, I guess you can play h5, which is not a blunder. 
But it's like the only good thing about it. So you're trying to promote this pawn. Yeah. It actually seems like you do promote it, don't you? Yeah. I mean, I just wanted some sharp line to kind of uh, warm you up a little, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're about to fall asleep, but you, I, I mean, once you see some <laughs> uh, some tactics, you're like, you know. All right, so. You get this adrenaline, yeah? All Always. Right, H5. So Jan played knight yeah. e2. OK. Let's see. So he just went back. Yeah, he keeps offering knight this knight H2. trade. Yeah, <coughs> so by hand, we just go knight c2, right? I mean, given our yeah. culture. But, but I think he, he did something knight. different. Okay. He went knight e6, which also okay. Also sense. came. Yeah. OK. So do we actually play a 5f4 if given a chance? Hmm. Like we certainly yeah. do, don't play it after king g3. But like maybe right now. We, we shouldn't play yeah. it, I guess. Okay, Jan played, so you're not going to do it. So he's going to go, where is he going to go? Knight. Yeah, king g3, king f6 played, I guess. OK. Uh -huh, Ding went back. Mm -hmm. It feels like we've had this position like before, yeah, I don't know, go, we're going around in the circle. We, we had something pretty similar, yeah. Okay. So you can't really push the H pawn. Yeah. So let me ask you something, go actually. Ahead. So in terms of psychology, mm -hmm. let's say if if you are in Jan's shoes. Mm -hmm. So what's better mm -hmm. to actually, I mean, have this game like finished on move forty mm -hmm. with uh, like Ding playing something normal. Mm -hmm instead of this three against two yeah. in, in a draw, or having this kind of pressure and actually, I think, at some point, believing that you're like about to win, mm -hmm. but finishing the, the game in a draw after, uh, after pressing for so long, mm -hmm. but not winning at the end. No, I still think the scenario is going pretty well for him. I mean... For Jan. Yeah, for Jan, okay. because you know tomorrow is a free day, and when you can just play forever risk-free, and I, I mean, I feel Ding should be getting like more tired from the, his defensive task than Jan is, right? Yeah, but in terms of emotions, I think it's uh, more of a booster for Ding. You think so? I don't know. No, like, no, I, no. I this, think this at some point it was not going to be, I don't know, a huge morale booster, like. No, no, but I mean, uh, first of all, I think uh, at some point we will find out. Um, later, but uh, I think at some point he will just like much worse slash lost, mm -hmm. and then he clearly panicked in this night ending. I mean, it was mm. like uh, a clear sign of of panic and. Uh, Before he played h3. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, it's it's lucky for him that it's. I, I mean, it all went this way, mm -hmm. and for the moment he's holding on comf comfortably. How about well. King g6 here? I think we've already seen something like that. Just like, I think he's tried a similar kind of move in the situation. Maybe. All right, so let's move on to the next topic, chess boxing. Chess boxing, OK, so there we go. Yeah, have you followed any of these uh, chess boxing matches? Uh, I think I've been to some like World Chess Boxing Championship like many years ago, mm -hmm. as it was held in Moscow. I think it was like six years ago. Mm -hmm. Not six, actually, more like 10. Well, what about the recent ones? Like we had, I think it was Lawrence Trent. Yeah, I know the results, but I. Uh, Who is he fighting against? He was fighting mm -hmm. against Eman ha Hamilton. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And he lost, which is funny. Uh, and he lost, I think, by knockout, which mm -hmm. is even more funny. Mm -hmm. But I still don't care. And then we got um, cu the couple of matches in the women's uh, chess boxing. Yeah, Dina was fighting. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe Andrea Bottas. I thought yeah. that was a good. Uh, that was a good match. You know better. Yeah, I was really happy with Dina running away in the ring. I was like, mm -hmm. I hope she doesn't get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, after, you know. Um, and she played a really good game on the, on the, on the board, you know. OK, just great. Checkmating just in time. Yeah. No, I mean, after doing boxing for like uh, three and a half, maybe four years, mm -hmm. I, f I find chess boxing not, in, I mean, I don't know. Uh, it's like people who are. All right, chess boxing is great. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, and I have to say, you know, like I've also watched Andrea Botez's last uh, last match against Michelle Hare, mm -hmm. and that was like um, very recent. Yeah. And I don't know, I, f I like, uh, I mean, I, th I think the athleticism, you know, and the training that you do is really cool. 
Yeah, yeah, but you know, it's you definitely need some courage to get out into the ring. Yeah, yeah, but it's all hype. Like there's no such sport. Normally, like I'll take some boxer who is really good. Mm -hmm. I actually even know some of them. Mm -hmm. Just give me two weeks. I'll show them how not to be like checkmated by Move 20, mm -hmm. and they will n knock out like both Eamon Hamilton, Lawrence Trent, or like any. I mean, you know. So, so, so basically, once once professional boxers make it there. No, but it why would it why will be they? It, it will be over. No, like I mean the whole point is that it's like people of the same level, right? Competing, like who are new to boxing. Yes, but then it's strange. Like they say, it's a sport, but then it's a weird sport. Like it's a sport where you are not allowed to, uh, sort of, what to be coming from. Yeah, some that's the whole point. Yeah, but it's how? Like but how do you define it? Well, it's like a tournament it, rated uh, like under two thousand. You know, it's like so it's you know it's for th for that kind of level. So it's yeah, but how? For celebrities. Okay, sure, but how how do you d do you define 2000 in boxing? No, I am not saying I will bring the world champion, but some like uh, the candidate master will just you know. But I felt like those matches were pretty were pretty fair, right? Okay. Like the ones that we saw. I mean, like the people not having any experience in boxing. But yeah, I no, I was uh, mm -hmm. I w uh, sorry, I was actually. What was really funny is that actually um, I listened to Fabi's postcard. A podcast um, together with Christian, they mm -hmm. did like interviews with uh, Andrea, I think. Mm -hmm. And I mean, in general, there was a podcast uh, about chess boxing, mm -hmm. and I actually enjoyed it as um, most of their podcasts. But the fun part is that um, I think Fabi at some point was trying to come up with uh, like proper pairs for chess boxing for like professional chess players, and then I think he uh, like somehow came up with a. Uh, with the pair like uh, Fabi himself against Giri. Oh yeah, that's which, a good one. Which, which, which I mean made me, I mean, laugh like crazy. I mean, I just couldn't. Then Fabi said uh, he would only do it for some very big money, and I got upset. Um, but yeah, I mean, having that would be uh, would be you know great. <laughs> I no, know. No, I just no, laugh uh, thinking about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine uh, we could uh, have this kind of competitions and uh, some like random random draw. Mm -hmm. a random drawing, and then you, I mean, suddenly get like Ding versus, uh, I mean, someone. Bukesh? Yeah, or some, or I mean, Eric Gaisi, or uh, I mean, I don't know. Well, I think Fabi actually came up with a really good uh, uh, opponent for himself, right? Someone who's like similar in like height and weight. Yeah, yeah, this was the point. And basically. chest level. Yeah, this know? was this was very much the point. Yeah. Okay, with so some good trash talking game. Yeah. Fabi, so. if, uh, Fabi is not exactly brilliant at trash talking, I guess. He yeah, but he found he an opponent who would be. Yeah, he is just a very decent guy, and um, yeah, I like him a lot. Yeah. All right. So we so have this a move is on the board. Yeah, this is actually just a draw. I think Dick finally realized that he can bring the king to h5. Mm -hmm. And he pushed him? the pawn, so the yeah. white king is at least not so aggressively placed. Yeah. So so king g2 is now played as white will bring his king to h3. Uh, to king g1 played. Yeah, yeah. Are you surprised by that? I mean, king g1 is not really like okay, a you winning it. attempt. Yeah, but you can play whatever you want. I know, but as a winning attempt, you kind of yeah, yeah, feel but like it's. He's well, but his up point is that. that basically king g2, king g6, king h3, king h5 ah, is, a, is a mutual tux one, Zook's actually. Uh -huh. And with black to move, he loses as uh, mm -hmm. he has to allow king g4 mm -hmm. or give out the pawn. And with white to move, uh, there is not d4. And then you remove oh, okay. knight takes f3 and you know how this. So Ding so needs to be a little careful. Yeah, so he plays king g1 to kind of show his understanding that this is a mutual tsuk mm. one and uh, you know. So king g6. Yeah, king, king h6. g2. Now I guess we, uh, we just pass. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you don't step onto the mind square on h5. Yeah, something like that. Okay. All right. So we discussed chess boxing, but I'll tell you yeah. my overall feeling is like. It's a little bit of like trepidation as I watch it. Like I'm mm -hmm. just, um, uh, you know, hoping the players are not going to get hurt. <laughs> Basically, I don't enjoy yeah. it that much because I'm like, I really hope nothing bad happens to them. And, and I'm feeling exactly the opposite, sort of. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just a show, and I'm like, okay, I mean, have respect. Yeah, if you're doing boxing, then do it for real, kind of. So now I expect King H6. Uh, King G6, King G2 played. Okay, so King H6 now. I would guess so. Yeah, it would be funny if the game ended in like king h2, king g6 type of repetition. Is there a chance of that? I don't know. 
I suppose there is. I think we are getting. Is there is a chance close. that is this, is this will be my longest recap ever? You're going to start of. your recap in like uh, 13 minutes. Mm. See? No, I won't. No, you'll take a break to have dinner. Yeah, I'll probably start at 10 or even later. No, it's not that we have a fixed time. It's normally, I mean, they, they, they ask me to be uh, sort of fast with it. Mm -hmm. But if I need to analyze, I, uh, I'm allowed to analyze, actually. So yeah, so King H2, I think. All right, Knight C1. Oh, Knight C1, up. OK. Knight so C1. Now, now there is finally King H5. King H5 and then Knight D4, right? Yeah, yeah and he played it. Yeah, King yeah, H3. King H3. 94. Okay, we're getting the pawns off the board, so that's yeah. exciting. Yeah. 93. Right, Ding knows he got he gets the much awaited four draw. Okay. And I think that's very important for the match that he was able to, to hold this game. Cannot be under cannot be overstated. Yeah. How important that was. And then he's probably gonna sack his knight for the pawn. Actually they already agreed to a draw. Oh, and, ne and Nepo seems, you know, a little bit upset or something. Yeah, that's how it looks. That he didn't win this end game, but I don't Yeah, but mm -hmm. uh, I mean, to some extent, I get it. I mean, mm -hmm. after h4, it felt shaky indeed. Yeah. OK. We've never had such a late press conference as today. Mm -hmm. All right, and Ding seems happy. And I think, you know, this is a good game to go to a rest day on. Yeah, this was players. my point, actually. Mm -hmm. Like, in a way. In terms of emotions, it's probably better for him to actually survive such a game, mm -hmm. to kind of survive some time pressure too at mm -hmm. some point, to actually solve some problems that he was not supposed to have. But it's probably even better to help them and solve them with this h3. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I mean, probably it's, a, it's like weird, but probably it could be like a confidence booster. Yeah, and he's got tomorrow to think about what he's going to come up with the white pieces. I mean, we talked at the beginning of the show about the leaked uh, opening prep, and yeah. we talked about the, all those various Nimzo lines that were featuring in the practice games. There was also uh, apparently interest from him in playing like a King's Indian attack as white, or like various like ready lines with Knight F3, you know, G3, and like sometimes even you know C4, B3, mm -hmm. okay. this kind of stuff. And I hope mm -hmm. they, they will be funny enough to actually open the, the accounts again and play like 30 more games tomorrow and let people think what that means. That would be pretty hilarious. If yeah, yeah, just, this, yeah. This, would be, uh, this would actually be the, uh, the first thing I would recommend. Like, just open the, the accounts, play 40 more games, link them to play some random openings, and then let, let people think about it. Yeah, so basically, um, you think Ding might get a little psychological boost from making a draw in a night end game that was a little bit tough for him. No, I think. Uh, he was actually quite close. I mean, first of all, he was probably lost objectively at some point. He will find find it out after the game, but uh, I think he was. Secondly, the night ending was also, I mean, tough. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess he was actually very close to, to getting to minus two. And I mean, minus two is basically only one, I mean, one way uh, traffic, right? So yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it's good for him that he survived, and I think it will, um, kind of um, help him to you know, get his confidence back. Yeah, he's got three more games with white. Um, he's done really quite well with the white pieces, always being able to bring new ideas. I do think it's like a new situation for him, because he's got to kind of go through um, what's been leaked and figure out what is still playable. He did have some ideas, I think, of playing 1e4 in yeah. this match at some point. There were also some Sicilian games um, in the file. I don't know if it was from him playing the knight orf or his ideas uh, what to play against the knight orf. Um, yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, um, once again, I'm a team Fabi speaking of this mm -hmm. leak. It's not even clear. So, OK, let's say you are on Jan's team. Mm -hmm. OK, they leaked it. So what's next? Are you really going to like sit and basically check all the games? I think they'll and check and the main ideas, and then, yeah. And, and then check all the ideas to, mm -hmm. to actually, I mean, get something uh, yeah. completely random over the board. Well, you're going to have to factor that in. You can't just ignore it, right? I mean, you're going to yeah. have to. Yeah. My point is that actually Dean could actually double bluff, yeah? I mean, he, he, he could. And still play it. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes he could yeah. do that. Yeah. This yeah, is that crossed it. my mind for sure. Yeah. Like, that one of the like he might just be like okay I'm still gonna go for one of these lines yeah yeah no. I, I mean I'm not yeah. worse and you know okay 
Yeah, he has some idea in the Petrov. There was like some kind of G3 move. I guess we could, uh, well, we could show it or not as we wait for the press conference. No, we will not. We will not. We're no. tired. Are we tired of the chess for today? No, but Petrov, I mean, Pe uh, Petrov is, I think, something uh, he will not try mm -hmm. if he knows it's leaked and if it's leaked indeed. Mm. But, I mean, something like, let's say, King's Indian attack is white. I mean, okay, how do you prepare as black? Okay, I'll tell you I'll play knight f3, g3, mm -hmm. bishop, g2. I mean, take it from there. All right. So you think e4 is, not, is still not very likely from him? I mean, at least not with the intention of uh, playing something very ambitious in, in the Petrov. All right, Jan. Uh, yeah, Jan. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes, Jan. Alice. <laughs> I'm listening to you. What okay. is it that you want to ask? All right, Daniel. Yeah. Well, it's time to talk about your plans for the rest day because we've just run out of topics here. Yeah. So. Uh, no big plans actually. Mm -hmm. I must say it's cool to uh, it's cool to have these games being so interesting. Yeah. And uh, I mean, without short draws, sometimes even I'm uh, kind of disappointed with uh, with having a rest day. But I will probably go to a gym. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, do something else. I'm basically still in this recovering mode after the birthday party. Mm -hmm. so, so I kind of need to get my life back. Oh yeah, I still have to take a walk today. I still need to get in my one hour walk, bef uh, maybe after dinner. Oh, okay. That's right. Lucky Fine you, I yeah, instead of recaps. Yeah, and so I'm trying to keep up my healthy lifestyle here and I've been able to do a lot of walking, enjoy the sauna, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, ev even the gym a few times. I did some Pilates style workouts. Okay, cool. Well, we're actually about, we need to survive like three more minutes. I think less. Maybe less, yes. Yeah, and we got Nepo already showed up for the press conference. Ketty's yeah. talking to him. And yeah, actually Ketty. Uh, yeah, he's probably asking something, right? Ketty and I and, um, and our other fellow commentator here, we went to a nice Georgian restaurant yesterday for dinner. Okay, share more details. What <laughs> happened? Yeah, absolutely uh, nothing. I mean, uh, whom, mm, whom <laughs> yeah. did you talk to? Maybe, yeah. you, maybe you met well, someone. You know, How learned. was the food? Uh, yeah, food was excellent. I had the hinkale. Okay, so um, Georgian singer maybe. Yeah, we also shared the hachapuri. Okay. Um, and that was great. Okay, I think the players are here, guys, and you uh, must be tired of listening to us for now. So we're yeah. going to leave you and see you in two days for game number 10 after the rest day. Yeah, see you, people. Welcome everyone at the round nine of FIDE World Chess Championship match. The game has ended in a draw uh, and the current score is five to four in favor of Nyamnya Pomnishi. Today we had a really long day, uh, so I'll start right away with a question to Jan Nepomnishi. Jan, you seemed uh, quite disappointed when the game has ended. Um, can you please share your thoughts about the game? Uh. Uh, well, it was, uh, I guess, not much after the opening, uh, but I guess after, after like this rook b8 move, I thought like sh he should have played bishop f8 and second pawn. Uh, but after rook b8, knight h4, I think that there is like very very nice initiative for white. Uh, I mean, probably there were like different different ways to. Uh, uh, to build up, maybe, maybe I could, uh, I should have tried, not bishop takes h6, I played it at MP, but maybe something like knight f5 also made some sense, yeah. Uh, trading, capturing on, on h6, but it looked like so, so nice, but uh, actually I never could find um, like any decisive blow, so a lot of nice tactics, but uh, I mean, okay, I ended up going for this dry position and uh, I mean, from, from some distance I missed this rook b3, rook b4. And yeah, it's uh, it looks drawish though. Uh, of course, I could, I should have posed more problems in the end game, but um, yeah, somehow it was not so you know, not so simple to to move my pawns forward. And uh, yeah, I guess the night end game um, uh, looks looks maybe dangerous for black, but uh, probably a draw. Mm -hmm. right. um, thank you very much, and uh, I think. How did you feel about the night end game? Uh, what was the evaluation? Uh, I would I would like f 
to ask journalists and the audience a little bit of silence. It's really difficult to hear. Please. So uh, I will repeat the question uh, to Ding. How did you feel uh, about the night end game and what was the evaluation of the position after the Rook trade? Well, first uh, I thought it was an easy draw, but I realized it's not so simple, especially uh, after the position he played King F4. If I go Knight D E4, it might lost because Knight D3, Knight D6, King E5, and he had many waiting moves here. Also, if I go king e seven, I was I spared also a lost position. He has two pawns, and then he can go king g five if if he has a chance. And during the game, I thought maybe h three is the only move to to save the game. Right to talk uh, a little bit from the from the beginning. Uh, today you had the 20 minutes uh, advantage on the clock, uh, right after the opening. Have you felt comfortable with your opening choice today? Yeah, this line I prepared some time ago, but then maybe Rook D8, as he said, is too slow. I totally missed his idea. Knight H4, Queen of Three. I should have played Bishop F8, but I was afraid of take take Queen takes Knight C5 and B4, and I couldn't find the continuation after this position. Maybe I have some chance here. Mm -hmm. I should spend more time on mm -hmm. this position. Right, thank you. And Jan, uh, you, you had a long thought and then you decided to play bishop to a6, uh, bishop to a2 on the move 16. Uh, can you please walk us through this moment and share the idea behind this move? Ah, uh, it was no idea. <laughs> I mean, actually, I wanted to play, uh, let's say, put my knight on c4, so in case of bishop f8, meet with bishop e3, knight d2, knight c4. Uh, so I was struggling to find a useful move. So maybe I should have just played, I don't know, like, 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 like bishop d2, bishop f8, and here, rook okay, d1, and then bishop e3. But of course, the position is like very dry, yeah, so it slowly becomes like drawish. So uh, I felt like maybe bishop e2 is tricky, yeah, so I combine like. Uh, I prepare my knight d2, knight c4 at some point, and and also, um, and also let's ask black if black can make a useful move as well. So perhaps okay, I could try something like before at some point. Yeah, like prepare before, but yeah, I mean these building structures are, um, are dry. Yeah. Right, and uh, also at this moment when you decided not to capture the uh, exchange, the rook on b5. And instead, you decided to capture the bishop, light square bishop. Um, what, what was your the reason that you made this decision? Why you didn't capture the rook uh, on b5? Well, uh, I probably um, thought it's like it's, it's just too good uh, the position after. Uh, I mean, uh, after uh, I grab an exchange, it's if I'm not winning by force, it becomes like. I wouldn't say double edged, but it's tricky, of course. Yeah, okay, like the, the, those pawns. And um, I mean, black has some plan. Yeah, like knight goes to f6, like another knight, maybe to b3 or something. Okay, I mean, it should be winning, I believe, for white. But, I mean, at least some nice chances. But it wasn't clear, and um, uh, as it was in the game, I, I'm a little bit missed the idea of queen c6. And uh, I mean, it takes really, it, it takes a while to capture this a4 pawn because, yeah, this. Rook takes c3 tactics is quite nasty. So perhaps I would uh, just have played something like bishop c1 instead of queen e2. And I guess it should be like very nice, very pleasant position for white. But uh, yeah, alas. Um, I mean, also in this end game, yeah, suddenly after rook e4, maybe I should have tried f3 or something. Yeah, like maybe to, to keep up some pieces and then, okay, come up with this idea rook e4. And uh, yeah, but I think it was like never something very real and yeah, he, he defended well, it seems. Thank you. And Ding, also the same same position when Jan decided to take the bishop on e6. Mm -hmm. uh, which move you wanted more to see on the board? Bishop takes the rook was your uh, best option that your opponent could play, or bishop e6? Well, bishop e6 came as a total shock. I, I thought he would take the rook, uh, and then Maybe rook e d1, knight f6, and then to see what happens. But take the bishop is totally a shock. But 
actually after that he still better it was not something that I expected that I'm hoping for also I have to still I have to fight for the equal after he takes the bishop right. thank you I don't have more questions for the moment so I would like press to um, ask the questions now please thank you my client just uh, People are really the openings played in this. I'll start again. The mic. Uh, just a second. We need to change the microphone. We need uh, we need a technical help because the microphone is. I'll start again. Uh, Ding, I think people have been really enjoying the number of different openings that we've seen, but even Fabiano Caruana said that it must be really hard to remember all of your preparation when you keep changing openings, So, uh, especially because you're getting different structures. So have you been able to memorize or uh, recall all of your preparation, or has it been difficult because you've been changing openings so much against E4? Yeah, sometimes it's difficult, but today the idea is, I remember the idea of queen c7 with something, with bishop f8, so the idea is very clear to me, so I just feel, I recall it during the game. I just need to, uh, did not, didn't miss some, um, the, the move order. I just need to re recall which was the best move order to reach this kind of position. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Next question, please. Владимир Мерзоева, телеканал Матч ТВ. Вопрос к Яну Неполнящему. Ян, расскажите, пожалуйста, о сегодняшней партии и насколько для вас сегодня был неожиданно выбор Берлина со стороны оппонента. Hello, everybody. Uh, we are from Match TV, and the question is to Ян Неполнящий. Uh, Ян, uh, why did you choose uh, Berlin position? Uh, what was the reason behind? Uh, ну, мне кажется, после дебюта ну, белые намного не рассчитывают в этом варианте, но как-то удалось поставить проблемы. Вот. Uh, ну и мне кажется, позиция ну, была очень перспективной, но я не видел ничего решающего ни в один момент. Uh, и ну, довольно сложно было выбрать из там, типов преимущества. Uh, вот. Uh, ну, мне кажется, довольно неплохо соперник защищался. Uh, хотя, ну, наверное, игру можно было усилить. Uh, вот. А касательно Берлина, нет, это не стало сюрпризом. Ну, Все-таки это один из основных дебютов моего соперника. Uh -huh. и тут странно, если бы я удивился. Well, actually, um, it wasn't a surprise for me, because Whites had a good position, uh, and uh, they didn't have much problems. And actually, there were perspectives, uh, and uh, there, were, there were not any decisive moments uh, to, get, to have some uh, decisive advantage. So the Berlin was okay for me, and it's normal to have it uh, in such games. Thank you very much. Next question. Leoncio Garcia from El País. I have a question for each one, please. Ian, what feeling weighs more now in your mind? Uh, you keep your one point advantage one more day, or you lost a good opportunity to win again? And for uh, Leland, from one to ten, how do you evaluate your self-confidence right now? We go with Jan first. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I guess it's like the same, like try to make good moves, try to do my best and uh, yeah, and see what happens. Thank you, Dink. Well, the confidence of what to win the overall match or to win the next game. Confidence, confidence in yourself. Myself, my. In general, I guess, right? Yeah. But it had to be something to win the match or to win next game. To win the match. To win the match. <laughs> um, five. 
Thank you. You, you saw the face of Jan, right? <laughs> I saw some, some thumping from this side. Do we have more questions? Yeah, this question is for both players. I've actually heard several people online say that at various points in this match, they're actually yelling at their screen while watching, which I've never heard of before, but they're so emotionally invested in the game. And I'm curious, have either of you ever watched someone else play a chess game and you've gotten so emotionally invested that you yelled at the screen or anything like that? I can maybe start with Grandmaster Jan de Pomeshi on that question. Uh, thank you for the question. I guess like every online tournament, like doesn't matter if I play or if I follow, I'm constantly yelling something, yeah? Uh, constantly cursing and, uh, and so on, yeah? So. Uh, yeah, but jokes aside, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite nice that people are, uh, yeah, find the classical chess and the match so exciting. Thank you, Ding. Oh, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? If have, have you ever watched a game online that was not your game and you were so excited about what was going on that you yelled at your computer like you were cheering for someone or wished they had found a particular move? Um, sorry, can you repeat the question again? I Do you get excited when you watch other people play online? Watch other people play yes. online? Yes, people are getting very excited watching your games. Uh, I I'm not excited to watch the other games playing online. That's fair enough, I guess. Okay. <laughs> All right, do we have more questions? Uh, I see we don't have more questions, but we have Twitter segment and Jesse will bring some of the questions of the uh, spectators in social media. Hello, Jesse February here. Uh, my first question is from Alex for Deng. Uh, are you more confident in your time management now compared to your previous games? Well, it's... Uh, It's connected, the time management, the quality of the moves, the, the length of the calculations, it's all connected. So I spend less time to calculate today, but the quality you see dropped a lot. All right, thank you. Next question, My next please. question is for Nepo. How many pink shirts did you bring with you? For real, yeah? <laughs> uh, enough. <laughs> All right. All right, so after the game, do you ever go back and watch the commentary or read comments on social media to see what people say? This question is for both of you. Uh, Jan, let's go with you first. Uh, I try, frankly, I try to restrict myself because uh, once you start, like, uh, I mean, the problem is like so many people making commentary. Uh, like, on, on every on every like major chess channel, there is separate commentary. So, uh, once you start like digging into uh, yeah, the topic, uh, yeah, it basically there is there is a chance that will consume like uh, the rest of you know your your free time. So, better not to even start. Right. Thank you, Ding. If you would like to answer this question after the game, if you watch. Uh, commentary or some comments? Yeah, sometimes I will follow it because uh, despite of this, it's very hard to totally uh, keep away from all the social media because the tournament is so long. If, even if you decided not to follow, but at some point <laughs> you're back to some the same routine at some point. Right, so you have not uninstalled any social media applications. <laughs> How about you, Jan? Sorry? Because, because I think in one of your interviews you said that at the previous World Championship match you have uninstalled some of yeah. the applications. How about this match? Have you uninstalled some of the applications to uh, focus more? Yeah, I guess a couple of weeks before the, uh, the thing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Do we have more questions, Jesse? Yeah, I have one more question. So given how exciting the match is so far, would you ever consider writing a book about it? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. 
I mean, since I'm still a player, not uh, not not an author, I guess yeah. Uh, for now, for now, my duty is yeah, more simple. Yeah, just play some chess. Right. There was the question to Jan, or we also want uh, to know about the sure. Since what you about know. your writing? Yeah, skills it's thing? not my job. <laughs> Okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Do we have more questions from press? Uh, I will not ask more questions because it has been a really long day for players. Tomorrow will be day off and the next round will resume the other day at 3 p.m. local time. So thank you very much for coming here and answering our questions. As the world holds its breath, two unstoppable minds prepare for immortality. One from the land of the dragon, the other from the land of the bear. Together, they will write history. The patient and precise Ding Carefully calculating every move to gain a strategic advantage. Facing the aggressive Napomniachi, who is always looking to take risks and never afraid to make bold moves to pressure his opponents. Their eyes might be fixed on the board, but their minds will be focused on victory. These two titans of the chessboard have fought their way through the ranks, demonstrating skill, strategy, and a fierce competitive spirit. Now they will go head to head and fight for the ultimate title, the FIDE World Championship Crown. Where champions come and go, chess endures.